From a dream stan who tries to poison their friend for saying the dream sucks, to a dream stan that wants to carry dreams big. <laughs> Bro, what did I just say? These are the craziest dream stands ever. So anyways, right, the subscriber was friends with this girl. Let's just say that she may or may not have been that friends, not that close with her after she tries to poison her for saying the dream isn't great, but we'll get to that in a second. But anyways, the subscriber had this girl and several other girls over at uh, her house. So this was like a Saturday morning, whatever. They were just kind of chilling. You know, they were, uh, they were about to have lunch, so I guess it was closer to the afternoon. And they were sitting around the kitchen counter, and they were literally just talking about, oh... Who's your favorite YouTube creator? Who do you watch? Stuff like that. And the subscriber was a fan of a lot of people in the Dream S&P, um, but personally said that she didn't like Dream specifically, which is totally fine. You're allowed to like creators. You're allowed to not like other ones. You're allowed to have preferences. I mean, you, you don't have to like my videos. Just don't watch them. Like, it's, it's the same thing with her. She didn't like Dream's videos, so she avoided watching his videos. And, you know, when he appeared and stuff with other people... That was fine, I guess, but I just prefer not to. Uh, easy enough, right? However, there was one girl, who we're going to call the Dream Stan, who uh, the subscriber was friends with, up until this fateful day, of course. But the subscriber was friends with this Dream Stan, and uh, let's just say she did not take it very well, and did not take it very well is a bit of an understatement, because she did not take it very well at all. So anyways, right, uh, sure enough, right, you know, the Dream Stan is like, oh, you feel that way? Well, Dream's my favorite creator. And the subscriber's like, oh, okay, that's cool. I just don't really like him. Like, I'm glad you like him. There's nothing really wrong with him. I just, I just don't like what he does. And the subscriber kind of thought that, oh, whatever. And all the other girls, like, at the house didn't, kind of probably thought, like, oh, whatever, who cares? And they literally changed topics. Like, they just naturally move on to the next thing in the conversation. And about five minutes into it, I think they were talking about, like, one of their classes or some tests that was coming up. The dream stand, who had been silent for the last five minutes, immediately just, like, randomly bursts out saying, what do you mean you don't like dream? Like, well, well what's wrong with him? And the subscriber just looks at her and is like, uh, nothing. I just, just don't really like the videos he makes, man. Like, I, I just don't think it's that big of a deal. And, you know, it's, <laughs> the dream stand's like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's very awkward. It's very weird. But she obviously is very, very, very butthurt by this. So they all leave the room to go, like, watch TV or something. And uh, they have, I don't know what food they had for lunch, but it was, like, sitting out on the kitchen counter, basically ready for them to eat when they came back. Uh, however, one of the girls who went to go, like, uh, not the dream stand and not the subscriber, but one of them that was just, like, a friend who was there was a little bit, of, she was going to be very important later in the story, so we're going to call her Kate. So anyways, it's the dream stand, the subscriber, Kate, and a bunch of other girls, right? So they're all sitting in the, uh, the, the living room, which is like close on the first floor where the kitchen is. They were just watching some TV show or something, and that's when the dream stand said, I need to go to the bathroom, I'll be right back. Remember, the dream stand, or just so you know, the dream stand normally was one of the most talkative ones of the group, but ever since the subscriber admitted that, you know, she did not like dream, she went to, the dream stand went dead silent. The dream stand said nothing. It was completely quiet, which was totally out of character. It was just like she was brewing on something, planning, thinking, plotting, whatever, right? And so the dream stand gets up and disappears. And that's when Kate, the subscriber's friend, says, I'll be right back. For some reason, Kate just had a intuition, kind of like a gut feeling that she should at least go in and look. Just check on the dream stand for a second, right? Sometimes you just get these gut feelings and instead of being like, oh, well, I'm going to overanalyze this and come to the conclusion that I should not listen to my gut. Sometimes, look, we've, I've said this before, but we've evolved over many, many years. And sometimes there are just things like intuitions that we don't understand, but our subconscious understands. There's just little things we pick up on that we just, we can't like a process at the top of our brain, but it, it just something is, it's just something that we know. It's just something that we know to be true. And sometimes you just got to listen to that. That's all I'm going to say. It's just like, not always going to be right, but you should always listen. And this time, uh, Kate was a hundred percent right. Cause Kate walks into the kitchen or walks like around where the bathroom is, which the bathroom is near the kitchen. And she sees, she watches as the dream stand is rummaging through the kitchen counter, not the top kitchen counter, the bottom one, where all the, sorry, where all the cleaning supplies is. So 
Kate takes out her phone and starts recording because she's like, okay, this is either nothing and she's looking for silverware in like the, in the wrong counter, or this is something really huge and I need to record this for proof. So she's recording secretly and she watches as the dream stand is rummaging through the, like the closet, or not the closet, but the kitchen counter or whatever, and eventually picks out a bunch of different cleaning supplies. And it was very clear, right, which one of the food items was for each person. I think each of them ordered some specialized, let's say Mexican food or something. So like enchilada, so each person had their own specialized food. And Kate, the subscriber's friend, watches as the dream stand like opens up, let's say like the enchilada, right? Um, that the subscriber got and like starts pouring these freaking chemicals into it, dude. Starts pouring like drain cleaner, starts pouring like bleach. By the way, disclaimer, obviously, do not do any of this. You will probably die if you eat this stuff. So don't. I, I, I hope it's obvious, but whatever. And she pours it all into this stuff and like closes up the enchilada again and like starts to walk away. And at this point, Kate didn't know what she was going to... Like, she just started recording because she knew something was up, but she did not expect this. So, uh, sure enough, right, um, she finishes recording and she quickly, like, walks back into the room and she sits down and is kind of, like, all freaked out because she's like, oh, my God. And, you know, the subscriber or the dream stand walks back into the room and sits down like nothing happened. And Kate, like, looks over at the subscriber and says, hey, could I, could I talk to you for a second? And the subscriber's like, sure. So they get up and they leave. And like, Kate, like this Kate brings her really far away. And the subscriber's like, what's going on? And she's like, I don't know how to explain this. But and then shows the recording, gives context. And at this point, they're just sitting there realizing that one of their friends, quote unquote, is literally trying to poison the subscriber. And why? Well, because the subscriber said that she doesn't like Dream. And that is confirmed in just a second. So sure enough, Kate says, hey, dream stand, can, can you come with me for a second? I got to show you something. And the dream stand, Loki doesn't even realize what's going on, kind of like mindlessly walks over. And uh, yeah, so sure enough, uh, you know, the subscriber is waiting there. Kate takes out her phone and shows the video. And the dream stand is like, uh, that isn't me. And they're all like, dude, <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> it's like, I can't Photoshop this video in like three seconds. Like, what? So sure enough, the dream stand's like, fine. I just needed you to know that it wasn't okay to say that Dream sucks. His videos are epic. I love them. And I love him so, so very much. <sighs> what you did was not okay. And you needed to understand that. And that's when Kate's like, you know, that stuff like could have actually like really, really died. Like she could have gotten really, really sick and maybe even died. And the Dream stands like, well, you know what? Maybe that's what she deserved. Let's just say that they were not friends at all after that moment. And if you thought that this dream stand was bad, you were not prepared for this one. So anyways, there was a new girl in the subscribers class. This girl uh, just came in and, you know, she didn't have a lot of friends because she was new and everyone else was already friends with each other. It's always very hard to enter in school, especially a, like a new school if you don't know anyone. It's just genuinely difficult. Uh, by the way, uh, plugging the Spotify, it's in the description. If you like listening to these videos like on Spotify, I have a Spotify Go ahead and check it out there and also rate five stars. It does help out. But anyways, right, so sure enough, right, this girl is, uh, you know, she, there's a new girl. And uh, we're just going to call her the new girl for now. She does turn out to be a pretty crazy dream stand, as you'll figure it out. But uh, anyways, uh, the subscriber and her friends, you know, they're not like super cool, popular girls that, you know, oh, my God, I can't associate with the new girl because it will lower my popularity and clout in my high school because my popularity in high school really, really does equate to success later in life, obviously. Like, they're not those type of people. They are just, you know, people who don't care about that as much and are just having a good time in high school and they're friends. So they see this and they're like, you know what, maybe we should invite her to sit with us. So sure enough, they go over to the dream stand who is sitting alone and says, hey, sit with us with lunch or whatever. And they're talking with the girl and she seems pretty chill. She seems pretty cool. Like for no reason at all would they think that this girl is like a complete psychopath, scary person. But she does turn out to be a little weird, as we'll see. But at first, she's super normal. Like, she just no reason at all for anyone to think that she would be weird or anything like that. And, uh, yeah, things are pretty cool. Things are chilling. Things are big chilling until they're not, as, you know, things go. And because one day, about three weeks in, this girl, like the dream stand girl, is sitting with them every single day, the new girl. And it's kind of like she's becoming, assimilating into the friend group a little bit. And I think this girl has got a little bit too comfortable because uh, the girl's like, 
do you guys have any, like, this, the dream fan, the new girl says, do you guys have any, like, crazy things you ever think about? Like, do you have any, like, big secrets? And obviously, some of you, like, <laughs> I bet they do. But maybe they're not going to tell someone that they met three days ago their, or three weeks ago their big secret. So they're all like, I don't know if I do. And one girl's like, yeah, like, I really like Troy. And they're like, oh, my God, you like Troy. Whatever, I don't know, high school girls talk about, dude. I'm not a high school girl. So something stupid like that that wasn't really, like, that big of a secret. Like, if it gets out that you think some someone's, like, attractive, like, oh, no, your life's over. Not. Like, you're fine. Like, who cares? However... The dream stand was about to go on to spill some um, interesting information, to put it lightly. So the dream stand's like, yeah, I have a secret too. And they're all like, okay. And this girl was like a little weird, a little quirky, but who cares, right? She was nice enough. That's when this girl, the dream stand, goes on and be like, I've had a fantasy for the last year. Guys, if you ever have fantasies don't tell people about like it's fine to have them like whatever imagine justin bieber's like your boyfriend whatever i don't i don't care okay but just don't don't go into your fantasies. don't tell people in extreme excruciating detail about them as the dream stand is about to do she's like yeah i've had this fantasy do you know do you watch minecraft youtubers and immediately they're like what <laughs> no <laughs> i do not and the dream stand's like well there's one called Dream. He recently did a face reveal, and he's so cute. Yeah. They're all like, okay, fine. Like, whatever. You have a celebrity crush. That's normal. But then she goes into excruciating, painful detail about, and also, I, I want Dream. I want Dream to bear my children. And all of a sudden, like, the girls at the table are like, okay, that's all I need to hear. I don't need to hear anything else. She's like, yeah, I just want to pump out a bunch of babies with Dream's face on them that are really good at Minecraft. And they're all like, okay, oversharing, oversharing. You're oversharing right now. That's, I'm good. Okay, okay, guys, let's chill. Let's relax. Okay, okay, relax. No need, no need to go this far. I don't need to know this. I don't need to know this about you. Relax. And she's like, yeah. You know, every single day, I think about him. And I have this little journal. And every single day, I write out 10-page long fantasies about us growing old together and having a lot of babies. And they're like, stop with the babies. Okay, the girls aren't saying these things. But they're just like super freaking freaked out right now. Like super freaked out. Because this random girl that they're starting to get to know, starting to be friends with, that's what I'm trying to emphasize, starting, is this going on about how she wants to be impregnated by her favorite Minecraft YouTuber? Guys, the stories you send in are the most ridiculous stuff ever. What the hell is this? God damn it. Anyways, uh, <laughs> and she just keeps going on. And when I kid you not, she goes on for 20 more minutes, just painstaking detail about how she wants to have a lot of babies. Beautiful, beautiful, dream-looking, Minecraft-loving babies. Ah! So anyways, by the end of the conversation, every girl there is just like, oh my god. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how that could have been worse. I'm sure maybe if she just like, I don't know, took out a hammer and slammed me in the head with it, but that may, maybe that would have been better. Maybe I would have gotten permanent brain damage where I would have forgotten that moment forever. So maybe it could have been better. Maybe that is the worst possibility ever. Maybe if she just literally took a machete and just chopped my head off, at least my suffering would have ended there and I wouldn't have to think about imagining her and the dream babies and oh my god. Anyways, so yeah, from every single day out from that point on, I think it's because like the dream stand released, like she's like, oh, finally someone knows my fantasies, right? Every single day she would tell them about like the new fanfic novel that she wrote the night before. And, uh, yeah, let's just say that after a little bit of time, they stopped hanging out. Uh, the subscriber and the other girls were like, she seems nice enough, but we just, we just can't handle this anymore. We just can't handle hearing Dream Heat Waves Fan Fiction Part 7000 every single freaking day at lunch. I want to talk about normal things. God, please, no! Click on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click. 
Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a good day. Today, we got three stories of Minecraft kids that I know you will enjoy. So let's just go ahead and jump into the first one. We're going to call the subscriber who submitted this story, Peter. And by the way, all these stories are on Spotify, linked in the description. You'll probably even hear them about an hour earlier before they go up on here if you find them on Spotify. Anyways, so Pete, we're going to call the first subscriber who submitted this story, Peter. And anyways, right, Peter was in a class, and in Peter's class, there was an assignment that they all had to do. And this assignment was the what do you want to do when you grow up assignment. And you got kids coming in being like, oh, I want to do YouTube. Oh, I want to be a doctor. Oh, I want to be president of the United States. Oh, I want to do your mom. There's like a lot of things that people came in and said like, oh, this is what I want to do, right? So it was kind of like done that you had a presentation. You would uh, go home and kind of prepare a little bit and then you go up there. I think a couple stories ago, someone else submitted something with uh, their class had a similar type thing. And I know I had something like this. So this might just be a thing that happens to everyone in like second grade. I don't know. Tell me in the comments if it's true or not. But anyways, right. So sure enough, you know, Peter wanted to be he wanted to be a doctor, which is pretty standard, at, like pretty standard response. When I was 10, I wanted to be a doctor. And then I learned about medical school. But anyways, right. So, you know, Peter, you know, has this little thing. He wants to be a doctor or whatever. And eventually, let's just skip forward to the day of class. Let's just skip forward to the day where, you know, they're actually presenting. And, uh, you know, Peter goes up there. He has a doctor's costume he bought or whatever. And, uh, you know, sure enough, it's fine. It's whatever. That's not the interesting thing. There's a kid in Peter's class who we're going to call the Minecraft kid because all, all, all bro does is play Minecraft. Like literally every, every single day. When he gets back from school, doesn't even do his homework, screw that, does Minecraft. In class, he's asleep so he can stay up all night to play Minecraft. This bro's life literally revolves around Minecraft. Don't get me wrong, Minecraft is a cool game. I use it for all my background footage. It has an integral place in my childhood. Like, I love Minecraft. Great game, right? However, please have a life outside of it. That, that, that's all I ask. That's all I ask, man. But anyways, right, sure enough, the Minecraft kid walks up to the front of the class. And uh, everyone was kind of expecting him to say, like, I don't know. I want to, uh, I don't know, work for a video game company. I want to work for Mojang. I want to be a computer pro programmer so I can make video games or whatever. Or maybe even, like, I want to stream on Twitch, which is, like, even that's a little, that's a little iffy. Which, you don't even want me to go into the statistics of how difficult that is. Anyways, and I won't because I want watch time and good retention. So sure enough, you know, the, the Minecraft kid goes up there and Peter's kind of interested to see what he's going to say because he's kind of expecting the Minecraft kid to say something a little bit goofy. Like not too crazy, but just a little bit goofy. It's just a little bit on the goofy side, right? And the Minecraft kid goes up there and says, you know, all I want to do when I grow up is just keep playing Minecraft. And he brings with him, like, you know that like fake you know, Minecraft sword, like a foam one that like you can buy for like $20 or something. I just, I just know it because I got it for my fifth grade birthday party and I might still have it or I might have had my mom thrown it out without me knowing, which is a shame, but whatever, right? And so he brings this and he kind of swings it around. It's like, yep, all I do every day is I play Minecraft. When I go home, I go home and I play Minecraft and I stay up all night to do it. That's why I'm never paying attention in class or doing anything like that. You know, and I want to let you know that no one can tell me otherwise. All I'm going to do with my life is play Minecraft every single day. And the teacher's like, hey, I, like this wasn't, this project wasn't about, you know, what's your favorite hobby? What's your favorite pastime? This project was about like, what are you going to do with the rest of your life? Or what do you want to do as a profession? There's a difference between, you know, choosing to do something casually and choosing to do something professionally. And the thing is, right, this wasn't even a teacher who's like, if you're not a doctor or a lawyer, then you're not a real worker. Like it wasn't one of these like old fashioned teachers who doesn't understand like new, I, I don't know what I'm trying to say, like a teacher that doesn't understand kind of the new scheme of jobs. The teacher literally let a kid say, hey, I want to be a YouTuber, but if that doesn't work, I'm going to go to college to for digital marketing or something like that. The teacher was fine with that. The teacher understands the new landscape of work. But the thing is, there's a difference between saying, between saying hey, I want to pursue playing video games online, and if that doesn't work, then I want to do X, and saying, I want to sit inside and do video games all day, specifically Minecraft all day. Because, bro, let me just let you know, there's really no professional Minecraft leagues that pay you anything, right? There, I, I might be wrong. There might be, like, a professional Minecraft league that pays you, like, a couple hundred bucks if you win a tournament. 
But dude, that's not enough to sustain yourself. Like there are no, like maybe, maybe if you wanted to say, yeah, I want to be professional, like Counter-Strike or a game like that, maybe. But even that is a massive stretch. And sure enough, the Minecraft kid didn't even say anything like that. He just said, I want to sit inside and play Minecraft all day. So Peter's just like, oh boy, because Peter's sitting down. He's watching the teacher really just like not be cool with this. And the Minecraft kid not even like adapting on the spot. Because one might have thought that, okay, the Minecraft kid realizes that the teacher is not a fan of what he just said. And that maybe if he wants to save his grade, I don't know, adapt it a little bit. Like just switch things up a little bit. I, I, I don't know, man, like... Just be like, oh, haha, what I meant is I want to go and learn how to make video games. Like, sure, that's fine. Go to school for programming or something like that. But the Minecraft kid doubles down and says to the teacher, you know, what I want to do when I grow up is I just want to sit at home and do video games. I don't want to do anything else. I don't want anyone to bother me. And I just want to play Minecraft 24-7. And, you know, Peter's just like, oh, boy, this teacher's not going to be happy. And the teacher's like, like, Minecraft kid. Says his actual name, but it's like, Minecraft kid, I want you to know that, you know, I'm going to give you, you know, sit back down, step outside, and I'm going to give you 10 minutes to come up with a real job. Like, I'm going to give you 10 minutes, and I'm being very gracious right now, because at the moment, you have a fail on this assignment. Not like the Minecraft kid was really caring about his grades. I mean, he handed in zero homework and basically was failing everything else. But the teacher's like, I'm going to give you 10 minutes of standing outside to come up with something new. And when you're ready, come back in and you may present again. So the Minecraft kid very angrily like walks outside. And the teacher's like, all right, who's coming up next? And the teacher's like, okay, Ben, how about you come up? And within 10 seconds, the door slams open again and the Minecraft kid says, I'm ready. So the teacher, I don't know if the teacher was just being hopeful because... I mean, come on, he was out for like three seconds. You really think he came up with a new job? No. The teacher might have just been hopeful and was like, oh, that was fast, sure. Come on up, like, wh what's, what's the deal? Like, what's going on? And like, come tell me about your new job. So, Minecraft kid walks to the front of the class again and says, when I go get grow older, or when I'm an adult, I just want to sit inside and do Minecraft all day. I said it before and I'm saying it again, boom. The teacher's like, kind of turns to Minecraft kid and says, I was generous with you. Like, I gave you time to reconsider what you're doing. Like, to, to pr present again. Like, this isn't just what you want to do. This is like a presentation. This is an assignment for the front of the class. And at this point, the Minecraft kid says, so you're saying I can't do that? And the teacher is like, yes. I'm saying that when you're older, you're not going to be able to do that. Sure, you can play video games on, like, in, on the part. Like, you can, play, you can partially play video games. That's totally fine. But you can't entirely play video games. You've got to do other stuff with your life as well. You have to find something that's going to bring you an income. You have to do something more productive than that. And, you know, the Minecraft teacher... Uh, the Minecraft teacher, sorry. I'm jumbling my words. The teacher probably would have even been fine if he said, I want to, you know play my I want to make content around me playing Minecraft. The teacher was in tune with, you know, you can entertain like entertainment is decentralized. Almost anyone can make entertainment. Not almost ever anyone will be successful, but almost anyone can. This isn't like the 80s and 90s where really you either had to like score a really big role in TV or radio or a movie. You can just post something on your phone. It's incredible. So the, the at this point the Minecraft kid was starting to get really angry. And he's like Teacher, I'm going to give you to a count of three to take that back. And the teacher is so taken aback by the fact that the Minecraft kid just said, I'm going to give you a count of three to say, to like pretend that you didn't just say what you said. But the teacher's like, are you insane? The Minecraft kid is like, three? And the teacher's like, you don't understand. They're like, I am supposed to be the one giving you a countdown. Minecraft kid's like, two? And the teacher's like, like, what is so wrong with me saying that you can't just sit around and play Minecraft all day? Like, that makes total sense. Like, you, I asked you in the presentation what you should do as a job. And you said sit around and play Minecraft. How do you expect to make any money from that? And the Minecraft kid's like, one. The teacher's like, what? What are you going to do at the end of the countdown? And the Minecraft kid steps over and just like kind of like goes down on one knee and is like bent down, is like, it starts making like weird noises He's like and the teacher's like dude what are you doing okay teacher probably didn't say dude but the teacher's like uh 
what are you doing? And the Minecraft kid jumps up, springs up, and is like, you, I will fight you in a 1v1 PvP battle. And he grabs his Minecraft sword and starts, like, swinging it around, trying to be, like, intimidating. But, dude, it was a foam sword. You're playing Minecraft. You're not intimidating anyone, dude. Like, that's just not happening. And he starts swinging around. He's like, wow, 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 wow. And the teacher's like, okay, I just, uh, like, wh wh what, why, what are you doing? Like, stop, stop it, get some help, bro, like, what's going on? And he's like, you said that I could do Minecraft every single day for the rest of my life. And the teacher's like, yeah, and I, uh, I, I stand by that. Minecraft kid's swinging around his foam swords, like, you're trying to, you're, you don't want me to be happy. You want me to be unhappy, and for that reason, it's you versus me in a PvP fight. At this point, Peter is just sitting there just trying to comprehend how everything escalated to this point. Because sure, like, the Minecraft kid and the teacher were kind of fighting a bit and they weren't happy with each other. But the Minecraft kid really gave the teacher a 3 to one countdown and then entered into Minecraft PvP mode. He has his, like, sword out, swinging it all around. And at this point, right, you know, Peter's just like, okay, something's going, like, this is not going to end well. At this point, right, you know, he's like swinging around his sword. The Minecraft kid's like, I'm going to give you to another count to three to give me a 100% and tell me that I can 100% play Minecraft for the rest of my life. And the teacher looks at him and says, no, I would be lying to you if I said that. And the Minecraft kid is like, fine, you've chosen your fate. Minecraft kid's like, starts swinging his sword. The teacher says, if that foam sword even touches me for a second, you're failing this assignment and you're going straight to the principal's office. The Minecraft kid says, I will give you another count of three to reconsider it, everything. <laughs> the Minecraft kid is, is obviously realizing at this point that he's in way too deep and he's also not winning. So he thinks that he, if he keeps on saying, I'm going to give you till the count of three, that he is somehow going to win this whole thing. And sure enough, the Minecraft kid counts to three. The teacher's like, okay, like what? What's going to happen now? The Minecraft kid's like, I warned you. Minecraft kid takes his, like, his foam sword, swings, and, and goes, bop, makes contact with the teacher. And at this point, the teacher grabs the sword, rips out of the Minecraft kid's hand, goes over, holds onto both the Minecraft kid's shoulders, and starts walking him out the door. He's like, all right, buddy, uh, that's time to go to the principal's office for you. So the Minecraft kid and the teacher walk out the door, and everyone else is kind of just sitting there like, uh... What? Anyways, next story, we're going to call the subscriber Chris. So Chris has a cousin who we're going to call the Minecraft kid, right? And Chris doesn't really get to know his cousin that well. He doesn't see him that often. But Chris and his mom are over at his aunt's, yeah, it'd be his aunt's house. And, you know, this is the first time, you know, Chris has seen his aunt in years. And the last time Chris saw his cousin, his cousin was like four and didn't, it was really shy, didn't want to talk that much. Now his little cousin was eight years old and was apparently a Minecraft fanatic. He liked playing it so much. He knew everything about it. He watched Minecraft YouTubers when he wasn't playing Minecraft. In his sleep, he dreamed about fighting the Ender Dragon. And, uh, you know, Chris didn't really know that that much, but Chris was kind of told by, because Chris asked his mom, like, as they're driving there, like, what, what, what should I know? Like, I have to hang out with this kid because Chris was told, oh, you get to hang out with your cousin for a little bit. It'll be good for you. Chris is like 16 at this point. He's not going to get along with his cousin on a lot of things. They're not going to have a ton in common. They can't talk about girl troubles at the same level, right? They can't talk about, oh, wow, math is so difficult. Yeah, because Chris's little cousin would be like, yeah, a simple addition really sucks. <laughs> He'd be like, uh, Sure. So sure enough, you know, Chris's mom was like, yeah, okay. So all I know is he's a big fan of like that game Minecraft. And Chris is like, yeah, I've played it a little bit. And by Chris saying that he's played it, literally all he means is, yeah, he and his friends have played some like survival servers at some points. Like they'll be really into it for a week and then they'll not play it for a year. That's how a lot of people actually get into it. You get super into Minecraft servers with your friends. You play for two weeks. You literally play 12 hours a day and then you never touch the game again for week, for years. It, that's just how it goes with a lot of people. So Chris and his mom get there and Chris's aunt and Chris's cousin, right? Chris's cousin's actually in a different room, but Chris's aunt greets them. They're like, oh my God, I haven't seen you so long, Chris. You're so much older now. And Chris is in his head is like, yeah, that's kind of how time works, bro. But whatever, right? Sure enough, you know, Chris's aunt was like, hey, Chris, I just want to let you know your little cousin's in the other room and he would love to see you. Did he actually love to see him? Well, I mean, we'll see him in a second. So sure enough, you know, Chris goes into the other room and there's the little cousin who's sitting there with an iPad 
And he's playing, you know, Pocket Edition Minecraft. And Chris is like, yo, what's up, bro? Like, hey, it's me, Chris. I don't remember if you remember me, but I'm your cousin. And Chris's little cousin's like, yeah, I don't, like, hi, how are you doing? And Chris is like, oh, I heard you like Minecraft. And, you know, Chris's little cousin's like, I do. Do you like Minecraft? And Chris in his head is like, he's like, yeah, I'm going to say yes, we're going to bond, and this will be less awkward. So Chris is like, yeah, yeah, I like Minecraft. It's, it's cool. Like, I, I enjoy it. And Chris's little, bro, Chris's little uh, cousin immediately says, so you're an expert? And Chris is like, I don't know, but I played a little bit. And Chris is like, okay, well, riddle me this. So, uh, well, well, when, when you kill the Ender Dragon, and there's the Ender Dragon egg, how exactly are you to get it? And, uh, Chris, who's never actually completed the game, because he just plays a little bit, right, he's like, oh, you just mine it, right, with a pickaxe. The little cousin's like, meh, wrong, one strike against you. Next question. And Chris is kind of thinking, wait, what? Like, is this some kind of, like, well, like, what are we doing here? And, you know, the, the little bu cousin's like, okay. So if you're fighting an Enderman and you have a bucket, like what will a bucket of what, like what kind of liquid will Enderman not be able to like fight you in? And uh, Chris is like, I don't know, um, milk, because he remembered he's able to milk a cow. And Chris's little cousin's like, Oh my God, me me me, wrong. Water. Enderman will not fight you in water. I two strikes. Chris, two strikes, and Chris is kind of like, oh my god, like, this was, this was supposed to be a bonding experience. This is the opposite of a bonding experience right now. Like, this is not a bonding experience. This is crazy. And sure enough, you know, Chris is like, okay, man, well, I can play Minecraft with you. He's like, man, final question, and I need you to answer this. And Chris is like, uh, okay. And so this little cousin's like, well... I need to think about it. I got to make it good. And you know, you're going to suffer the consequences if you don't like, if you don't finish, if you don't get this question correct. So the little cousin's like, okay, who is the popular Minecraft YouTuber who has the Minecraft Manhunt series and is green? And the thing is, right, Chris kind of grew up on, you know, the old school Minecrafters. So he was like, uh, Captain Sparkles, and his little brother's like, no, it's Dream, you idiot. You aren't actually a Minecraft fan. You lied to me. And at this point, Chris is like, dude, it's not simply not that deep. And the Minecraft kid's like, no, you betrayed my trust. And the Minecraft kid runs over to him and sinks his teeth into his arm. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment Minecraft down below. That'll be the secret word of the day. And I'll just, it'll help me know how many people actually made it to the end of the video. I really do appreciate it when you guys comment the secret word down below so I can see all the names and faces. And if you want to support the channel, just continue watching more videos after this one. Literally just watching more videos supports the channel more than you can ever imagine. And also, it's on Spotify. And if you do watch and listen on Spotify, please rate five stars. And if you want to submit your own stories of Karen, spoiled kids... Uh, I don't know, Minecraft kids, crazy things happening in high school, submit them to either my Twitter or Instagram. You can do so by following me on those platforms and then DMing me on there. Uh, by the way, join the Discord server, link in description. Use code CONNORPUGS for 10% off gamer subs. Helps you, helps me. And let's get right back into it. So Chris looks down at his little cousin who has bit him at this point. The little cousin has sunk his teeth into Chris's skin. Thankfully, he doesn't break it and draws blood or anything. And he's just looking at it, he's like, oh my god. And like, he shakes him off, he's like, dude. And the little cousin's like, well, that's your punishment for not actually enjoying Minecraft. You're a fraud, a phony, and a, a, a fake lover of Minecraft. You don't actually love Minecraft, you're a fraud, and that's your punishment. So Chris very angrily walks out. And like, you know, the, the, uh, Chris's mom and his, his Chris's aunt are looking like, oh, what just happened? And Chris is like, like my, like my little cousin, like just bit me because he says I'm a fraud, <laughs> fraud alert, fraud owned. But he's like, you know, he's like, he thinks I'm a fraud. Cause I didn't understand all this, like really obscure trivia about Minecraft. Like, can you believe this? Like, this is ridiculous. Oh my God. And at this point, you know, you know, Chris's mom's like, oh, no. And Chris's aunt's like, oh, I forgot to say he's really touchy about the Minecraft subject. And Chris's mom turns to Chris's aunt and is like, you told me that's what he really liked. And Chris's aunt goes on to say, well, yeah, he really likes it. 
but he takes it really seriously. And if you say you like Minecraft, he assumes that you like it at his level. And he's had so many people before say that they like Minecraft, but they just like it casually, that he now thinks that, well, he now thinks that anyone who says that and doesn't know all the obscure trivia that he knows is a fakester, a fraud, or a phony. At this point, you know, Chris is kind of just like, well, why didn't you tell me this before? And you can hear the little cousin screaming, get that fraud out of here, mom. I don't want to hang out with that fraud. And sure enough, Chris's aunt goes into that room and you hear saying like, you better behave yourself. This is unacceptable behavior. You hear me? This behavior is unacceptable and I, I won't stand for it. I simply won't stand for this. You're, you don't see your, you only see your cousin like once a year. This is insane. And Chris is kind of just listening to this and Chris's mom's like, Chris, I'm so sorry. I did not know. And Chris is like, it's fine. Like, how would you know? Like, I don't know anyone else who does this like, I, I simply could not blame you if, even if I wanted to. Like, the situation going down right now, it's just so ridiculous. Like, I, I, I just can't blame you at this point. And so Chris's aunt comes back out and it's like, once again, I am so sorry. Like, none of this was ever supposed to happen. Like, you know what? You can go back in there. And he said they just calmed down. And Chris kind of just looks at his aunt. It's like, he said that? And Chris's aunt's like, well, I mean, he implied that with his actions. Basically, just meant Chris's aunt went in there and kind of like shouted at him till he quieted down. And, uh, you know, sure enough, Chris decides, okay, I'll go back in there. And he, when Chris walks back in, he's like, hey, dude. And, you know, his cousin, the Minecraft kid, is just on the iPad. And, you know, he walks in a little bit. And uh, Chris is like, so, playing some Minecraft? And the little cousin's like, not like you would know. And Chris is like, well, okay, when I said I liked Minecraft, I literally just meant I played a little bit with my friends. I think it's a fun game. And the little cousin's like, if you thought it was a fun game, then you would have known my trivia. And uh, Chris is like, well, not necessarily. Like, just because I don't know every detail about the game doesn't necessarily mean I don't like the game. Like, that just doesn't sound fair to me. And Chris is like, you know, I, I don't know. Like, I, I enjoy playing with my friends. Doesn't mean I don't watch it on YouTube, so... That trivia question about knowing that guy, like, doesn't care, like, it doesn't matter. Like, I really don't understand why you bit me. And, you know, the little cousin is just, like, playing his Minecraft, but then he pauses his game. So, you know, it's about to get real serious, right? And he closes out his iPad. He's like, I bit you because you're a fraud. You're a fraud who says he likes Minecraft, but really doesn't. Little kid turns around, jumps, and bites Chris on the other arm. And Chris is like, oh my God, pushes him off again. Chris st storms out of that room and goes over and is like, mom, he bit me again. And Chris's mom's like, oh dear. And his aunt's like, oh. Chris's aunt runs back into the room, shouts at the Minecraft kid again, and shuts the door. And it's like, Chris, you know what? I haven't seen you in a while. How about you stay out here with your mom and I, and we'll just have a discussion here. You and your cousin can, um, you guys can uh, meet each other again, maybe in a couple years, when he's out of this phase. Hopefully this is a phase. I really hope this is a phase. So the final Minecraft story, Minecraft kid story, we're going to call the subscriber who submitted it, Bart. Because uh, if you couldn't tell, I got Peter, Chris, and uh, Bart, you know, Family Guy, Simpsons. I'm trying to do themes with these names now. Just keep me and myself interested. Anyways, though, right? So, uh, you know, Bart was in class, and he was in third grade at the time. He was younger on the younger side, for sure. I don't know exactly what grade. This could have well been second grade, but let's just say third grade for the just because. And so what they were supposed to do is they were assigned that, you know, they had they could choose any country in the world and they got to decide um, they would have to research it, make a little presentation and eventually present it in front of the entire class. So uh, there was a kid in class who we're just going to call the Minecraft kid. He wasn't even that obsessed with Minecraft. He just really enjoyed the game. And it gets interesting because the Minecraft kid, um, he chose he mixed up basically, right? He mixed up the nether, the nether, like in Minecraft, and the netherlands, like the place. So anyways, right, it's the day that they're presenting. Bart is sitting next to the, the, the Minecraft kid, and he leans over, and he's like, hey, dude, like, what did, what, where did you choose? And he's like, oh, the nether. And Bart's like, what? Like, you have to choose a country. And the Minecraft kid's like, yeah, it's next to, like, Sweden, Norway. It's, like, in that, uh, that part of Europe. And Bart's like, oh. 
Okay, so Bart knows about the Netherlands, right? He just kind of thinks that, you know, the Minecraft kid learned like a short, like a shorthand way to call like, oh, maybe the cool people call the Netherlands the nether, and I just don't know any better. Um, the thing is, though, so Bart went up, he did his presentation, it was totally fine, but the Minecraft kid, he went up to go do his presentation, and, um, uh, the thing is, right, when the Minecraft kid went to go look up, like, the Netherlands, right, he must have written down the Netherlands wrong and wrote down the nether and maybe couldn't read the rest of it. So when he typed into Google the nether, he got, like, Minecraft wiki. He got, like, w he got articles about the in-game Minecraft universe, the nether. And, and he actually ended up, because, look, he's in second or third grade. You know, reality and uh, fiction is kind of a blurred line for kids at that point. So he went up there and he did an entire presentation talking about, like, here's photos. And he literally took screenshots from, like, a really good texture pack of the nether. He's like, up here, like, this far up into Europe, he's like, it's really fiery. It's, uh, there's these floating fire monsters. <laughs> there's these, like, pig creatures that come after you if you provoke them. And the entire class, like, is just looking at him like, uh, bro. And the teacher just has this smile on his face, like, okay, how are we going to handle this, boys? Like, how are we going to go about this? And, you know, the subscriber, or not the subscriber, the Minecraft kid, finishes up his presentation. And, uh, you know, everyone is kind of clapping a little bit. And there's, oh, for every single person, there's a point where people can ask questions. A lot of the times, like, the kids would be like, I don't know. Like, if it's not my presentation, I don't know it. Um, but one of the kids raised his hand, and, you know, the Minecraft kid pointed on him. And, you know, he said, um, like, nice presentation, but I'm pretty sure the nether isn't real. And the Minecraft kid starts laughing. He's like, what do, what do you mean the Minecraft, the nether isn't real? And he's like, um, I, I, I don't think you, uh... I don't think you put down the name right. And the Minecraft kid is really confused, and he turns to his teacher. And the teacher is like, oh, okay, I gotta speak up. The teacher's like, yeah, so, Minecraft kid, I hate to say it, but I think you wrote down the name wrong. I, I was looking it up while you were doing your presentation, because I was pretty confused. And I looked up the nether into Google, and apparently it's a place in a video game. Uh, you were supposed to do the Netherlands. And the Minecraft kid got super embarrassed because he has this whole presentation. He was 100% confident that this place really existed. And he was kind of just told that, oh, well, actually, truth is, you just messed up the whole thing. But the teacher actually was a pretty cool dude because the teacher wanted to say, like, man, like, he's like, hey, all I asked you to do was to do a presentation, you know, on a place that, you know, I thought that, you know, to do a, pres a presentation, do the work do the research, put it together, and present it to the class. He said, hey, you did the research. I can tell you put in the work. This is a great presentation, and you present it in front of the entire class. Yes, you didn't do exactly what I asked, but you didn't do, do so maliciously, and your intentions were good, and you put in the effort. He said, I'm going to grade you as if you did a real country. And uh, you know, the Minecraft kid was very happy to hear this because he more or less kind of like dodged a bullet there. Because I'm sure the Minecraft kid and Bart especially, like when Bart was sitting there, he was worried for his friend because he was friendly with the Minecraft kid. He was worried that he was going to get like a check minus. Basically, they had check plus check and check minus as their system. They got grades when they were older, but he was afraid he was going to get a check minus or maybe, oh, the teacher wouldn't understand and would call up his parents being like, your son isn't taking this class seriously. When you know the son was taking it seriously, he just didn't understand the instructions. He didn't get the memo, right? And it's cool to see teachers like this really come together and understand Understand that, you know, if the intention is good and the work was put in, really that's all that, you know, you're supposed to be doing in school. So the Minecraft kid sat down and he turned over and Bart turned over like, hey man, I'm sorry that I didn't say anything. I honestly thought when you said the nether, you were just doing shorthand for like the Netherlands. I thought that was a nickname or something. And the Minecraft kid's like, you're good, dude. Like, it's totally fine. Like, I should have like known that. And, you know, and Bart was like, dude, there's actually a cool presentation. Like, I kind of like Minecraft myself. And, you know, I learned a thing or two about Minecraft. Like, I, if I'm going to speed run the game, I'll think about your presentation. And, you know, the Minecraft kid took that, like, you know, pretty nicely. And he smiled back. And 
you know, yeah, after that, you know, the, the Minecraft kid actually got a check plus for his presentation because the Minecraft kid put in a check plus worth of work. And most kids got check pluses. Some got checks if they really clearly didn't put in any work. But the majority of kids got check pluses, including the Minecraft kid, who did a presentation on the nether, which I just thought was pretty funny, but also W teacher. 100% W teacher. He gets it. He's the GOAT. Anyways, if you want to support the channel, keep watching videos after click this Click on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. How's it going, everyone? Hope you're having a good day, because today we have a pretty crazy story of this Minecraft kid who believes that after playing Minecraft that he needs to go back to his caveman roots. And going back to his caveman roots literally just meant not showering, I guess. And he thinks that this will get him all the ladies. And let me just say that uh, that may or may not be the case, but you'll have to wait and see. So anyways, sit back, relax, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and let's just jump right into this. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted this story, Alex. And by the way, my Instagram is in the description. It's also Connor Pugs. Go follow me there, and you can submit stories like this to me on there. I'll get to them when I get to them. And anyways, so Alex was in eighth grade and he had this kid in his class who we're going to call Ben. Yes, we're bringing back the name Ben for random secondary characters. And anyways, right, Ben was like, you know, he wasn't like super into Minecraft. Actually, he knew nothing of Minecraft until like a couple weeks before the story. And that's when he was introduced to the game by one of Alex's friends. Uh, we don't need a name, right? And anyways, right, Ben got super, super into it. Uh, Alex doesn't really know how Ben didn't know what Minecraft was. Like, it wasn't like Alex wasn't, or it wasn't like Ben wasn't on the internet. Like, I think Ben might have heard heard of it but he'd never like he didn't know what it was so when one of alex's friends introduced minecraft to him ben basically disappeared for like two weeks like he went to school and everything but he stopped being on social media disappeared as soon as he could like didn't show up to any anything he was just in his room as for as long as he could playing minecraft and i don't mean like i don't know like parkour servers like this or player versus player servers i mean he was playing like vanilla straight up your traditional minecraft that's all he was doing and he was in love with it and three weeks later he came into school one day and he's like alex buddy I, ha I need to tell you something, a revelation I've come to. And Alex is like, yeah, what's good, dude? And Ben's like, brother, we need to return to the caveman days. I was playing Minecraft a couple days ago, and I came to a realization that we need to return to our caveman roots. And I have started that already. Alex is like, what do you mean by that? And at this time, Alex was, not was noticing quite a pungent aroma coming from Ben, right? You know, he didn't want to say anything. He didn't want to be mean. He didn't want to be, you know, cruel or anything. But let's just say that, you know, <sighs> Benny old boy was not smelling the greatest. He was kind of, uh, he was, uh, he had this essence, um, this odor, this aroma, some might call it, that, uh, wasn't the greatest, to put it the, to put it lightly, right? So anyways, uh, you know, uh, Alex or Ben goes on to say, yeah, so I've been playing Minecraft, and it just, it just feels so good. It feels so natural. I mean, yeah, playing a block game feels natural, but whatever. I like Minecraft. I'm not saying it's not, but he goes on to say, and I realized that, you know, my failures in the lady department, the reason why women don't love me is because I, I'm too much like, I'm too much, I'm not like the natural man. And when they see me as the natural caveman, they will instinctively fall in love with me. And, and Alex just looks at Ben. It's like, Ben, uh, I don't know where you're going with this, but I really don't have a good, I don't have a good feeling about this. And Ben's like, Alex, I'm here to convert you to my ways. And Alex is like, what? And he's like, are you trying to like, sell me an MLM or something? Like, where are we going with this? And Ben is like, no, 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 Alex, return to the caveman. Return to the caveman, Alex. This is what Steve has taught me. And, and, and Alex is like, Ben, Ben, are you okay? Like, if you need help, like, I, I can help you get He's like, no, you need help, man. You don't understand. He said, look, I've returned to my caveman roots, but by not doing any of the the showering that is in our modern day societies. You really think putting chemicals in our hair and rinsing it with fake water? Alex is like, fake, fake water? What are you, he's like, I, these are details. These are details, Alex, don't question it. It's whatever, you don't understand. The natural aroma that comes from the human body has been programmed for trillions of years. And Alex is like, I don't think 
humans have been around for trillions of years. And Ben's like, that's not the point. The point is the aroma, the natural musk. Sure, you can buy cheap garbage from like, I don't know, Armani or Gucci. Their, their fragrance is terrible. They'll destroy the, the, the brain cells. But the true caveman odor is what Steve has taught me. And uh, Alex is like, so are you going to like, I don't know, spend more time outside, get more sunlight, exercise, eat, like, not processed stuff like the caveman too. And Alex is like, whoa, or Ben is like, whoa, Alex, chill out. Let's not go crazy. Let's not go cuckoo banana mode on me, okay, man? Okay, man? Is that good? Like, let's not go crazy. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not dropping everything for this caveman thing, but I am embracing the natural musk. And Alex just looks at him and says, so, Ben... You're, you're not really changing anything about what you do besides besides not showering. That That's the only difference. And Ben's like, well, no, no, no. It's not just not showering. It's embracing my natural musk, my natural odor. It will instinctively make women love me. And Alex is like, Ben, as your friend, I guess, I, 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 I strongly suggest you don't do this. And Ben is like, you know what, Alex? I understand that you're a hater. And that's okay. Alex is like, I don't think I'm a hater, but... And Ben's like, silence. Look, you know that girl over there, Ava? You know how, you know, the prettiest girl in our class. I've always had a crush on her, and I never had a chance. And Alex is like, well, that's also something that has not changed. And Ben's like, look, I'm going to go up to her, and you're going to see. I'm going to go up to her. I'm going to lift up my arms so my armpits are bare. Let her embrace my natural aroma, my natural odor, and you will see that she will just fall in love with me. I'm going to ask her out, and she's going to say yes. It's not even going to be her saying yes. It's going to be her subconscious breaking through to the surface and convincing her that I am the true man for her. Alex is just looking at Ben. He's like, dude, did playing Minecraft make, make you think this or something? And Ben's like, no! It, it encouraged me to remember my true caveman days. And you know, Alex is like, yeah, okay. That's cool, man. Like, I'm cool with that. Like, you're cool. That's good. Okay, you know, actually, actually, Ben, yes. Let's see it. I will, too, embrace the caveman if Ava goes out with you because you smell bad. And Ben's like, I don't smell bad. I smell natural. If that is bad to your nose, then you have a, you, you have a bad nose. And Ben's like, or uh, 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 Alex's like, uh, all right. I got bad nose. That that's not great. Um, that's like you'll see. Anyways, next day comes around, and Alex is sitting with his friends, and he explains like, yeah, so you know Ben, right? And they're like, yeah, we know Ben. Alex is like, yeah, so he's he's doing something crazy, and they're like, well, I don't know what he's been doing, but he's been smelling like, like garbage recently. And Ben, uh, Alex is like, it's actually it's related. You're not gonna believe this. He played Minecraft, and then he believed he had to go back to the caveman era, like he had to be a man again, and that doesn't mean working out or. You know, reading, it just means not showering for some reason. It's kind of it's kind of ridiculous. And they're like, yeah, I mean, Ben has been smelling a little bit more musty, and it kind of smells like spoiled milk at this point. But I guess uh, <laughs> I, I guess that makes sense now. And uh, Alex goes on to say, yeah, and you know Ava? And they're like, yeah, of course we know Ava. Hoss girl in our class, beauty, right? 10 out of 10. They're like, eh. Alex is like, yeah, so Ben is going to ask her out later today. They're like, he's going to do what? He's going to do, and, and, and Alex is like, yeah, so Ben, Ben thinks that because he smells like he does, she's going to instinctively say yes. They're like, dude, this, why did you say yes? Why did you allow him to go on with this? At this point, Alex's friends are like, bro, you're kind of being a bad friend of Ben. And Alex is like, dude, he was so confident. He was being so cocky. And they're like, dude, he's going to get rejected. And there's a chance he gets rejected really hard. And really embarrassingly in front of everyone. Do you want that for him? And look, Alex was not happy with the way that Ben went about explaining or teaching him, quote unquote, the ways of the caveman, a.k.a. no shower, no more, right? But at the end of the day, they were still friends. And Alex knew that Ava was not just going to say no, but, you know, she had developed a bit of an ego for because she did know that she was, you know, the most beautiful girl in the class and she could have any guy she wanted. She was not going to be nice about letting him down. She was going to be cruel. She was going to be mean. And she was going to crush him, dude. She was going to freaking crush him. And Alex is like, all right, I got to find Ben. I need to find him before he asks Ava out. And as Alex was saying that, he hears or he looks up 
and he looks at the table across, because they're sitting at lunch. He looks at the table farthest away, and that's where Ava and her friends were sitting, and Ben was walking up to her table. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment uh, Minecraft down below. And if you want to support the channel, one of the best things you can do is binge watch the videos. And please let me know in the comment section what you're doing while watching these videos. And also, final thing, a bit of a new request I have. If you haven't already done so, if you have a TikTok account, go follow my TikTok. It is Connor Pugs. I have about 7,000 followers on there. Um, I'm reposting clips from here. I'm just trying to reach a new audience on TikTok and hopefully bring them to the family over on here. And if you could just, even just following me in there and occasionally watching my videos, uh, basically no one watches them on there and I need a little bit of traction from you guys to help them reach new people and I really would appreciate it. Anyways, let's get back to the story before I bore you guys. And also if you're going to buy some gamer subs or any of their stuff, wait about a week. I have a pretty cool surprise coming for you guys. But anyways, enough of teasing that. I can't say too much right now. Anyways, right, so Alex looks over and he notices that Ben is walking to Ava's table. And he's like, oh, oh my god, no, 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 this can't be happening. And he goes over and he starts to like walk over and you know the people Alex, Alex was sitting with are like Alex go go he's gonna do it don't let this happen so Alex is basically sprinting over to the table but he doesn't get there in time and he kind of stops he's like no I'm too late so Ben goes up to Ava and goes ahem Ava and Ava looks up and is like yes <laughs> oh my the next part's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard Ben goes up to her and literally lifts up both of his arms. You know how, like, after you run and you're, like, really exhausted, you'll put your arms above your heads to, like, make it easier to breathe, right? Or you're told to do that or whatever, right? That's basically what he did. And you could see Ava's face. Like, first you saw her nose kind of twitch as she was smelling what was going on. And then you saw her eyes water, her face crunch up. And, and you could almost hear, like, the, oh, like, it was a bad smell. It was not good. And Alex is like, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm par I'm partially respons- Oh, my God. I'm partially resp- I'm partially responsible, man. This is on me. Anyways, Ben goes on to say, so, Ava, now that, you know, I've let your senses, you know, acclimate themselves, and if you have any primal urges, wink, wink, that are coming up from, you know, the surface that are breaking through, would you like to go on a date? You know what? Let's just skip that. Would you like to be my girlfriend? And Alex is like, in his head, he's like, no, no, Ben, no, Ben, no, no, no. And so sure enough, you know, Ava's just looking at him, blinking, not even responding, not laughing or anything. She's just blinking because she's just so dumbfounded by the, did this kid just, did this kid just straight up ask me out? Because remember, Ava and Ben, they're not friends. They're not dating each other. They're not close like that. W what? And he also smells terrible. A and Ben is like, uh, if you don't know your answer yet, maybe you'll know it in a second. And Ben literally gets closer to her and like pushes his armpit in her face. And she's like, you get away from me and kind of pushes him back he's like looks over at alex and ben's like yells over don't worry alex don't worry give it a second you'll see man you'll see it's crazy you're not gonna believe it she's gonna fall in love with me and ava looks up fall in love with you i don't know who you are i don't know who you are i just know that you're a guy who came over here and is smelling terrible and is pushing his stinky armpits in my face no i will not go out with you and like at this point everybody in the cafeteria has turned their heads Everybody has turned their heads and is looking at this because it's a scene. It's a spectacle. I mean, Ben is standing up there with his greased out armpits and Ava, known as the prettiest girl in the class, has just demolished him in front of everyone, uh, spectators of the entire class. And at this point, there's an awkward silence because people have stopped speaking. Like they have stopped speaking because they want to hear what's going on. And Ben is like, I see let me know if you change your mind. And Ava's like, no, I will never change my mind. As I said, she's a little extra, right? And Ben just walks over to Alex. And Alex looks at him. He's like, dude, dude, I, I was trying to come over to tell you not to do it. Like, I'm sorry. This is my fault. Ben's like, bro, this is, this is not your fault. She just needs time to realize. Like, Ben goes on to say that, you know, this is totally part of the plan. He knew that there's a chance that, you know, 
her like primal senses would be stopped by her like brain but it was only a matter of time till like they break through and now that he's like broken through to the senses through like essencing out the stink or whatever that like eventually within like the next 24 hours she will come to her senses maybe privately maybe not publicly but they will be dating and alex is like dude you can't seriously think that and ben is like it's my theory like i know it's to be true you have your opinions and i have my facts i'm sorry i stole that from baskets greatest show ever rip christine baskets bro brings a tear to my eye anyways um and so sure enough Next day rolls around. It has been 24 hours. And Alex just goes up to Ben. He's like, yo. Ben's like, yeah, what's up? He's like, hey, did, did she ask you out yet? And he's like, no, it hasn't been 24 hours. Ben looks at his phone, looks at the time. He's like, dude, it's, it's been like 22 hours. And, <laughs> and Ben goes on to say, see, you're proving my points. Once again, my facts destroy your opinions. And Alex is like, okay, but... I mean, she hasn't asked you out yet. And two hours go by. Alex goes up to him. And Ben's like, dude, I don't want to talk about it. Alex is like, that's fine, man. Like, you don't have to prove anything to me. Like, I get it. Alex is like, dude, you're good. Don't worry about it. Just please go home and take a shower. And sure enough, Ben, while he actually continued to play Minecraft, no longer believed the whole caveman philosophy of you must smell like garbage for women to like you. And uh, that was partially due to the fact that it doesn't work and he has firsthand experience and why it doesn't work. And uh, yeah, him and Ava did not ever date from that point on. Um, it was a pretty bad first impression. By the way, that was a first impression practically. I think they knew each other beforehand, but yeah. Moral of the story is don't do that, guys. Click on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. How's it going everyone? Hope you're having a great day today because today we have probably one of the most insane stories about a Minecraft kid to date. I mean, you do not want to miss this, so sit back, relax, uh, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and let's call today's subscriber who submitted this story, uh, let's call him Dave. So anyways, right, you know, Dave was in the third grade, and in the third grade, like at this time, Minecraft was huge. I mean, Minecraft was really big now, but it was like really, really big back in like like 2013, 2014. Dave is quite older, but this is a story from back in his childhood. So anyways, right, you know, one thing that was starting to get pretty big, 2015, 2016, I don't totally know exactly when this story happens, was something called, you know, Minecraft PvP, where basically people would fight each other in Minecraft. And there is this kid in Dave's class who we're going to call Ben, because of course we're going to call him Ben. So anyways, right, you know, Dave and Ben, you know, they weren't necessarily best friends, but they started to get to know each other because they both were really into the whole Minecraft. Minecraft player versus player battles and so they would start to like play a little bit you know with each other after school they would go on Minecraft servers and they would fight each other and it was actually quite fun so Dave and Ben started to become friends in class and the thing is though uh, Dave was not friends with Ben after what is about to happen, which is absolutely crazy, but you'll have to wait for that one, right? So anyways, right, you know, Dave and Ben, you know, they're talking at recess. So there's out there, there's a swing set at this school's recess, uh, at this school's recess, at the school's playground. So Dave and, Sw Dave and Ben, they're both on the swings, and, uh, you know, Ben is like, man... I don't know. I really don't like Miss Davenport. So Miss Davenport's going to be the name of their teacher for their math class. And Dave's like, dude, I know she's the worst. And Ben's like, bro, like, I wish I could just like spend my entire day getting better at Minecraft PvP, like learning how to like be better. But instead, I have to spend all this time learning my times tables, bro. I hate those. Little side note, I hated my times tables because I would be like time to be like, you have to do all these in one minute. I'm terrible under pressure. I did not like those. But anyways, Dave and Ben, you know, they were talking about how they really didn't like, you know, the Minecraft, uh, the Minecraft, the, the, the math they had to do in their class and how they thought that their teacher was like extra, extra mean, even though Dave tells me in retrospect, the teacher was actually super normal. Like she was like, honestly, just trying to teach them the fundamentals of math that they would need for like the next seven years of schooling. But at that time, Dave and Ben, the Minecraft kid, they just... They just didn't get that. So Dave and Ben decided that, you know what, they were going to pull a prank on their teacher to somehow get more time to play Minecraft. So what they were going to do is they were going to find a way to bring their, like, computers into class and to play Minecraft, like, during class so that they can... Because, like, what they were thinking is Dave and Ben, the Minecraft kid, were like, you know what, 
I hate math. When am I actually going to use it? But you know what I'm using every day? My Minecraft player versus player battle skills. Oh, yeah, baby. So, yeah, basically they were thinking to themselves, like, we got to practice in class because we're wasting all of our time doing math. This is ridiculous. So, anyways, they, they conjure up a plan. And the whole plan is that they will, like, put their backpacks on their desk because they actually had pretty big desks. And they would also sit all the way in the back of class and their backpacks would be like on the desk enough so that it would be kind of blocking their computers. Then they'd whip out their computers and you know, they would have their mouses or whatever and then they would play Minecraft in class and they just like attach the school Wi-Fi. This was so far back then that like the school Wi-Fi, like people, like the, P the administrators in the school didn't even know about like how to do like Wi-Fi blocking. You know how like some, like when you go to school Wi-Fi, you can't look up certain sites or use certain things. This was back in the day when like they didn't even know about this. They're just like, oh, internet connection, cool. Anyone can use it, we don't really care. I don't know if every school was like this, but at least Dave and Ben's school was like this. So anyways, the next day rolls around and they bring their computers into school. And on, on the way out, Dave's mom was like, oh, honey, why do you have your computer with you? And, uh, you know, Dave was like, um, I need to think quick on the spot. He's like, uh, we need it for class. And Dave's mom's like, oh, cool. So anyways, Dave goes into school. He meets up with Ben before class. He's like, bro, are you ready? And Ben's like, yeah, dude, I got my, you know, I got my PC. I'm ready for this. So they go into class and they both sit in the back of the class. And the teacher's like, all right, class, today we'll be learning about long division. By the way, screw long division. That is the worst thing ever. But anyways, right, so Dave and Ben, you know, they're sitting in the back of class. They pull out their backpacks and they put them on their desk. And the teacher kind of looks over and doesn't think anything of it. She's like, weird but if you want if you want to have less desk space then be my guest bro like that's not on me that's on you so whatever and then dave and ben you know they pull out their computers and then they pull out their mice and they barely have enough room to fit everything on there but barely is still is still it you know they still have enough room even if it's barely enough room so anyways right they get their laptops out they connect to the wi-fi they're in, they're like, all right, this is perfect. So they go on whatever player versus player Minecraft server where they can fight each other and other people. I don't know if it was Hypixel back in the day. I don't know if it was like uh, uh, like a bad lion or whatever. I don't even know. I don't know the history that well. But they go on their server, right? And the thing about like Minecraft PvP, if you don't know, when you fight someone in Minecraft, you normally have like a sword. Normally, I mean, you can have like bow, rod, uh, lava bucket. You can have a lot of stuff. But normally it's sword fighting, and for sword fighting, you need to click. And neither of these kids have auto clickers or anything like this. So they wanted to swing their sword. They needed to click. And the thing is, right, they didn't have some kind of, like, ghost mouse that makes no sounds when you click it, which I, I don't know even if that's a thing, because, like, why would you want that? I, 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 except for this very specific situation, which doesn't come up often. Well, actually, I don't know, man. I mean, I'm not typically in class pretending to be like hiding behind like a backpack secretly playing minecraft ignoring my math schools or my, my my like math class or whatever that doesn't normally happen but anyways right so the thing is for them to play they need to be clicking and remember this class isn't super loud and rowdy and no one else is on their computers and no one else is clicking a mouse so they don't even really think of this. They're just like Dave and Ben are just so excited to the fact that they're able to play Minecraft during their math class that they legitimately just start, they get on the server and they go, actually, I have a mouse with me right now. They just start going, they just start like going crazy and they're clicking away and they're fighting people and they're doing pretty well, right? So Dave is super focused right now. He's playing this kid who's actually pretty good. And they're, you know, they're really close. They're basically have the same number of hits. And he hears Ben whisper, Dave, 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 Dave. And ben, or uh, and, and Dave's like, Ben, stop, stop. I'm in the middle of a fight. And that's when the teacher says, then he hears his name again, but he hears Dave. And sure enough, it is Miss Davenport. And he looks up and he immediately closes his computer. And at this point, like, Ben is like, oh my God. And Dave is like, uh, hi, Miss Davenport. Uh, how's it going, Miss Davenport? How's it going there? Ha <laughs> what's good? Miss Davenport, and sure enough, like, Miss Davenport's like, you too, you're coming with me. And they pack their bags and they walk up to the principal's office and they get in trouble because you're not supposed to be doing that in class. And, uh, yeah. 
And the principal, you know, ends up calling their parents. You know, when Dave gets back, Dave's mom's like, you were playing Minecraft. You were playing, like, video games. I don't know if she knew if it was Minecraft exactly. So, you were playing video games in class. You are supposed to be paying attention. Like, you know, this is foundational material for the rest of your, like, the rest of your academic career. Like, you're going to be in college and college math class, and you're going to be thinking back, why didn't I pay attention to that long division? Bro, I've never done long division like since seventh grade or since fourth grade, bro. Just a little tip. I mean, learn it because you need to pass, but I've never used that stuff again. Oh my god. Anyways, though, Dave is not happy, and you know Ben is also not happy. So the next day, you know, while they did get in trouble, they still had their recess privileges. So they went out back to the swing set, and they were and Ben was like, "Dude, dude, Miss Davenport is the worst." And Dave's like, "Bro, bro, 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 one hundred percent, she is the worst." Even though, like, in retrospect, Dave tells me that Ms. Davenport was literally just doing her job and that Dave back then and Ben, his friend, were just a bunch of dumb kids. But anyways, at the time, Dave and Ben were like, bro, she is the worst. We need to actually get back at her for what she did to us. Dave's like, bro, what were you thinking? And Ben's like, you know what? Last night, I was just so angry that I was sitting there and I was just trying to come up with something. I was trying to come up with an epic prank that would truly get her. So Dave and Ben end up doing something, which you guys will hear in just a little bit. That is something that I have to do a little bit of a disclaimer. Do not do this. I have personally never done it, and I actually don't know anyone who's done this. And it's also pretty illegal, and it's, it, it's, it's a jerk move, and you should never do something like this. That's just my disclaimer coming from me so I can freely tell the rest of the story. So anyways, on the swing set... Dave and Ben, since they live close to each other and they're allowed to kind of roam around, Ben's like, dude, I figured out exactly where Ms. Davenport lives last night. And Dave's like, bro, what? And and Ben's like, dude, Ms. Davenport, she lives really close to us. Like, she lives like five minutes away. And Dave's like, bro, okay, what do you want me to do with this information? And Ben's like, dude, my mom just bought eggs. And she probably, so much stuff goes in her fridge, she won't notice if she loses some eggs, right? And Ben's like, or Dave's like, bro, Ben, I don't understand what you're trying to say. And that's when Ben says, you and me, tonight, we're going to go egg her house for what she did to us. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment door down below. That's for the OGs of this channel. If you don't get it, that's all good. But if you've been around for a while, that probably that probably brought you back. But anyways, if you made it this far into the video, comment door down below, D-O-O-R, or the thing that like, you know, you enter a house with or a building with. Uh, I just wanna see how many people make this far into, into the video. And also, if you wanna support the channel, literally binge watch these videos, like sit down and watch a bunch of story videos in a row. It really helps me out more than you can ever imagine. And let me know in the comment section what you are doing while binge watching these videos. Are you playing video games? Are you doing some artwork? Are you gonna sleep? Whatever you're doing, let me know. I'll heart it. And I'll even sometimes throw up your comments on screen. So here are some people. Here's a little bit of a shout out to these people. If you want a bit of a shout out in a future video, just comment how you're supporting the channel and yeah let's get back to it so anyways right at this point dave and ben you know they they kind of commit to you know doing the thing that they're going to do and after school you know they they basically have a plan to tell their parents that they're going on a night uh, like a nighttime walk at like eight and then they're gonna meet up at a certain place so anyways it's like 7 55 and dave's starting to get butterflies in his stomach like, this is really crazy. He's starting to feel really, like, weird about this, but he's like, you know what, screw it. I'm just going through with it. So it's 8 o'clock. He walks out there, and he meets up with his friend Ben, and sure enough, Ben has four eggs in his hand. So they're not going to, like, you know, some gat- they're not going to load up a Gatling gun with a thousand eggs and completely, like, I don't know, uh, they're not going to turn her egg her, her house into an omelet or anything like that, but they're still going to egg the house, which, once again, disclaimer, do not do, do not ever do. It's not even, like, cool or anything like that. You're an idiot if you do it. Anyways, because you will get in trouble, dumbass. But anyways, Dave and Ben, they start walking over, and they're hiding the eggs, right? They, they walk over to where Miss Davenport's house is, and they sneak around over, and then they hide in the bushes, right? And Dave turns to Ben. He's like, dude, are you sure about this? And Ben's like, don't forget what she did to us. And with that, Dave gets, Dave gets a little angry. He takes one of the eggs. He's like, on three. And then Ben takes one of his eggs. He's like, all right. And Dave's like, three, two, 
one, and then two eggs splat. And then he's like, all right, we got to fire this one quickly. They take both of them again. And sure enough, they got four eggs right across the side of the house. And this time they need to get out of there. So they don't run away, but they kind of like power walk away and they kind of sneak out of there and they watch and they hear the door open. But by that time they are out of sight. So Dave and Ben quickly like power walk away and they go out of sight, out of distance. They're like, oh my God. (sighs) Oh my God, that was crazy. They're like, we totally got her. And Dave is like, we totally got her. And Ben's like, I don't know. And Dave's like, dude, we totally got her. Like, how could you want to get her more? And once again, Ben's like, I don't know, man. I, I, I don't know if that was enough. And Dave's like, well, that was enough for me. So sure enough, they go back, you know, they go back home. They go to bed. You know, the next day they wake up and, you know, uh, you know, they go to school and they're sitting. And, you know, once again, they go back to their, uh, their swing set. And Dave is like, man, I don't know. I just don't feel satisfied with what happened. I feel like she deserves more. And at this point, Ben's like, bro, or Dave's like, bro, Ben, what do you mean? We got our, we got our house. We got our good. And yeah, Ben's just like, man, I don't know, Dave. Like, I just, I just don't feel like we actually did get her good. I feel like, I feel like there's still more that can be done. The right, the wrong has not been righted. And Dave's like, bro, chill out. The, the wrong has definitely been righted, which by the way, two wrongs do not equal a right, bro. But and anyways, right. So sure enough, they go back to class. And they're sitting there, and, you know, Miss Davenport calls on Ben. Ben doesn't know the answer, and doesn't embarrass him from the whole class. But, bro, when you get called on, and you very clearly are not trying to have your hand raised because you're not trying to get called on, and the teacher calls on you in class, and everyone looks, and you turn around, and you're like, "Ah, I have no idea what you're talking about. That's embarrassing. But apparently, that was just like... That was the last straw for Ben. And as they're like, so their school is out or not school is out, but school is out for the day. They're going to, they're waiting in line to be picked up by their parents. And Ben walks up to Dave and is like, bro, I'm getting revenge on Miss Davenport for embarrassing me today. And, you know, Dave's or Dave's like, bro, what are you talking about? And Ben's like, dude, she's been crazy recently. And what we did was just like, it was a, it was a little drop in the bucket. It really means nothing. But I'm going to get her tomorrow. And I'm going to use my Minecraft skills to get her back. I'm going to you put my training to good, good use. And Dave looked at him and had literally no idea what he was going to do. So he's like, okay, man, <laughs> cool. So anyways, the next day rolls around. And once again, before class, they're at recess and they're sitting on the swings. Dave and Ben always sit on the swings together. No one else really uses the swings, so they're kind of like, it's the place they always go to. And Dave is just talking, and Ben's like, bro, you're going to want to be in class today. And Dave's like, dude, of course I'm going to be in class. Like, (laughs) what what would I do if I skipped it? Sit in the bathroom, dude? Like, what? Because remember, they didn't really have phones then. I mean, phones were a thing, but since they were kids, they didn't really have it. But uh, anyways, uh, Ben goes on, bro, you're going to want to be there. And Dave's like, okay, like, do you want to tell me? And Ben's like, nope, it's going to be a surprise. But just know that Miss Davenport is not going to want to mess with me or anyone else, including you, after this. And Dave's like, okay, man, cool. So they get to class. And, uh, you know, they... <laughs> Dave, Dave sits next to Ben, and he looks over, and there's something's weird with Ben's bag. And, and, and that's when Dave realizes, you know those, like, fake plushy Minecraft diamond swords that you can buy online, like the little toy things? Yeah, one of those, the handle of that was sticking out of his, it was sticking out of his backpack. And Dave looks at Ben and is whispering, like, yo, dude, why is there a, why is there a diamond sword in your backpack? And Ben's like, bro, you're going to see, dude. And Dave's like, okay. Uh, what? And Dave's like, bro, just wait. It's going to be crazy. And Dave's like, all right, man. I'll trust you on this one. So sure enough, right, you know, Dave, uh, Ben is kind of just waiting to be called on. And sure enough, Miss Davenport's like, all right, Ben, can you answer this? Because she was going around just asking people. And Ben's like, Miss Davenport, I did not raise my hand. And Ms. Davenport's like, well, sometimes I call on people. It's just part of the class. And Ben is like, stands up. He's like, that is the last time that you disrespect me, ma'am. And he gri- reaches into his backpack and whips out his diamond sword. And Dave is like, oh, my God, this guy's gone off the rocker. And he starts swinging it around like. 
And uh, the, Ms. Davenport's like, Ben, what is that? Like, why, why do you have, like, a little fake plastic sword or whatever? And Dave is like, you, or Ben is like, you don't understand. He starts walking towards her, swinging it. Everyone in the class is dead silent. They're like, bro, this kid's gone insane. Oh, my God. But anyways, right, so Dave, or not Dave, Ben is walking towards him with the sword. Miss Davenport's like, dude. Or she doesn't say, okay, Miss Davenport, the teacher, the 40-year-old math teacher does not say dude, but she's like, Ben, put that down immediately, and you're coming with me to the, you know, the principal's office. And Ben's like, no, you disrespected me and my brethren for too long. And he goes up, and he's like, any last words? And, you know, Miss da Davenport's like, Ben, put that thing down immediately. You and I are going to the principal's office. Cut off mid-sentence. Why was she cut off mid-sentence? Well, because at that point, Ben had enough, and he swung with the diamond sword. However, he got too close to her. So when he swung with the diamond sword, he held the diamond sword in his fist so tightly that when he swung, he didn't hit her only with the diamond sword. He accidentally hit her with his fist that was clutching onto the diamond sword so tightly that he basically just square punched her in the face. And at this point, it was such like, I know he's just a little kid, but just like the shock and the momentum and just somehow he got it just right that he went, whoopa! And Miss Davenport stood there for like a second and then just collapsed on the floor. And everyone, their mouths were just gaping open. They were just like, oh. Huh? What? What? Huh? Oh, oh, what is going on? What is going on? What? And so, okay, so sure enough, one girl just runs out of the room immediately. And Ben is kind of just standing there, just kind of shocked with what happened. Because, bro, you're not expecting to knock out the teacher with your diamond sword. I don't care how delusional you are. Like, you were just not expecting that to happen. And, you know, Ben's just standing there. He's like, oh, my God. 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 What I do? What I do? And when the class is like, oh, my God. She, is she dead? Oh, my God. She was not dead. She's just knocked out. But within, like, five minutes, the girl that ran out actually ran out just to go get, like, help from, like, security or whatever. And sure enough, security walks in, and they look at what's happening. They see the kid with the diamond sword and the teacher slumped over, and the girl points to him and says, that's the kid. Security goes up, grabs Ben, is like, you're coming with us. And the other security officer goes and checks, like, Ms. Davenport's pulse to make sure that she wasn't, like, actually, you know, destroyed by that. And sure enough, she was fine, but, like, she was knocked out. They call an ambulance. Ambulance comes over. Miss Davenport starts coming back, too. You know, she's given water, electrolytes, whatever. And Dave is sitting there like, oh, my, oh my God. So Ben actually gets up getting expelled from the school. He's not suspended. He's not in trouble. He's expelled from the school. They have, like, a zero tolerance for anything like that. However, you know, there was some questioning to Ben about, like, the recent, like, egging to her house because she did report it to the school. And Ben, thankful, Dave, thankful, like, thankful to Ben, Ben did not say anything. Ben kept his mouth shut, said he knew nothing of it, that that was ridiculous, and they didn't look any further into it. And Ben and Dave never really spoke that much afterwards because Dave's mom like, I don't want you hanging out with Ben, he's a bad influence, and all that kind of stuff. And to this day, Dave and Ben have not seen each other since. And Dave does not know where Ben is. Ben might be at some other school. I, Dave thinks that, like, the parents moved because he actually walked over to see, like, if Ben was at his house because he wanted to, like, to see how he was doing. And it was, like, a totally different family in that house when he went over. It was kind of weird, but whatever, right? And, uh, yeah, to this day, Dave has no idea what's happening, and it was probably the craziest story of his life. Today I get a story time of, a, of another one of these Minecraft kids deciding to uh, fight back against his babysitter in a quite uh, unconventional way, you might say. I mean, I bet you can read the title right now. So, yeah, with that being said, sit back, relax, subscribe if you haven't already, and let's call today's subscriber who submitted this story to me, let's call him Ryan. So, Ryan was friends with this kid who really liked Minecraft. So we're calling him the Minecraft Kid because that always works in the title and uh, you guys like the Minecraft Kid stories and I like telling them. But anyways, right, Ryan was invited over to this kid who he didn't know that well 
and we're just gonna call him the Minecraft Kid. So anyways, right, Ryan was invited over to the Minecraft Kid's house to, well, you know, play Minecraft with him. The idea was he was gonna go over on a Friday night and play some Bed Wars with this kid. Honestly sounds like a pretty sick Friday night, if you know what I mean. However, he didn't really know much about this kid, and he only kind of just started to know him because Ryan's mom and the Minecraft Kid's mom became friends like a couple months ago when they were both volunteering for something, or maybe they they just met, I don't know why, but Ryan's mom and the Minecraft kid's mom became friends, and for that reason, you know, Ryan's mom's like, oh, I have a son about your son's age, they should totally hang out. And since Ryan knew nothing about the Minecraft kid, it, at their first, like, interaction, which wasn't, like, a sleepover playdate type thing, he was like, so, what do you like to do? And he's like, I like to play Minecraft. He's like, cool, do you like to play Bed Wars? And he's like, yeah, it's my favorite game. So they bonded over it. So anyways, Ryan was heading over to the Minecraft kid's house, and uh, Ryan's mom told him, hey, just so you know, uh, the Minecraft kid's mom is not going to be there. Uh, she's going to be out for something. However, they hired a babysitter, and the Minecraft kid's mom should be back by, like, 10 or 11. And Ryan was like, all right, that's totally fine. I, I don't really care. It's not like we're, we would have been hanging out with the Minecraft kid's mom and having her play in our Bed Wars trios or something, man. So it's fine. So Ryan gets over to the Minecraft kid's house, and when he gets there... No one greets him at the door. He kind of stands there for a second, and he knocks on it, and he stands there for, like, a little more time, and uh, he hears noises coming from upstairs, and it's a two-story house, and there's a, there's a window right above him, and the window is open, and he can hear noises, and you know what noises he hears? He hears block placing noises. He hears a uh, golden apple eating noises. He hears bed break noises. He's like, wait a minute. Bro, the Minecraft kid is playing Bed Wars right now. And, uh, you know, Ryan was thinking that he would have yelled up to the Minecraft kid, but the door eventually opened, and presumably the babysitter, or who we thought the babysitter was, which, no, it was the babysitter. That isn't, like, the big secret of the story, but the babysitter comes and, you know, opens the door and says, hey, so sorry, uh, Minecraft kid's upstairs. I'm, you know, making dinner right now for you guys. It'll be ready in, like, 30 minutes, so make sure you're not in the middle of the game in, like, half an hour. And uh, Ryan's like, all right, that sounds pretty cool. So he goes up the stairs, he opens the door, and the Minecraft kid's like, what's good, bro? I'm in the middle of a game. Get your, like, laptop out and set your stuff up, and we'll go into, like, doubles in just a second. Uh, and so sure enough, and by the way, guys, Bed Wars is, it's a Minecraft game where you can, like, it's fun. You should go look it up and play it, maybe. But just for context, it's a video game um, on Minecraft. But anyways, right, so he sets up his, uh, his gaming setup or whatever. He gets that all ready. And yeah, sure enough, the Minecraft kid eventually wins his game. Great work, Minecraft kid. Uh, not so great work at later the night, as you can tell by the title. But uh, yeah, anyways, Ryan and the Minecraft kid, they start playing some, uh, some Bed Wars duos. Life's pretty good. And that's until they're in the middle of a game, and it's really, really intense, right? It's getting really down to the wire. If you know a thing or two about Bed Wars, all the beds have been broken, and they're really just both of them, Ryan and the Minecraft kid, are super stacked. They have their golden apples. They have their diamond armor. Yes, they sweated to diamond armor. And the two people that were remaining were about as good as they were. And they were playing for, for all the marbles at this point, man. This was pretty intense. And that's when the babysitter yells, All right, guys, time for dinner. And the Minecraft kid's like, Well, one second yells down that and you know ryan and the minecraft kid are like all right how are we going to do this do we go in do we wait and the minecraft kid is a big fan of like camping which in a video game when you're camping that basically just means that like you're staying on defensive ground and you're waiting for the opponent to come to you which in bed wars if you're super super stacked that can kind of give you the advantage because you can always drop golems you got a hometown advantage if you have the regen thing um Camping is an okay strategy, super late game, but that also means that the game's going to be a long time. And Ryan says to the Minecraft kid, hey man, do you think we should like be aggressive and we should be the one attacking them because like, you know, our food is like dinner is ready. Do you think we should just go do that for the sake of doing that just so we can, and we'll play another game when we come back. And the Minecraft kid's like, no, like I know that we'll win. Like we have prop four diamond, they don't. They, but if we go to them, there's a chance that they knock us off, we fall while going, they fireball us over. It's just a lot more dangerous to go over. He said, we're staying here. And Ryan, who doesn't really care, he's like, all right, man, sure, we'll stay here. And then you know, a minute later, the babysitter says, guys, you don't want dinner to get cold? 
And Minecraft Kid's like, one second! Which, it wasn't going to be a second. Like, it was going to be probably like five, ten minutes on average remaining of the game. And uh, so, yeah, uh, Ryan and the Minecraft Kid were waiting it out. And the thing was, the other team was camping too, which basically means that they were both just collecting gear and such, and they weren't attacking each other. So then the babysitter was, you know, yelled up again, like, guys, like, come on, like, I made you something, like, I told you not to be in the middle of a game. And he's like, once again, the Minecraft kid instead of saying, hey, I'm so sorry, can we be down there in five to ten minutes? Like, I apologize. He's like, one second! He just keeps yelling down one second. And the babysitter kind of did something that uh, she probably shouldn't have. Like, it just wasn't that deep, but I think the babysitter was kind of getting mad that, you know, they just were refusing to come down when, she, you know, she was sweating out some good food or whatever. So the babysitter, what she does is she goes to the Wi-Fi routum, and yes, you can probably already guess, unplugs it and replugs it. Which basically, if your Wi-Fi, at least in my case, whenever my Wi-Fi is super slow or just kind of sucks, I go to the Wi-Fi routum or router or whatever, I go, routum? What am I saying? I go to the Wi-Fi router, and I think I combine router and modem. My fault. I go to I, I go to my Wi-Fi router or box, unplug it, replug it. Wi-Fi is down for like five minutes, but then it comes back nice and fresh and clean. However, the Wi-Fi goes down. So basically, right, Ryan and the Minecraft kid are in the middle of a match, and like they start like you know they start to go to like buy something from the store, and Ryan's clicking on it, but it's not registering it. And Ryan's like, dude. Dude, 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 I, I think I'm disconnecting. And at this point, right, if you disconnect, you lose. And the Minecraft kid's like, no, no, it's not working. Why can't I place blocks? Why are things not registering? And then both at the same time, they get a message, like, ki not kicked, but like, uh, it disconnects from Hypixel, like, no connection. And the Minecraft kid's like, no! Started slamming his fist. And Ryan, who doesn't really care, and it looks at the Minecraft kid, and the Minecraft kid was like, I was on a 99 win streak. I, w I won 99 games in a row. I was going to go to 100. I've been recording the whole thing. I was going to clip it and post it on YouTube, man. I was about to get 100. <laughs> Basically, he was pretty upset. So Ryan and the Minecraft kid, Ryan just looks at the Minecraft kid and be like, all right, man, I'm so sorry. Like, we'll grind it out tonight. We'll get you back to at least halfway, which was a lie. They were not going to play, nevertheless, win 50 games in a row. But, you know, Ryan's just trying to calm the air. And he's like, yeah, man, don't worry. We'll get back to it. So they walk down and the babysitter is waiting there. And she's like, guys, like, I asked you to come down. If you weren't going to come down, you should have at least told me. And I would have put it back in the stove. Now the food is cold. It really took me, you know, Turning off the Wi-Fi to get you guys to come down. Teenagers these days. Or not teen. I guess. It's she, she's a teenager. She's the babysitter. I guess pre-teens these days. And that's when Ryan is like, oh my god, she turned off the Wi-Fi. That's why we froze in the game. And Ryan looks over at the Minecraft kid, whose face, he, he's just stood there. Like he's been frozen by like a, a, a spell that turns you to stone. He's just frozen there, looking at her. Her, his, like, jaw starts to slack a little bit, like, oh my god. Oh my god, it was you. It was you who got in between me and the 100 Bed Wars win streak. Real quick comment, Minecraft, if you made it this far into the video, is that will be the secret word of the day. And if you want to support the channel, as always, just go ahead and binge watch several videos or a bunch of videos whenever you have the time. And let me know, let me know in the comments if you do do this, because... It really does support me more than you can probably even imagine. It boosts the channel. YouTube likes watch time anyways. So right now, remember, Ryan and the Minecraft Kid just lost in a very important game for the Minecraft Kid. He almost got a 100 win win streak, which is pretty, pretty impressive, I'm not going to lie. But unfortunately, the babysitter, who kind of like overreacted a little bit, got mad and unplugged the Wi-Fi, and that made them lose the game. But they probably were actually going to win. And so when they walk down, they have no idea that the babysitter was the reason why they lost the game until the babysitter is like, oh, guys, like, I really had to pull the Wi-Fi plug to get you guys down here. Like, crazy how, t like, preteens are these days or kids on their phones too much, like, on that, like, old man behavior type thing, even though this girl was, like, 17 or something. And the Minecraft kid is just so angry. He's like, you, you're the reason I lost my Minecraft game. And she's like, sorry, like, uh... Should have come down faster, or should have at least told me. And she goes to sit down, and Ryan is also like, all right, well, this is going to be a little awkward, but whatever. 
I'm still going down to sit down, like, whatever. Like, he's not going to react that ridiculously. Um, how do I say this? Yeah, no, he acted ridiculously. The Minecraft kid waits until the girl sits, or the babysitter, she's 17. I guess she's still, like, a girl, I guess. She is, on, I, I, guess, I don't know. So he waits until the babysitter, right, sits down. And when the babysitter sits down, the Minecraft kid runs up to her, grabs a chair. St this is like the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Grabs a chair, turns around, pulls down his pants, and rips, rips up. <laughs> Dude, I I'm 19 years old, and I'm telling you about Minecraft kid revenge farting in someone's face. I'm doing it. I'm going through with it. I'm already so... I I'm too far in the story to, to turn around. The Minecraft kid, after getting on the chair, ripping down his pants, farts in the babysitter's face, directly her eye while it was open. If you don't know, the reason why the fart smells bad, because there's a lot of gross particles in it. And when the gross particles get into your eye, your eye can get infected, and it can be really bad. So the babysitter legitimately falls out of her chair and starts, like, screaming. Because, like, the... Because <laughs> apparently he really ripped one. He really ripped one, man. And her eye was open. And it was really close. And uh, Ryan was like, well... So this kid and I have one thing in common. We like Bed Wars. And we have nothing else in common. And this will probably be the last time I ever hang out with him. And, uh, yeah, so the babysitter's like, what did you do? Why would you do that? Like, that's so ridiculous and disgusting. Like, ah, oh, my eye, it burns. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my eye, it burns. Like, why would, why would you do that? Like, ah, oh, uh, uh. And Ryan looks at the Minecraft kid, and the Minecraft kid is literally laughing. He's like, <laughs> and Ryan's like, oh my god, this kid's insane. Because the thing was, Ryan's thinking to himself, dude, this kid must do this all the time. Because, like, you're not just going to think to yourself, wow, I'm so angry at this person. Let me wait until they sit down, grab a chair, stand on it, turn around, pull down my pants, and fart directly point blank into their face. That's just not something that comes to you in the heat of the moment. That I, I mean, maybe, maybe I'm just built different from all you guys. I really don't know, but that definitely doesn't come to me. But uh, sure enough, right, uh, the babysitter eventually gets up, and Ryan and the Minecraft kid look at her face, and her left eye is red and swollen. And Ryan's like, oh my god, that is definitely not a coincidence. And the babysitter is like... Move out of my way. And she moves past both of them, goes and finds the home phone, because I guess her phone was an honor or something, and legitimately calls 911, an ambulance. Which, okay, that was maybe a little excessive, but maybe I wouldn't drive if my eyes were impaired and I thought that they were going to be infected and it would have been bad. And she walks back into the room, and she's, like, angry, but also very clearly in pain, right? And she's like, her hand is over her eye, and she's like, you, like, why would you do that? And the Minecraft kid's like, well, I was actually on a 99 win streak, and you pulled the plug, and I lost my 99 win. She's like, and you projectiled all your stuff out of your butt. Oh, God. How can I, how can I have a straight face and tell the story? Anyway, she's like, and you probably gave me a raging infection. My eye burns, like... Uh, if I lose sight, I'm suing your fan. She was getting mad. And eventually, right, the ambulance does come. She explains the ridiculousness of the situation. The guy, uh, she, I mean, she's put, she sits in the ambulance, drives to the hospital. Um, they check her out or whatever. But remember, this is from Ryan's perspective. So we don't exactly know what the doctor says. Ryan's mom, who got really invested in the situation afterwards, said that, like, the doctor's, like, her her eye is fine now. But the doctor said that, like, it really could have gone south if she didn't go there, like, immediately, which is insane. So anyways, right, uh, Ryan and the Minecraft kid are legitimately just... In this house alone, and that's when the Minecraft kid's mom comes back early, super angry and upset, because the babysitter sent a message to, you know, his mom explaining everything and why that she, he, she had to leave the premises immediately. So the Minecraft kid's mom had to leave whatever she was doing to come back, and she was like, walks in, she's like, you, turns to the Minecraft kid, like, you did it, you pulled a... <laughs> You pulled a face fart on someone again. We've already talked about this. 
And Ryan, who is still there, he's already, by the way, he's already texted his mom to come pick him up, um, is just like, again? I mean, he had a sneaking suspicion that this was not a first-time thing, as I said. In the heat of the moment, you don't think to, you know, use your butt as a weapon. But he's like, again? This is a thing? And the Minecraft kid's like, but mom, I was on a 99 Bed Wars win streak. And she's like, that's enough. No more Bed Wars for you forever. And the Minecraft kid's like, man, no, no, mom, I promise I won't fart in anyone else's face again. <laughs> What am I doing with my life? Anyways, right, so Ryan's mom comes, and Ryan's mom's like, hey, so sorry, things were weird today. Like, I'm just gonna pick Ryan up. Thank you so much for having him over. Ryan, come with me now. And, you know, Ryan walks over and goes in the back seat of the car, and Ryan's mom is like, so, do you want to elaborate on, I need to pick you up right now. My friend farted in the babysitter's eye, and now she's at the hospital. And Ryan did elaborate and it really didn't add any clarity to the situation. In fact, Ryan's mom just became more Click confused. on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. Today, I got a pretty crazy story for you guys. It's about a Minecraft kid that gets so angry and jealous of the subscriber that he actually smashes his computer in front of everyone to get quote-unquote revenge. Uh, don't worry. Karma does get him. Uh, but anyway, subscribe if you're new, and let's just jump right into this. So we're going to call today's subscriber who submitted the story, Brendan. Uh, by the way, if the, if the gameplay in the for Bed Wars really sucks in the background, I recorded it a month ago. I'm pretty better now. But anyways, we're calling this guy Brendan who submitted this story. So anyways, Brendan was in class or was in the same grade as this kid who we're going to call the Minecraft kid because his entire identity was being a, was kind of like around being super great at Minecraft player versus player battles. He was known as the one who was so great. So anyways, right, people just called him Minecraft kid. But anyways, there's also a girl who we're going to call Haley because uh, that may or may not be the, the girl I'm trying to marry in Stardew Valley right now. I gave her the bouquet. I'm winning, guys. Anyway. Great game, by the way. I should stop getting distracted. Watch time will be bad. Anyways, there's this girl who we're going to call Haley, and both Brendan and the Minecraft kid had an interest in her. The difference was Brendan actually talked to her. Little pro tip for getting the ladies from the Connor Pugs YouTube channel. Number one dating advice YouTube channel on all of YouTube and the internet. Talk to... If you want to get to know them, talk to them. Th yes, believe it or not. Wow. But anyways, right, Brendan actually talked to Haley, and they were getting along pretty well, and the Minecraft kid literally never did. The Minecraft kid thought that his magical and powerful skills at Minecraft would literally just be so great and so wonderful and so enticing to the women, right, that uh, he, would, he wouldn't have to talk to Haley to make her fall in love with him. She would just see his epic PvP Bed Wars abilities, and she would be like, "Oh my God, I'm so I'm not I'm not thrown in that joke. Never mind. I I, I got a family friendly audience on here. I forgot." Anyways, right, so uh, Brendan, w or the Minecraft kid was aware that Brendan was probably also trying to go for Haley because Brendan was talking to her all the time. It kind of the word around the like kind of the word on the street was that you know. Brendan and Haley, oh my god, they're gonna be a thing soon, dude, they're in sixth grade, like, that's, that's how it goes, oh my god, are they gonna get the fifth base, aka holding hands, oh my god, it, a, anyways, right, so the Minecraft kid comes up to Brendan one day, and remember, Brendan and the Minecraft kid aren't necessarily boys, in fact, they don't even know each other that well, but the Minecraft kid is like, so, I see that you're trying to court Haley. And, and Brendan's mind, he's like, bro, this is 20-whatever, right? I think this story was a little old. I'm not sure. I actually don't know when this story happened. It was submitted to me on my Instagram. You can go follow it. You should go follow it. Anyways, Brendan's thinking to himself, did this guy just say court? Like, it's literally the 21st century. Are you serious? And then the Minecraft kid goes on to say, I offer you, like, I offer you, like, a quest, or I, 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 I ask you that we duel in Minecraft to decide who will get Haley's hand in dating. And, uh, I mean, Brendan was kind of just like, in his head, he's like, all right, well, first of all, I'm not dating her. Second of all, the winner of a Minecraft PvP battle is not going to decide who she decides, right? It's not up to them. This isn't like, I don't know, the barbaric era of like, oh yeah, like, uh, 
I actually have, like, all men have control, women have no say. Like, oh, I want to marry you, so you're marrying me. And also, I don't think there ever was an era where you did PvP battles to decide who was, like, you know, who would marry the girl. I'm better at Minecraft, I get all the women. Nah, this, that's never been true. It doesn't matter what parallel universe or anything like that you go into, man. I am sorry, Minecraft sweats. I am so sorry. But Brendan, who kind of knows that, you know, he's going to be getting with Haley anyways, uh, thinks to himself, all right, well, this will be kind of funny, like, whatever, man, who cares? So Brendan says, sure, we'll do a PvP battle to decide who gets Haley's hand. Because he's kind of laughing, he's kind of goofing, but the thing is the Minecraft kid takes it super seriously. He's like, yes, you fool, don't you know that I am super great at Minecraft? <laughs> and uh, Brendan's like, oh, chill out, bro, like... All right, all right, yeah, we'll, we'll PvP fight to, to, to decide who gets Haley's hand in marriage. Lol, like, okay. So sure enough, the Minecraft kid is like, all right, tomorrow at recess, we go to the table. Basically, at their school, there was a table where if kids wanted to bring in their computers, if they were in the sixth grade or higher, they could, and they could play on them. I, I, I know at my school, you weren't even allowed to have your phone out, but I guess each school's a little different. So basically, right, the next day rolls around, and Brendan and the Minecraft kid, they both bring their gaming setups, which I guess both of them have laptops, because I play Minecraft on a laptop, man. I don't have a, I don't have a desktop. That's I want to be able to move my thing around. But anyways, right, they both bring in their computers, and Brendan just has a kind of a crappy MacBook Air. And this is coming from someone who, uh, up to my first 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, I got all my Minecraft gameplay from my MacBook Air at like 20 frames per second. So I understand the struggle, bro. I get it. So anyways, Brendan comes in with his crappy MacBook Air, and the Minecraft kid comes in with his like, uh, I don't know, his Alienware $3,000 super gaming laptop with his uh, super fancy keyboard, and it takes him like five minutes to get his setup all perfect. He's like, all right, I'm ready. And uh, so sure enough, uh, you know, they both sit down and Brendan is like, all right, so how are we doing this? And uh, the Minecraft kid is like, all right, we're going to play one game of, uh, of, of Bed Wars. Uh, yeah, Bed Wars. And, you know, Brent, at first Brendan was like, bro, how are we going to do that? But then the Minecraft kid said that he had the like MVP++ rank on Hypixel, which Hypixel is a server that lets you play Bed Wars, which is the game I was playing in the very beginning. And if you have plus like MVP++, you can make private games where it's just you and your friends. So anyways, um, the Minecraft kid, you know, sent a dual request to Brendan or a Bed Wars party, whatever. Anyways, all you got to know is they were playing Minecraft and they were playing Bed Wars and it was just them. It was just... Brendan and the Minecraft kid in a game. And uh, sure enough, they enter the Bed Wars game, and, you know, they, you know, they're doing the stuff you do in Bed Wars, put down the bed defense, and you know what happens? Um, uh, Brendan is at middle, he's gathering emeralds, which is a good material to get. However, you know, his bed was exposed, or he wasn't at his bed. He saw a bed destroyed message, which basically means in Bed Wars, if your bed breaks, you will not respawn. So sure enough, the Minecraft kid had, like, I don't know, God bridged over with his crazy 10,000 clicks per second mouse, definitely using vape or something, but whatever, man. And so sure enough, you know, the, the Minecraft kid comes to middle and Brendan and him, they show down for a PvP fight. They're going to decide who gets Haley, even though Brendan knows that one, he's not good at Minecraft and the Minecraft kid is, and two, this will not decide who gets Haley. This is hilarious. He just did it because it's funny, lol. So anyways, they enter their PvP battle, and they go in, and Brendan loses because he is just simply worse. And the Minecraft kid, after, you know, hitting, you know, Brendan enough times with a sword that he dies, is like, yes, Haley is mine! And everyone, because remember, it's recess time, because, dude, they had like, re I don't know if it's called recess, but they had like a break period. Um, so everyone was kind of around there and a bunch of kids turn around and are kind of like, uh, what, wh what, huh? It, 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 are, are you okay, sir? And sure enough, the Minecraft kid is like, you fool, you should never have dueled me for Haley's hand in dating in Minecraft. You should have known by my reputation that I would have absolutely slapped you. And Brendan looks at him with his face of like, yeah, man. Ah, that sucks. Wow. That is just too bad. 
This kind of reminds me of the first season of Parks and Rec, if you saw that, where uh, this isn't really a spoiler, but uh, Andy really wants to get his girlfriend back, so he like offers like a pool game with this guy named Mark, who disappears after season one. I, I don't know, maybe the actor wanted to do something else, and he's kind of like, oh yeah, I'll bet Anne, the, the girlfriend of Mark at the time, on this pool game, and Andy wins. He's like, yes, she's mine, but uh, reality sits in, it kind of kicks in, and he's like, wait, Huh? But I won her fair and square. Same thing here. So the Minecraft kid is still like, I don't know, Fortnite, uh, W, like, de doing the little dances, doing the L dance, doing the little other cringe stuff. He's like, <laughs> Haley is mine. I didn't even have to talk to her, and she's gonna be my girlfriend. I'm gonna go to 10th base and hold her hand. <laughs> and, and Brandon, at this point, is, like, really trying to hold back a smile. He's like, all right, this is so funny, dude. Don't blow it. Don't make it apparent. Uh, and he's like, yeah, man, you totally, oh, man, I can't do this. I, you totally won. You to, I can't do this. Man. He's, just, he's, he's really trying to do it. He's like, yeah, you totally won Haley's hand in uh, dating because you beat me in Minecraft. Yep, that's totally what happened. Holding back the laughter, holding back the tears at this point. And uh, sure enough, right, Brendan's like, all right, man, go ahead. And he's like, yes. I'm I'm gonna tell everyone about my victory dance so that you know that so everyone knows that you lost to me in Minecraft and that's why Haley is mine. <laughs> the Minecraft kid runs away, uh, to go tell his other, okay friends. Well, I don't know about that. I think his friends are uh, his Bed Wars win streak and, and nothing else. But whatever, right? So Brendan goes over and finds Haley. He says, "Hey, um, so I just played this guy because he wanted to duel me for your hand in dating." And Haley's like what? And Brennan's like, yeah, I thought it'd be funny. So by the way, I lost the duel because obviously you can't do that, but I thought it was funny and I lost. So he's going to come over to claim his prize, I guess. And Haley's like, all right, well, this is kind of funny, but oh, this is an awkward situation. And Brennan's like, yeah, I probably should have told you about this beforehand. If you need me to be here, I can, I can subvert. Yeah, I, I can come in and uh, help you with the situation. She's like, she's like, all right, well, Thanks for giving me context, I guess. So sure enough, a little while later, uh, the Minecraft kid comes around and he finds Haley. And he comes up to her and he says, So, Haley, did you hear the news? This might be the first time the Minecraft kid ever spoke to Haley in his life. He was too busy. He was too busy sweating at Minecraft to even bother with the ladies. They'll come to me, man. I got a Bed Wars win streak. Uh, real quick, comment Bed Wars down below. That'll be the secret word of the day. If you want to help the channel out, go ahead and binge watch some more videos after this one or when you're doing something else. And let me know in the comment section if you do so, so I can say thank you. Anyways, right, so the Minecraft kid's like, so did Haley, did you hear the news? And she's like, well, I was told that you and Brendan had a little Minecraft video game session and that you won and that you now think that I'm your girlfriend. And the Minecraft kid's like, mm. That is exactly what happened. You're so observant. You'll be a great girlfriend. And Haley's like, dude, like, that's not how it works. And the Minecraft kid's like, we had an agreement. And Haley's like, yeah, well, I wasn't part of that agreement. Uh, how, do you think Brendan or you have the right to me as a girlfriend? And this is what the Minecraft kid's starting to piece together that his offer to duel Brendan made literally no sense. He's like, oh, well, um, so, so when we were playing... So, when we're playing Minecraft, I beat Brendan. Uh, can you, can, do you want to be my girl? And then eventually, like, Minecraft kid starts to realize, ah, oh, dude, he messed up, bro. He messed up big time. And he's like, wait, did, did Brent? How, wait, how, who told you? And, you know, at this point, uh, you know, she was like, uh, Haley was like, yeah, so Brendan told me about this. And then the Minecraft kid's like, so Brendan knew the whole time? That this wasn't going to work? And Haley's like, yeah, well, anyone who is logical, middle, just gets cut off the Minecraft kid, sprints away. And Brennan walks up to Haley and is like, so, is that terrible? And Haley's like, well, he's pretty mad at you, and he ran away, so I don't know what he's cooking up. And that's when you, we heard an, or not we, that's when Brendan and Haley and everyone else in the room heard a noise. The noise was something being thrown on the ground, smashing and flying into a million pieces. And that's when Brendan walks out and Haley walks out too. Basically, everyone walks out and they see the Minecraft kid standing above a pile of disc computer parts. 
And that's when, at first, Brendan thinks, oh my God, he smashed his computer out of rage. But Brendan looked at the table to see that the Minecraft kid's computer was still there. And in fact, the only computer missing was his. And that's when he realized that the Minecraft kid obliterated his MacBook. And there was a teacher present. So the teacher is like, Brad, like Minecraft kid, like, what did you just do? And Brendan speaks up and says, uh, he just smashed my MacBook. And all of a sudden, the teacher looks at Brendan and looks at the Minecraft kid and says, you two, come with me. Sure enough, teacher brings him to the principal's office. Principal's office hears what the teacher says. She hears both sides, which the Minecraft kid literally has nothing to say. Like, what are you going to say, dude? And uh, yeah, parents were called, and uh, the Minecraft kid's mom had to reimburse Brendan's mom for the, to buy a new computer. Uh, the Minecraft kid had to write a formal apology to Brendan, and also write a formal, ap and actually both of them had to write a formal apology to Haley because Brendan had to explain the situation, and the teacher's like, dude, that's not cool. And uh, also the Minecraft kid got a week of detention for this. So moral of the story is one, if you're just playing Minecraft all day, you may not, uh, that may not be the most ideal or most optimal strategy to, uh, to get the ladies to love you. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, man. M maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Don't listen to me. I don't know. <laughs> okay. How do I introduce a story like this, man? I mean, you guys can read. You've read the title. All I can say is strap in, d uh, buckle up, because uh, this is going to be quite, quite the ride. Subscribe if you're new and you enjoy stories. And let's call today's subscriber who submitted this. Uh, let's call this guy Mason. So this all happened one day when Mason was in class. And Mason was in fourth grade when this whole thing went down. And there's a kid who, once again, kind of like wore the same Creeper shirt every single day. And it was like the Creeper hoodie. And really, that's not a big deal. They're, like, if you want to wear the Creeper hoodie, I don't really care. However, the mine we're just going to call him the Minecraft kid, right? Because of the Creeper hoodie. Uh, he wore it every single day. Um, and um, maybe, maybe, right? Maybe he has a closet full of like 18 different varieties of the Creeper hoodie. Or maybe his mom does a load of laundry every single day. Or maybe he's just wearing the same Creeper hoodie every single day. I mean, you guys can believe whatever you want, but I think one of those three are a little bit more uh, likely uh, than the other. But anyways, right, so there's this kid called the Minecraft kid because he wore the Creeper hoodie every single day. And he was a little bit strange. And there's nothing wrong with you being a little bit strange. Like, I'm a little bit strange. I mean, I run an app, I run a YouTube channel, man. I mean, that's, that's already putting me in the strange category, unfortunately. But hey, man, I love the YouTube too much to like drop it or anything like that. But sure enough, this all happened one day when the Minecraft kid was in class with Mason. And the Minecraft kid raised his hand. And another thing you need to know about the Minecraft kid is he would take bathroom breaks like six times per class. And I don't know about you, but back in the day, I definitely used to go to the bathroom to like go on my phone or just take a break from the class. However, I would be very like a strategic with it. I wouldn't do it every single day. I do it like every other day. I would make sure that I wasn't away for too, too long, like maybe five minutes max. But this kid, bro, would just abuse the bathroom break button. He was like spamming it, just trying to like, I, I don't know, man. But every single day, you can go to the bathroom minimum two times, maximum like six times. That's what I'm told at least. And uh, sure enough, uh, you know, once again, one day, the Minecraft kid raises his hand for the third time in class. And this has been going on for months. And I just think at this point, the teacher kind of just snapped. And he looks at the Minecraft kid. He's like, yes. And the Minecraft kid says, hey, can I go to the bathroom? And, it, and here's the thing, right? The teacher should not have reacted in the way that he reacted because maybe this kid has like IBS or something. Maybe he has to go to the bathroom like a ton per day. However, if he did, it was not registered with the nurse or even if it was, the nurse did not communicate that properly to the teacher, um, which she probably should have or he probably should have just because, you know, I, I don't know. If a kid's going to the bathroom seven times per day, that might be a little suspicious to the teacher. However, the teacher was kind of just assuming that the kid was just going in to like go on his phone or whatever. And and that was probably the case, but I mean, you really don't know. But after the Minecraft kid says like, hey, can I go to the bathroom for like the third time? Uh, the teacher's like, y you know what? No, you can't go to the bathroom. And the whole class kind of turns around and is like, wait, whoa, 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 pause. Like, hold up now. Like this kid's been asking you to go to the bathroom like seven times a day for the last six months. And now you're saying no? Like what changed, man? And the teacher's like, 
you're going to have to wait till the end of class. You've been going way too much, way too often. Uh, I think you're missing too much of classwork, right? And the Minecraft kid was not happy to hear this. Uh, for all we know, maybe he actually did have to go to the bathroom, but Mason, to be fair, right? Mason has gone to the bathroom. He's the subscriber who submitted this story. He's gone to the bathroom t at times when the Minecraft kid has been th in there, and Mason can hear the volume from his iPhone up all the way. The Minecraft kid is in there playing like Flappy Bird or watching TikToks or whatever. Whatever, man. He's just going on his phone. Maybe he also has to go to the bathroom, but the Minecraft kid obviously definitely was kind of like, most likely was abusing it just to go to the bathroom. But sure enough, the Minecraft kid raises his hand again. He's like, I gotta go. And the teacher says, like, Minecraft kid, you've gone like six times during class every single day for the last six months. You're missing out on class time. Please try and like conserve your like bathroom breaks. I will let you go, but just give it a second. I, I just can't let you go and disrupt the class like a thousand times every single day. And the Minecraft kid was getting kind of angry and he didn't say anything. He wasn't like, no, I really got to go. And the Minecraft kid also didn't just stand up. Unfortunately, I think the Minecraft kid watched a little bit too much uh, South Park. If you guys know what I'm talking about, there's an episode of South Park, which is a TV show, kind of aimed for adults, so I wouldn't go search this up if you're too young, but there's this kid named Cartman. And one time Cartman needed to uh, basically go to the principal's office, so he decided to do number two on the desk of a teacher. And I think the Minecraft kid got a little bit too inspired by Cartman because the Minecraft kid is like, you're gonna want like, I need to go to the bathroom and you're gonna regret it if you don't let me. And the teacher kind of turns around kind of sharply and looks at him and says like, you shouldn't be threatening people. Like that's, that's a very bad thing to do. Like you shouldn't be doing that. He said, you know what? Just because you're threatening me and said in such a threatening voice, you're not allowed to go to the bathroom for the rest of the class. And this only made the Minecraft kid even more upset. And Mason is just sitting here watching this back and forth. And Mason kind of feels a little bit for the Minecraft kid because maybe he really needs to go. Maybe the first two times, yeah, I mean, it is kind of karma if you were just going to the bathroom six times per day just to go on your phone. However, right, I mean, maybe he really has to go, man. It's kind of cruel to like not let someone go to the bathroom when they really need to but he did just go like five minutes ago and 10 minutes before that. So, uh, I don't know, I don't know. Anyways, right, you know, Mason was sitting there and the Minecraft kid raises his hand for a final time and says, you're gonna let me grow, go or you're gonna regret this. And once again, the, Minecraft, the teacher is like, if you threaten me again, you're not gonna be allowed to go to the bathroom ever again when you're in my class. And at this point, the whole class is like, oh, I don't know if they're actually like hyping up like that, but things were getting legit and they could feel it for sure. They're like, oh, dang, dude, like stuff's getting real, right? And sure enough, the Minecraft kid says, very well, have it your way. The teacher kind of like has a little bit of a smile, but quickly brushes it off, probably because he felt like he won that discussion. Like, all right, well, this kid who's been abusing the bathroom system has lost and I won as a teacher and I asserted my dominance. However, right, dominance was not asserted. In fact, uh, it, I don't even know how to explain what's about to happen, so I'm going to do my best. Uh, bear with me. Because the Minecraft kid, it, he, 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 he kind of like stands up. And the teacher is currently facing the board, so the teacher doesn't notice the Minecraft kid stand up. However, Mason, the subscriber who submitted this story, as well as a bunch of other people, by the way, Mason submitted this to my Instagram. It's in the description. You should go follow it, even if you're not going to go submit stories. Uh, give me a big number and make me feel good. Anyways, Mason is watching this whole thing go down, and he sees that the Minecraft kid stands up from his desk. And then the Minecraft kid stands on his chair. And then, then the Minecraft kid stands on his desk. And at this point, almost half the class has turned around watching the Minecraft kid because he's making enough of a commotion. In the next, uh, YouTube, please be nice. YouTube, YouTube man, I'm gonna describe the next thing without making you mad. Uh, so the Minecraft kid, well, he drops his pants. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, he drops his pants. And he says, teacher, and the teacher turns around and is about to be like Minecraft kid for the last time. And he turns around and is like, what? <sighs> what the, uh, huh? And the Minecraft kid is like, teacher, I told you, you, I told you, you would regret not letting me go to the bathroom. And uh, just to put it very, uh, just to be point blank, just to be straight up, just, like, just getting right to the point. Uh, yeah, he just, n number two uh, 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 on the desk, man.
it, it wasn't like anything crazy, right? It was pretty, just a little bit, but yeah. Um, and everyone in the class starts like screaming. Like some of the girls are like, ah! Some of the guys are like, yo, what? That's disgusting, dude. And the teacher's like, Minecraft kid, what on earth are you doing? And the Minecraft kid's like, I told you, you should let me go to the bathroom, dude. Now you're just paying the consequences. The Minecraft kid was like feeling all full of himself. And the teacher was like, D -d Go to the principal's office now! And I don't think the Minecraft kid totally, like, you know, realized what was going on. And the Minecraft kid starts to panic. And the Minecraft kid looks to his left and looks to his right. And when the Minecraft kid looks to his right, you know who he sees? He sees the subscriber. He sees Mason. And he makes eye contact with Mason. And Mason is looking directly at the Minecraft kid and is thinking to himself, Oh my god. Oh my god. What? Wow. But then he's like, wait, why is this kid making eye contact with me? And he's like, Mason made me do it. He dared me. And the teacher's like, Mason! Mason's just like, dude, I swear I was just sitting here. What do you mean? And, and the teacher's like, you know what? No, what? You know what? Minecraft kid, Mason, and anyone else involved, go to the principal's office right now! And Mason is just like, why? 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 So he gets up, and because he's not going to like fight with his teacher when the teacher's literally going through a massive rage moment. And, uh, you know, he starts walking up, and he walks up to the Minecraft kid. He's like, dude, I don't even know who you are. The Minecraft kid's like, just doesn't say anything. So he walks up to the principal's office, and he sits down. And the principal's, off the principal's like, what happened? And Mason explains the side of the story, that he was just a, like a bystander sitting there. And then, you know, eventually, the Minecraft kid walks in, because uh, he had to, I mean... It wasn't like he could, okay, I'm not going to explain why it took him longer, but he got there, right? And sure enough, the principal's like, Minecraft kid, why would you do that? And the Minecraft kid's like, explains aside, and then she's like, and why is Mason here? And the Minecraft kid, who kind of panic blamed him to kind of like lesser the punishment on him, is like, um, Mason dared me to do it. And Mason's like, dude, I don't even know who you are. You're just in my class. And the principal's like, I don't know, Mason, why would he lie about this? Like, there's literally nothing for him to gain. And Mason's like, dude, I don't know. Uh, real quick, comment Minecraft down below if you want to harden your comment. That will be the secret word of the day. And I'll try and harden as many of those comments as possible. And also, if you want to help us get to 600,000 faster, uh, binge watch the videos. YouTube really likes promoting my channels when you guys, like, binge watch a bunch of my videos. So after this video, or when you have the time to sit down and watch a bunch of videos, I've made playlists. You can just, like, go to my channel page. And let me know in the comments when you do this so I can heart it and say thank you and just give a little bit of appreciation for you guys really helping me out. And I really do appreciate it. Anyways, the story gets even more insane, so stay tuned. So anyways, right, back to the story. Mason is in a position where he was just dragged into this. Honestly, Mason to this day doesn't totally understand why the Minecraft kid even singled him out. Mason and the Minecraft kid weren't close friends. They didn't even really know each other. And Mason just assumes that he randomly looked around and picked someone who he just happened to remember the name of and blamed them just to kind of like lesser the punishment on him. In his mind, or I guess in his panic, the idea was like, oh, if I blame someone else and say that they forced me to do it, my punishment will be lesser, right? Which is like, bro, why? Why would you do that? But anyways, sure enough, the principal, unfortunately, is not believing Mason because Mason is explaining that he doesn't even know this kid and he has no idea why he would lie. And uh, the principal kind of doesn't believe him because he's like, Mason, like, if, like, why would the Minecraft kid lie about this, right? It just doesn't make any sense. And the principal's like, well, I guess I just have to make a judgment call in this situation. And Mason, I'm sorry, but you know, I'm going to have to give you a punishment too because I don't believe you. And Mason is just like, what? Are, are you serious? And then Mason said, even if I did, like, dare him to do something ridiculous, it's still up to him. Like, I didn't, for the record, and I stand by that because I don't even know this kid. But if someone was to, why, why would that even matter? And the principal's like, so you're admitting it. And Mason's like, no, I'm just saying it'd be stupid even if I did. But it's double stupid because I didn't even do it. And the principal's like, don't say stupid to me. Mason's like, I'm in fourth grade. And also, this is double stupid. What can I say? So eventually, right, the principal is like, all right, well, I'm going to have to call both your mothers and explain what happened. And Mason's just like, dude, this is the most ridiculous day of my life. 
So sure enough, the principal calls up both their mothers saying, hey, both your sons got in trouble. If you're not busy, can you please come in? And the Minecraft kid's mom was busy at the time, but Mason's mom kind of either had the day off or for some reason wasn't really needing to like be wherever she was. And she said, yeah, I'll come in right away. Maybe she was busy and she thought that this was a good idea to go see like what happened to her son. So Mason's mom comes in and she's like, looks at Mason with this look of like, what have you done? And Mason looks at her with these like eyes of like, bro, I don't know what's going on, confusion, whatever, right? The principal is like, all right, hi, Miss Mason's mom, or, you know, whatever. Uh, well, I'm so glad you could come. And the principal explains what happened. And then she kind of explains how she doesn't believe Mason. And Mason's mom started with a look of concern, and then she almost got a look of, like, annoyance. And the look of annoyance grew and grew the more the principal told the story. And Mason was looking at this and was like, okay, is my mom on my side, or is the look of annoyance because she's so annoyed with me? Either way, ah, uh, this, is, this, this is just the worst situation ever. So sure enough, right, you know, by the end of the story, Mason's mom's like, uh, why am I here? And the principal's like, well, didn't you hear, like, your son, uh, you know, a, a, a supposedly dared him to do it. And Mason's mom, like, first of all, my son disagrees with that statement. You don't really have any proof, but let's say he even did. Why would that matter? And the principal kind of was a little shocked. And Mason's mom's like, you know, isn't it like a, like a cliche saying for parents to be like, if your friend jumped off a bridge, would you as well? Like, are you really just supposed to do whatever the popular kid does? And then Mason's mom's like, even if my son did, which I'm not convinced he did, dared him to do what he did on the desk, right? Why is that my son's fault? Is this kid not like able to function by himself? What, you know, like, is the blame 100% not on, you know, the Minecraft kid anymore? Is any of the blame really supposed to be on my son? And the principal's like, well, I'm sorry you feel this way, but I've made up my mind. Like, your son's going to be suspended for the day. He can come back tomorrow, but he can't be, he can't come back today. And the, and the Mason's mom is like, are you serious? Like, really? And she's like, yeah. And the Mason's mom's like, all right, what punishment did the Minecraft kid get? And the principal said, well, we're doing equal punishment. And Mason's mom's like, you can't be serious, man. You can't be serious. And the principal's like, I'm sorry you disagree, but this is the punishment. So Mason's mom's like, Mason, come with me. And Mason's like, oh, I can't tell if my mom is mad or not. So Mason gets up, kind of all scared or whatever, and he sits in the car. And Mason's mom's like, well, this was unexpected, but uh, Mason, today you got a day off. It is your vacation day. Because that punishment is ridiculous. And then she, and Mason's like, okay, she's on my side. And Mason's mom is like, Mason, please be honest. Did you even, did you, did you dare him to do it? And Mason's like, mom. Pro I promise. Since, uh, look, it looks like you're not angry at me either way. Why would I lie about this? Because and I didn't do it. I don't even know who this kid is. Why would I dare him to do something so ridiculous? Mason's mom's like, yeah, that's what I thought. But even if you did, like, who cares? And this punishment's ridiculous. So you and I, we're going to get ice cream. Because today, you learned a very good lesson. Sometimes there are rules that are ridiculous. And you will be punished. But stay true to your convictions, man. Stay true to your convictions. So Mason and his mom went and got ice cream, and uh, I don't think the Minecraft's my kid, the Minecraft kid's mom was as excited <laughs> or as or as pleased with her son. But click on the video man. on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. Buckle up, strap in, because today I have probably one of the weirdest camp stories I've ever received. That involves a very creepy Minecraft girl that threatens to literally consume, like eat, like nom nom munch time, the subscriber. Yeah, it makes literally no sense. It's super weird. So yeah, strap in, uh, subscribe if you like stories. Let's call today's subscriber who submitted this story. Let's call him Jimmy. So this all happened over the summer, and this was Jimmy's first time ever going to a sleepaway camp. And this specific sleepaway camp was like a wilderness-themed sleepaway camp. They're very popular if you've never been to sleepaway camp, where basically you go and you learn how to kind of like survive on your own. I mean, not really, but it's like kind of like you're cosplaying as someone who would survive on their own, but you're not really. Anyway, so this all happens about on the first second day of sleepaway camp because the first day you know jimmy's mom dropped him off and it's like introductions and all that good stuff but on the second day what they did at this camp is they just like threw you they threw you right into it right so on the second day of camp uh they kind of divided you up into mini groups randomly not by your cabin they wanted to mix you up like with people that you don't see normally and this was your camp group and basically on that second day you were to go and you were to like bring all the camping like equipment 
equipment, not go too far away from the campsite, but uh, go basically into the woods, which they've kind of spotted out before to make sure it's like a viable place. And you go into the woods and you set up camp and you stay the night, kind of just to throw you right into it. So anyways, Jimmy hears his name read aloud and then he hears the name of a bunch of other people that he doesn't re that he just doesn't recognize because, you know, he's new to the camp and basically everyone there is going alone. And so he walks over, because they're all in this big field, right? And he walks over to meet his group, and he meets up with his group, and he kind of, like, scans around, and everyone looks pretty normal, except there's this one girl who Jimmy really didn't think much of, but she had this creeper sweatshirt on, and she also had in her backpack a foam diamond pickaxe. Like, you know how, like, in Minecraft, there's a diamond pickaxe? Uh, basically, you can buy, like, a replica of that that's, like, foam and plastic or whatever. And that was the two kind of, like, weird weird things, right? And she also had, like, some other stuff, like, she had some crazy socks on, she had the, like, the black boots, but that's kind of standard. What really set her apart was the fact that she was wearing the creeper hoodie and had the big Minecraft fake diamond pickaxe in her back pocket, right? Or in her backpack. And that wasn't what made her weird, but that's why we're calling her the Minecraft girl, because, you know, she wore the creeper hoodie or whatever. And so anyways, right, uh, they're walking, so they start walking towards the campsite, or the, the wilderness, right? Uh, so they walk over to the wilderness, and the first thing that they do is, since it's kind of getting close to the middle of the day, is they've all brought, like, a big, like, a, some kind of, like, portable tent with them. They were given one before they left, and then they were to kind of carry it over there. It was kind of difficult to carry, but that was kind of part of the whole, that was kind of the part of the whole shebang. And so sure enough, right, eventually they get to the campsite, and uh, the instructor's like, all right, guys, Try and find a clearing that is, uh, you know, pretty, that is clear, find a, find a clearing that's clear, but uh, try and find an area that's not too, you know, mucked up with uh, sticks and rocks and stones and brush and stuff that would make it difficult to have your five foot by five foot campsite kind of like your, or your tent, like be able to, get, you know, be placed, basically find a place that's good for your tent is what I'm trying to say with a billion words instead of two. Um, and so sure enough, you know, Jimmy finds a spot and there's kind of like a big, opening or kind of not a big opening but there's kind of a clearing where it is still covered more or less by the forest however it is good to put some tents down so jimmy uh, kind of like puts his tent down there there's only really about enough space for another tent and so the minecraft girl immediately rushes over and puts her stuff down before anyone else could and there was a few other people kind of casually nonchalantly walking over to that site but the minecraft girl was very insistent that she was the one that put her uh, her tent down and Jimmy thought that was a little weird, but then again, Jimmy kind of just brushed it off as like, oh, whatever, like, I mean, that's probably pretty normal. She saw a site that she wanted, so she wanted to claim it, and she knew other people were going for it. Little did Jimmy know that the Minecraft girl did not care that there was an opening there. In fact, she would have taken a place that was probably a terrible opening, like a place that would have massive sticks that would poke through her tent, because she wasn't doing it for the camping, you know? She was doing it for Jimmy. And the only reason why she wanted that spot is because Jimmy was right there. But Jimmy didn't know this uh, as of now. And so Jimmy and the Minecraft girl and, you know, a few camp counselors, like, helped them set up their tents or whatever. And other people were not far away at all. Like, Jimmy could see, like, at least five or six other campers, like, a little bit farther out, like like, I don't know, like 10 or 20 feet farther, finding more openings and setting up their camps as well or their, their tents. And so before, like, they go to bed, they all congregate together, and they come around this, like, camp, uh, this, like, bonfire type thing, and they're all given, like, beans and a can or whatever, and it's not the greatest meal ever, but, hey, man, you're, you, you decided to do a wilderness camp, and you just, and part of the description of the wilderness camp is, like, you slept at least one night out in the woods, you're not gonna be getting some, like, four-star buffet, uh, you got that, uh, st I don't know, some pork tenderloin, you got your, I don't know, your filet mignon, no, 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 you're gonna get that canned cold beans, bro. So eventually, right, uh, they're done with dinner, and it's time to go to bed. It's time to sleep, or at least attempt to sleep, in your tent. And, you know, this is pretty hard, because there's the ambiance of the outside, which is very loud. There's, uh, you know, it's probably not the most comfortable. There's probably plenty of mosquitoes, even if you tent, even if you close your, your zipper of the tent very well, and you make sure it's all... I don't know, bug proof. They, they always find a way to get in there. And there's always at least one or two mosquitoes buzzing around your head. So sleep is difficult, but, uh, you know, Jimmy goes to his campsite. He gets in his tent. He zips it up. You know, he brought a book with them. So he's reading a few, you know, pages from the, or a few, yeah, about a chapter or two from the book. He's got his little, like, uh, flashlight to read with. And eventually he turns off his flashlight 
and closes his eyes to try to go to sleep. And it's a little difficult, but eventually he falls asleep. But that's when, when he believes a couple hours later, he's really disoriented when he wakes up, so he's not totally sure when, but that's when he wakes up to the sound of rustling. And not just like a few, I don't know, uh, squirrels going by, a few tree branches fall, but like movement, like heavy movement is from right outside his tent site. And he wakes up and he's kind of confused by this. It's not like a clear tent or anything. And obviously a man doesn't have windows, he's in a tent. And that's when he starts to get really nervous because the zipper that is closed, that has his tent closed up, starts to open. Like someone from the outside is unzipping his tent. So Jimmy kind of like gets up pretty stud, like pretty quickly. And that's when he sees it's the Minecraft girl. And she kind of pokes her head through the camp or, or through the zipper and walks right in. And Jimmy's like, hello? Kind of like whispers it a little bit because he doesn't want to be super loud. And that's when the Minecraft girl is like, hi. And this is where things start to get weird. But a real quick comment, uh, Minecraft down below. That's the secret word of the day. I'll try and heart your comment. And if you want to support the channel and help me out, after this video, go ahead and binge watch a bunch of videos. Either watch them in the recommended or the playlist. Or if you're doing something later in the day or maybe before you go to bed. And make sure to let me know in the comments if you're doing this. I'll try and heart it and say thank you as I really appreciate it. Anyways, let's get right back to the story as things are starting to get interesting. So remember, Jimmy was, f was sound asleep, and he's awoken to the sound of noise outside of his tent. So when he gets up and he notices the Minecraft girl, someone who he didn't even really talk to at all, maybe he's like, hey, can you pass the whatever, right, earlier in the day, but he's not really spoken to this girl at all, has wandered into his tent, right? He's a little startled, so he gets up and he's like, hello, and she's like, hi, Jimmy. And Jimmy doesn't know her name. Like, even though I never use their real names, Jimmy said that he just knew her as Minecraft Girl. Like, he didn't know her name. They didn't really wear name tags or anything. I think they went around in a circle, so maybe that's how she remembered it. But she then goes on to say one of the, like, one of the, so she says three incredibly creepy things. And the first incredibly creepy thing that he said, that she says is, hey, Jimmy, I've been watching you for a while. Dude, whenever someone says, I'm watching you, like, just say, like, oh, I've seen you around. Don't be like, I've been deeply observing and mapping your every movements. Like, oh, come on, man. Like, don't say that. And Jimmy's like, okay. She's like, yeah, I've been watching you for a long time, Jimmy. And I like, I just, I just can't get enough of you. And Jimmy's like, oh, okay. <laughs> I, that's cool, I guess. And the girl's like, Jimmy, I just need to know do you want to be my boyfriend? And she looks at him with these like big eyes all wide. And Jimmy's like, dude, I'm having a freaking fever dream right now. Like this definitely isn't real. And he's like, uh, I don't, I don't know you. And she's like, is that a yes or a no? I need to know Jimmy, please. I need to know. And Jimmy's just like, well, I mean, I kind of have a policy and he kind of makes this up. Cause like, bro, what? But he, he, he he's like, oh, I kind of got a policy that I got to know someone for a while. I want to start in the friend zone and then make my way to dating them. Maybe if I feel like we're compatible. And the thing is, I just don't know you. Like my first interaction with you has been you kind of wandering into my tent at like presumably very early in the morning. And she's like, is that a yes or a no, Jimmy? Like, please don't like, I, I just need a yes or no. It's really easy. It's really simple. And Jimmy's like, well, respectfully, no, because I don't know you. She sits there for a second and she kind of looks at the ground and Jimmy is just like, because uh, it's super uncomfortable, right? He's just sitting there like, uh, like, is she going to leave? What's going to happen? And she looks up and she's like, you've made a mistake. You better not go to sleep tonight. And Jimmy then asks like, well, what happens if I do go to sleep? And she's like, well, while you're asleep, I'm going to start to eat you. And when you wake up, you'll have your entire leg will be missing. And the only thing you'll see is the stump of your leg inside my mouth. And then she just crawls out of his tent. And Jimmy is honestly traumatized. Yes. Do I think she's actually was going to eat him? No. She's just like some goofy Minecraft girl, right? However, she definitely knew what to say like that was super unsettling because when you feel like you're alone in the woods and some creepy girl wanders into your tent and says very strange things, well, let me just say that uh, Jimmy did not sleep that night. Um, yeah, he pulled a complete all-nighter with nothing to read but his book. He basically just sat there and was just like, 
he, he was basically terrified, right? I don't blame him. I would be super freaked out, even if it was super unlikely. Like, I'm not trying to take a risk of, like, waking up and, like, I don't know, my arm's gone because some weirdo girl ate it because I said no to going on a date with her, which I don't know if this was some tactic to go on a date with Jimmy, but let me just say, if your odds were low before, they're practically zero right now, dude. They're practically at... 0.0% chance he's going to date you after you say, oh, let me just eat you, bro, which is just a, who says that? But anyways, you know, Jimmy, the next day ru- comes around, even though Jimmy's been up the entire night. So Jimmy watches the sunrise and uh, they kind of just, so the deal is the camp, you, you go out and you like, you, you stay the night overnight in the woods on the first night or I guess the second night minus orientation, which is the first day. And then for the rest of the camp, which is the rest of the week, you kind of do activities at the campsite and you stay in cabins. So you're kind of like thrown into it and then it's kind of like easy mode from there on out. So they pack up their camps or their, not their camps, they pack up their tents, they get it all together. Jimmy is really struggling to stay awake and to have any energy because he's been up all night because he's been afraid of being eaten or something, which, like, I don't know about you, but that's not my number one concern, and I really don't want it to ever be a number whatever concern. Um, But sure enough, you know, Jimmy is walking back with his group, and he notices, you know, I mean, the Minecraft girl is in his group, right? The Minecraft girl is not in front of him, not beside him, but square behind him. And Jimmy would kind of look behind once in a while and he would see the Minecraft girl was always like five feet behind him. And Jimmy would kind of like, you know, slow down a little bit and she would slow down. He would speed up a little bit. He would, she would speed up. He would move to one side. She would slowly shift over to the other side. And he knew that this girl was really just staying five feet behind him at all times. So he was super weirded out, which I mean, can you blame the man? I mean, this girl threatened to consume him. Like who, what? Huh? And then, like, all of a sudden, she starts stalking him. And so they get back, right? They get back to camp. And uh, Jimmy goes to his cabin. And his cabin mates are like, oh, man, that was the coolest thing ever. Like, Jimmy, how did you feel about that? Jimmy, who has no sleep and is traumatized, is like, guys, uh, can we talk for a second? And his friends are like, yeah, dude, what's up? So Jimmy sits down. And even the camp counselor walks in because, you know, Jimmy kind of wanted an adult in there, too. And Jimmy explained everything that I just told you guys. And all the kids were like, bro, I saw that girl. Like, one of them's like, dude, I know that girl. Like, I saw her before. She was, like, hitting someone with a pickaxe, and she got in trouble. She's so weird. And all the other kids were like, dude, she said she'd eat you? What? And the camp counselor was like, dude, that's not, like, that's messed up, man. Like, she basically, like, she scared you. She traumatized you. She also low-key threatened you with that, even though it's a very weird threat to make. And the camp council and the camp counselor's camp counselor. God, I can't speak. One like, one like equals one prayer for my brain that's going boom right now. So the camp counselor is like, "Hey, Jimmy, like I think I'm gonna have to report this. Like you're okay with that?" And Jimmy's like, "Actually, yeah, I really don't want to be in any other programs with her. Really, be around her." And so sure enough, the camp counselor like tells it to the administrators and the other staff or whatever. And the next day rolls around and they start camp with a camp meeting. And they always started the day with a camp meeting. But this time, one of the people in the administration came out and it was normally only camp counselors being like, today's announcement is we're going to be having a bonfire at four. Everyone should come around. Something like that. But no, it was like one of the kind of like administrators in kind of like a more office gear coming over and be like, Hey guys, I just want to remind you that playful or not, you can't make threats of any kind against any other campers. That's just very, it's not allowed here, and we will have a zero tolerance from this point on, blah, you know, et cetera, like, like that. And uh, apparently, right, you know, Jimmy went back to the, to the cabin because he had like a morning activity, and he didn't see the Minecraft girl anywhere. And when he went back to the cabin, right, uh, the, the counselor is like, hey, Jimmy, I just want to let you know that the Minecraft girl is no longer at this camp. And she's also not allowed back. And that announcement this morning was kind of just like after the disciplinary process went through. Uh, apparently the Minecraft girl's mom was called or parents were called. And, you know, they drove over and got her and, you know, probably were very like, why? Why is my daughter like this? Why? But yeah, for the rest of the camp, Jimmy did not need to deal with the Minecraft girl because she just was, she was gone. She was kicked out. And Jimmy actually enjoyed the rest of that camp so much 
that he came back the next year. And he came back the next year without any feelings of worry or dread because the Minecraft girl he was told was banned from that camp. So he came back the next year and enjoyed it. And this time when he actually camped out, he actually had a good time because uh, he was not threatened to be consumed by a random Minecraft girl that was in love with him slash obsessed with him. Click yeah. on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it, do it. Today we get a story of a Minecraft kid that destroys his brand new $5,000 gaming PC, which by the way, why would he spend $5,000 on a gaming PC to play Minecraft? But anyways, he destroys it because he gets mad fight playing Minecraft or something, and then he tries to cover it up and blames it on the subscriber, and it is a fantastic story. So sit back, relax, subscribe if you like stories, and let's call today's subscriber who sent him the story, Eli. So this all happened when Eli and a bunch of other kids were invited over to the Minecraft kid's house. Eli and the Minecraft kid were pretty decent friends, but Eli was better friends with the other people invited, and the Minecraft kid was kind of just friends by proxy. I don't know if you guys are ever in like friend groups where you're really good close friends with some of the people, but not as much the other people, but you end up hanging out with all of them at the same time, just because like that's how the friend group works. So Eli was pretty excited to see the new big gaming PC, and he didn't dislike the Minecraft kid, I want to make that very clear. They were friends, like they were on good terms. I mean, they weren't really friends after what happens in this story, but you'll have to wait to see exactly what that is. But anyways, let's just fast forward to Friday night. They all get out of school, and they go home, and then after a couple hours later, all their parents drive them to the Minecraft kid's house, and they're all excited. I mean, the school week is over, man. Uh, they're going to see their friends. Their friend, the Minecraft kid, got a new gaming PC, and maybe, maybe if they're lucky enough, and if he's feeling generous, they'll get a swing on the most extreme, powerful graphics ever so that they can play Minecraft, which definitely needs 10,000 frames per second that you literally can't even see, but whatever man. Anyways, right, uh, so they all get to the house, and the Minecraft kid's mom greets them. It's like, oh, welcome. Welcome to our little house, or whatever. It was not a little house, man. I mean, look, if your mom or dad is buying you a $5,000 gaming PC, they probably have a little bit of spare cash, if you know what I mean. It was a pretty cool house, but none of these kids really cared. They just thought the Minecraft kid was cool, and he was someone to play Minecraft with. Turns out he was not as cool as they thought. But anyways, right, the Minecraft, ki the Minecraft kid runs down the stairs is like, guys, guys, I, you got to come up here right now. And they all kind of like run up the stairs and they got their sleeping bags and their backpacks full of their belongings. It was, it was turning out to be like a really great night. Or so they thought before it went terribly, terribly wrong. But anyways, right, they walk in the Minecraft kid's room and none of them had actually ever been over to the Minecraft kid's house before. All of them had kind of grown up in the neighborhood together and the Minecraft kid came two years ago. So he was kind of like a newer addition. However, the Minecraft kid did like sleep over at their houses before, but they walk in the Minecraft kid's room and it is one of the coolest rooms ever. It's got like a really cool bed and there's all these little fun things and a beanbag chair. And there's like the glowing lights that you see on dorm rooms a lot of time in college. And it's just a really cool setup. And they're like, wow, man, you got the coolest room ever. And he said, and this is the best part. And he turns and he points at his desk. And sure enough, there is a massive monitor. There is a massive like gaming kind of like PC thing on the bottom. There's glowing keyboards and lights or RGB, RB, G, RGB. It's RGB, not Ruth Bader Ginsburg. It's RGB. <laughs> and they were like, wow, man, that's the coolest PC I've ever seen. Like, uh, like, we got to see you play on it. And the Minecraft kid is just teeming with excitement. He is so excited to, like, show off his new gaming computer. So he sits down. He's like, everyone, watch me obliterate these nerds in Minecraft. So the Minecraft kid, you know, hops on his new super expensive, high resolution, tons of RAM or I don't know computers that well. His new PC that was super expensive, he hops on there and he loads up Minecraft and he logs in a high pixel and he's like, dude, I'm gonna literally like destroy everyone in Bed Wars so hard. It's gonna be so crazy. Bed Wars is a game mode you can play, it's a video game you can play Minecraft in. It's like a mini game for Minecraft, basically, for you guys who don't know. And it's competitive, so you play against other players online. So, anyways, he logs in the Bed Wars and he gets immediately smoked. And let me just say that, yeah. 
I'm a little annoyed by the level of kind of sweaty people that play all the time. I'm like, dude, just let me have fun. But whatever, that's for another day. And he gets obliterated within like the first minute because some guy like speed bridges over to him, like breaks his bed immediately. And all of his friends are like, dude, watch out. And he just gets like, he just gets flawless, basically. If you don't know what that means in Minecraft when you're fighting someone and you don't even touch them back, you've been flawless. But, uh... Uh, anyways, right, he's like, oh, that's just a fluke. I think my systems are taking a little bit longer to run. At this point, right, the kid is equating, uh, skill and how expensive his PC is, but that's fair enough, right? He's, he's got a good attitude so far. I mean, not, not for long, but I guess you'll see. And so sure enough, he loads up another game and he actually is doing okay. And then he gets obliterated again by another guy. And he's like, bro, I hate this game. And his friends are like, dude, don't worry about it. Like, you're still good. And he's like, yeah, I am. And sure enough, the Minecraft kid loads up another Bed Wars game. And once again, another kid just starts, like, speed bridging over. He's like, bro, like, why is my computer not making me speed bridge? And so the Minecraft kid tries to bridge really fast, but obviously you need to aim right. It's not just if you have good frames per second. So he falls off. He's like, man. And uh, he starts to get really angry during that game. They're like, dude, don't worry about it. Just keep fighting, keep fighting. And sure enough, like he's in the middle, he's grabbing some emeralds, which is something you do in Minecraft uh, Bed Wars. And he's in the middle of the map and someone breaks his bed, which basically means he can't respawn. He's like, dude, I put like, up, I put endstone down. How do they break that? And they're like, bro, don't worry about it. You got the five grand uh, PC. No one is gonna be able to touch you out here. So sure enough, right, the Minecraft kid has, like, an iron sword, iron armor, he's stacked up, he's got a billion frames per second, he's got all the hurts in the world, whatever that even does, he's got a ton of ram, he's got a ram and a goat in his backyard, like, he's killing it right now, and, uh, sure enough, someone comes up to him and just, uh, W-taps him into the void. He just, like, they start fighting, they start, like, swinging swords at each other, they're PvPing, and he just flies into the void. And the Minecraft kid loses it. He completely loses all control. He's like, I hate this game. And with two, just two motions, right? He destroys his entire PC. The first motion is he takes his mouse and he smashes it into his like super expensive high resolution 1 billion hertz monitor, completely shatters, flies on the ground. And then with another motion, he still has his shoes on. He goes over to his gaming PC and with his big boot on, he kicks it and it actually kind of flies across the room, hits the ground, and you could just hear the insides of that, of that PC shatter. The motherboard, all the chips and the cooling device and the, the memory, all of it just shatters and shakes up. And even the side cracks and some stuff is spilling out. And he's like huffing and puffing. He's like, huh, huh, huh. and Eli, the subscriber, and all of his other friends who were just sitting there are just like, Oh my god. Oh my god, what? What just happened, man? The secret word of the day is not Minecraft. And it normally will be, but the secret word of the day is door. Like, the thing that, like, you have on your room or you enter your house with. Yeah, so comment door down below and I'll heart your comment. Most of you guys won't get that, but for the few OGs of the channel, that will probably bring a little tear to your eye. Also, if you want to support the channel on our road to 600k, there's two things you can do. The first thing is binge watch my videos, aka watch a bunch of videos after this one, or watch a playlist of my videos before you go to sleep or, or while you're doing something. Please comment like these people when you're doing that so I can heart it. And also, the second thing you can do is literally tell a friend who you think will like the channel, and hopefully they subscribe. And comment if you do that too, like this person, I'll try and heart it. Anyways, back to the story, because it gets even crazier from this point on. So it's kind of like the calm, not before the storm, but kind of the calm after the storm, because, you know, the Minecraft kid starts, like, his emotions are slowly shifting from rage to, oh my god, what did I just do to, oh my god, my mom is gonna kill me, bro, like, I, I cannot, this can't happen. So the Minecraft kid, like, frantically looks over at his friends. He's like, guys, my mom cannot know about this ever. He's like, I need you all to swear to secrecy not to tell her. 
And Eli and all the kids are like, yeah, dude, like, we're, we're totally not going to tell her. Like, we'll, we're just going to have a good rest of our night. We won't tell her. We'll pretend like nothing happened at all. And Eli's like, hey, like, I even brought my own PC if we want a game on that later. Like, we're still going to have a great night tonight. Things happen, man. Okay, things like this don't normally happen, but they were just trying to make him feel good in this situation. The Minecraft kid's like, thank you, guys. Like, we got to hide this now. Like, we got to... So they... Anyways, right, they find some kind of bag or they put in the closet. They hide it pretty sloppily, but... I don't know how you're going to properly hide a smashed monitor and a, uh, basically a bag of malfunctioning uh, computer chips, which was his PC like five minutes ago before he obliterated it. And uh, they kind of just go about their day. And at one point, you know, the mom calls them down for dinner. And so they're all sitting at the dinner table and, you know, the Minecraft kid's mom made them like a big thing of mac and cheese, which I'm actually going to make for myself uh, in a couple minutes uh, when I'm done with this video. So mac and cheese on the mind. Anyways, right. So they're all sitting there. They're enjoying their big thing of mac and cheese or whatever. And they totally forget about the gaming computer. OK, maybe the Minecraft kid is still thinking about it a little bit because he did just destroy his five thousand dollar brand new gaming computer and his parents don't know about it so maybe it's still on his mind but anyways they're all sitting there and they're all just not even thinking about it they're talking about school and how crazy the like how fun the last assignment was and how like that one person went up there and like made a fool of themselves like they were just doing like standard middle school kid stuff and that's when all of their drop all of their like hearts drop and start beating incredibly quickly because they hear the last sound that they wanted to hear. They hear the Minecraft kid's mom walk upstairs and then scream the Minecraft kid's first, middle, and last name. Bro, if your mom screams at you and she says your first, middle, and last name, it's about time for you to pack up and go to Alaska, bro, because you're, you're done, bro. I don't know how else to say it, but you're done. And so whatever conversation they were having before, is it's, it's done and over with because... All of them know exactly why the Minecraft kid's mom screamed out his name. And all of them, including the Minecraft kid, are look are just sweating. They're they're looking super anxious at the moment. And they all sit there in dead silence. And no one is eating anymore, right? And sure enough, they hear bump, 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 bump. And they, that's like his mom walking down the stairs. And they're all just like, oh boy, okay, this is not going to be good at all. And uh, the mom walks down and uh, the Minecraft kid is at the end of the table. So he's facing away from the door. So his mom kind of shows up behind him. But Eli is on the very uh, like the very opposite side of the table. So he's looking directly at the door. So he gets the first glimpse at the Minecraft kid's mom's face. And her brow is so furrowed that she's practically created a unibrow. The, like the look of anger on her face is unmatched. And she comes in. She's like. Minecraft kid, explain your computer now. I walked into your room and your screen thing was destroyed and your computer box was all broken. I just got that for you. Do you have any idea how much $5,000 is? Do you know how hard your dad and I work to get all the great things for you? And you destroyed it. And he's like, the Minecraft kid starts tearing up, right? And everyone feels so bad. Everyone feels so bad until the Minecraft sa kid says what he's about to say. He's like, mom, mom, it wasn't me. And then the Minecraft kid turns and he lifts up his hand and with one finger, he points directly down the table. And Eli can almost feel the pointing on his chest. Like, he almost feels like an imprint in his chest when the Eli kid, oh, no, when the Eli kid, when the Minecraft kid with tears falling down his face and, like, his hand pointing directly at him says, It was Eli! He was playing one of the games and he got mad! And then he broke my new computer! And then the Minecraft kid's mom, kid, the Minecraft kid's mom is like, "Oh, sweetie, I'm so sorry. I blamed you." Gave him a big hug, and while giving him a big hug, like Eli was like, "Hey, yo, that, what, what are they saying?" And everyone else at the table was like, "Hey, bro, what?" And as she's giving the Minecraft kid a big hug, you could see her face look up, and she has the coldest stare, looking directly into the the pits of Eli's eyes, and he's like, "Oh my god," and she's like, "Eli." Sweetie, can I talk to you for a second? And Eli's like, oh my God. And she's like, uh, out here, please. 
And sure enough, right, uh, you know, Eli's walking down the table and he gives a look to the Minecraft kid like, dude, what's up? And the Minecraft kid just ignores him, just is looking straight ahead. And, you know, he walks out and the Minecraft kid's mom starts on a rant saying like, like, that was a super expensive computer you broke. Like, that was a $5,000 computer. I'm not sure if my son told you exactly how expensive that was. But, like, we're going to, like, you might have to work here for the summer to try and repay at least some of that. Like, this is going to take forever for us to, and he's like, hey, like, I'm so sorry the computer was broken, but I need to tell you something. And she's like, what? Okay, make it quick. Like, I'm, st I'm in the middle of, like, ranting about you, right? Or ranting to you. And he's like, hey, like, um... I know that like this contradicts exactly what your son said, but I need you to know that I did not break the computer. In fact, I did not even have a turn on on the computer. What actually happened was, you know, the Minecraft kid who I thought was my friend, you know, invited all of us over to see him play on his new computer, and maybe we would have played at the very end. But we got there, and he was playing. And he wasn't necessarily better at the game, and he thought that he would be because he had an expensive computer. And he got really, really mad and broke his computer out of frustration and rage. And then he told us that we couldn't tell you about it because you'd be super mad. And then we were eating, and then you came down, and then he blamed me. And the mom is like, well, I don't really know how, I, I, how do I know who to believe? And, you know, Eli's like, shoot, like, it's really my word or her son's. And then Eli's like, oh, well... I don't know if everyone, I hope people are truthful, but maybe ask all the people to come over individually. Kind of like in a, like a courtroom, how you're interrogated individually, so you can't, if you lie, like the cross-examination will get you. So sure enough, right, Eli walks back to the table and sits down at the end of it and is just not making any eye contact with the Minecraft kid. And it's not like the Minecraft kid is trying to make any eye contact either. But then the mom starts calling out the names of each of the individual kids one by one. And you can't really hear what they're talking about, but Eli knows exactly what they are talking about. And the Minecraft kid is like, uh, uh, uh. And eventually, the last kid is called in and walks back in and sits down. And the Minecraft kid's mom walks back into the room with kind of a sense of calmness because her initial rage with seeing the expensive thing she bought for her son destroyed has kind of washed over her and it's more kind of like, all right, I gotta be the parent here. I can't like lose myself. She's like, all right, well, um, I, I don't know if we should continue the sleepover. There's been a lot of things going on and uh, I, I really do need to have a good heart to heart talk with my son. And at this point, right, the Minecraft kid's face goes from no expression, kind of trying to ignore eye contact with everyone, to just like, boing, oing, 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 just like, oh no, she knows, bro. Just like, oh shoot, they all told. And sure enough, right, uh, the Minecraft kid's mom calls all the parents, and it's kind of an awkward, like, 30 to 40 minute period, because all the parents were like, ah, oh, we were going, like, because the parents were going out, they were taking advantage of the, the time, like, being, like, the house alone, so the Minecraft kid's mom was, actually had to drive home, like, half the kids, because the parents were out for some reason, and so let's just skip ahead to the next day, so, or not even the next day, let's skip ahead to Monday, it was school, and they all kind of came back, and they were all sitting at lunch table, and the Minecraft kid came and sat down. And he was like, guys, I really need to apologize. And he looked directly at Eli like, bro, I threw you under the bus. I just couldn't handle my mom being that angry at me. What I did was wrong, and I want to apologize. I don't expect you to forgive me, man. Like, I was a total jerk, and I'm sorry. And Eli's like, well, you were a total jerk, but I can understand how scary that must have been. And he's like, you know what, bro? It's good. Obviously, never do anything like that again. Obviously, right? I, I wish I didn't have to say that, but he's like, I can understand like how crazy of a situation that is. We're cool. And kind of like the Minecraft kid had a little smile. Look, guys, not all my stories end terribly, but it's not over yet. One second. And uh, <laughs> sure enough, right, you know, the, they, Eli's like, well, if you don't mind, can I ask what the punishment was? We, we just really wanted to know. And Minecraft kid's like, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, the least you, like, that's the least I can do to pay you back for what I put you through. And Minecraft kid's like, yeah, so after you guys all left, my uh, mom was very upset with me. She was not yelling at me, but she was giving me... You know, what's almost worse, like the passive mom, like the passive aggressive mom, I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed, bro. Please be angry, just don't be disappointed, man. That's what I'm trying to say. But anyways, eventually when Eli, when the Minecraft kid's dad got home, uh, he was not happy about it either. And 
basically right the minecraft kid will not be getting a new computer for a very long time and he's basically banned from going on his ipad which is how he was really playing minecraft a lot before which explains why he sucks so much when he went on his pc because it's totally different right mechanics are totally different all that stuff and he's like, yeah, I'm banned from the iPad for two weeks. I got to, like, do schoolwork when I get back. And I can't hang out with you guys on the weekends for, like, in those two weeks as well. And But he said, other than that, like, I'm, I kind of got off lucky. Like, I thought they were going to, like, the punishment would have been worse. And, yeah, so that's the conclusion of why you should not uh, obliterate your gaming PC because you lose in bed. Click on the video well. on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. Today we get a story of this crazy Minecraft girl that ends up attacking the subscriber. I'm sure you guys will enjoy it, so subscribe if you like stories. And let's call today's subscriber, let's call him Hudson. So the subscriber who sent in this story, we're calling him Hudson, and Hudson got a new girlfriend. And Hudson and this new girlfriend had been dating for probably about a month at this time, and Hudson had never been over to his girlfriend's house. Hudson's girlfriend knew about him and was totally fine with it. And, you know, I think the reason that they just never saw each other at each other's houses is they were just kind of busy for the last, like, month or so. But one weekend, right, Hudson's girlfriend is like, hey, like, do you want to come over? So this was, like, a tomorrow. So this was, like, a Friday, right? So she's like, hey, do you want to come over Saturday? Do you want to just, like, hang out for the entire day? And, you know, Hudson was like, yeah, sure. Like, is this at your house? And the girlfriend's like, yeah, like, I talked to my parents. They're totally okay. In fact, they're going to be away. So the only person who's going to be in the house is going to be you and me and my little sister, but she'll probably just be playing Minecraft with her friends or whatever. She'll be in her room the whole time. So it's really going to be just like you and me in the house alone. And Hudson was really excited because like, you know, this is his new girlfriend or whatever, and this is a pretty big deal. So anyways, right, sure enough, you know, Hudson is like driven over by his mom to, you know, his new girlfriend's house. And his mom's like, bye, honey, have a good time. Don't have too good of a time. Wink, wink. Hudson's like, mom, shut up. Like, I don't want to hear that. She's like, ha, 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 ha. Well, you know, typical mom behavior. You'll love to see. It. But anyways, right, you know, so Hudson walks up to the door, his new girlfriend greets him at it and says, oh, like, you know, this is the first time we're not, we're actually seeing each other at each other's houses. And, you know, Hudson was like, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty hyped. So she's like, all right, come in. Uh, I have lunch prepared. And, you know, Hudson was like, damn, you have lunch prepared? Like, all right, let's go. Yeah, she made some mac and cheese. You'll love to see it. So, you know, Hudson sat down at the, at, at, like, the dinner table, got a bowl of mac and cheese, was just talking with his girlfriend. This seemed like it was going to be the greatest day ever, right? However, uh, there was a bit of a complication that happened a little bit later on, as you can probably tell by the title. The, uh, the sister... Hudson's girlfriend's sister. We're going to call the Minecraft girl from here on out. So if you hear me say Minecraft girl, what I'm saying is Hudson's girlfriend's sister. It's just a lot cleaner and I'm not going to trip up over my words as I always do. So yeah. So as Hudson and his girlfriend are sitting at like the kitchen table, just talking or whatever, they hear footsteps, they, they hear footsteps come down the stairs and you know, Hudson looks over and it's this girl who's probably about like, I don't know, like Hudson and his girlfriend are both 16. This girl is probably 13 or 14 or something like that. She walks down the stairs in these like knee high socks, this like sweatshirt or whatever, and this like creeper hat or whatever. And she walks down and she just gives Hudson this look, this look of like, I don't know who you are, but you better stay away from my sister type look of like, I don't like you. I won't ever like you. And I like, you gotta like watch yourself type look. So Hudson's girlfriend's like, oh, Hudson, this is my sister, like, Minecraft girl, says her actual name or whatever, right? And uh, Hudson's like, oh, Minecraft girl, it's, it's nice to meet you. And the Minecraft girl kind of looks at him as like, hi. And kind of just like, gives him this kind of look of like, I don't like you, bro. And, you know, Hudson's girlfriend was like, eh, okay, yeah, okay, that's enough of an introduction for you two. And sure enough, right, you know, the Minecraft world really just comes down to, like, get something to eat and goes straight back upstairs. And Hudson, after she has obviously, like, left and has gone back up to her room, Hudson turns to his girlfriend and is like, hey, like, uh, does she normally, like, not like people, like, that come over? And, you know, Hudson's girlfriend's like, uh, you know, I don't think she's, like, super... She, it takes a while. Like, she's great, but it takes a while for, like, new people to get used to her and for the other vice versa as well. Don't worry. Like, don't, don't judge a first interaction with her as, the, like, the 
as who she really is. She, you just need to thaw to her. Like, you need to, she needs to get used to you. Which, uh, well, I mean, she was about to get used to him very quickly, but in the worst way possible. Because let's flash forward, like, half an hour or so. So Hudson and his girlfriend are like, alright, well, we can go watch TV. So they go sit on the couch, and they're watching some Netflix program or whatever. And at some point, Hudson's girlfriend's like, I gotta go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Like, don't go anywhere. And Hudson's like, alright, I got you. So Hudson kind of, like, you know goes on his phone because the, Net- the Netflix program is paused or whatever, and he's just pretty paying, he's paying attention to his phone so he doesn't hear the footsteps come up like very quietly behind him. And the only time, in- he only realizes that someone is behind him when he feels a, like a whap on the back of his head. He's like, ow! And he turns around and he sees the Minecraft girl, aka Hudson's girlfriend's little sister, with a like one of those foam Minecraft pickaxes and he realizes pretty quickly that he that she just like hit him over the head with the Minecraft pickaxe and then once again bats him over the head and is like you better stay away from my sister. So then all of a sudden, both, you know, the Minecraft girl and Hudson hear, like, you know, uh, like a toilet flush, and then, uh, you know, kind of, like, you know, like the, you know, when you rinse your hand, like, water's running or whatever in the sink, right? So both of them hear that, and the Minecraft girl is like, you heard me, like, stay away from my sister. Gets up and runs away. Runs back upstairs to her bed wars or whatever, right? And so Hudson's kind of sitting there like, uh, oops. Key. I'm not sure how to react to that. And Hudson's girlfriend sits down. She's like, what? And Hudson's like, uh, and she's like, your face, like, some, wh- wh- what's wrong? Because, like, Hudson's girlfriend could kind of read him like a book at this point. They were good for each other, bro. But Hudson was like, yeah, so it's not a big deal, but, like, I was sitting here, and I felt like something hit me in the back of my head. It didn't hurt that much, obviously, but I turned around, and it was your little sister, and then she hit me in the head again with that little foam pickaxe, like, from Minecraft. It's not a big deal. It obviously didn't hurt. But then she said, stay away from my sister. So, you know, Hudson's girlfriend is like, you know, that's it. Like, you stay right here again. And Hudson sits there as he hears, you know, his girlfriend walk up and starts, like, talking very loudly to, like, you know, most, like, presumably the Minecraft girl. And it is, he can't really make out what's being said, but you can assume that, like, don't treat, like, my boyfriend like that. I get that he's new here and that you don't know him. And even if you're trying to be protective, stop it. It's just weirding him out, like... Thank you for wanting the best for me, but not like this, yada, yada, there you go, go, stuff like that. So the girlfriend comes back down, it's like, sorry, like, that should be dealt with. Like, if, she, if you see her again, she's going to be chill. So Hudson's like, all right, cool. Uh, spoiler, a little spoiler alert for you guys. Uh, she is the opposite of chill from this point on. Real quick, comment a Minecraft down below if you want to harden your comment. That will be the secret word of the day, and I'll try and hard as many of those comments as I possibly can. And also, if you do want to support the channel, uh, binge watch some videos, either watch some playlists or click on videos in the recommended. And please, if you're doing this, leave me a comment down below, like these people, so that I can say thank you by harding it or maybe replying by saying thank you, because that supports the channel so much. Anyways, back to the story. So anyways, right, Hudson's uh, girlfriend's parents are going to be out for probably the entire night, or at least that's what Hudson's girlfriend said. So she decides that she's going to make dinner, and Hudson's like, oh, cool, awesome. And so Hudson's girlfriend makes the dinner, and, uh, you know, eventually he's, like, calls down her sister and calls in the boyfriend, like, all right, guys, dinner's ready. So, uh, you know, anyways, you know, Hudson, you know, you know, walks over to the dining room and, uh, you know, sits down and, you know, the girlfriend, uh, sits down and also the little sister, aka the Minecraft, the Minecraft girl sits down and she's like being super awkward making no eye contact at all with, you know, Hudson kind of understandably right. And all of a sudden, right, you know, Hudson's girlfriend's like, Hey, I want to go show you something. And she looks at the Minecraft girl and is like, all right, we'll, we'll be right back. And I don't know. I wasn't told exactly, by the way, this story was submitted over on Instagram. Uh, go follow me on there. It's in the description and submit your stories there. But anyways, right. I wasn't told exactly what the girlfriend told Hudson, but anyways, they come back and Hudson realizes that, you know, the sister, the little sister, AKA the Minecraft girl's face goes from a face of like, I don't know, like, I'm feeling very weird, like, I, like, this is awkward, to a face of, like, evil. Like, she has an evil grin on her face. So, right away, Hudson is like, alright, bro, this is a little weird, this is a little strange, I don't know how I feel about this. And he sits down, and he's just, like, goes to take a big chug of water. And he takes a big chug of water, and immediately, like, spits it out. And the girlfriend's like, are you okay? And he's like, wow, this water is so salty. So the girlfriend grabs his water glass, sticks her finger in it, kind of like licks her finger and looks immediately at like uh, at her little sister. It's like, did you do this? And the little sister is like, yeah, 
stay away from my big sister and while looking at Hudson. And sure enough, right, you know, the Hudson's girlfriend starts yelling at the little sister like, I already told you to stop being, like, weird. I already told you that, like, we're, like, great for each other and just, like, you don't have to like him, but don't be weird about it. Like, it was strange already enough that you bopped him over the head with, like, a, a foam pickaxe, right? But now you're trying to make his food taste bad. Like, either way, like, if we're breaking up, it's not because of you. And, like, if anything, like, we're, we have a stronger bond now, even if that wasn't true. She just said it, right? And she's like, you know what? You know what? Go up to your room. And the Minecraft girl's like, you know what? Like, you don't have any authority over me. And, and you know, the old Hudson's girlfriend is like, I don't necessarily, but I'm going to, like, do you really still want to be here when we're both very mad at you? And the girl's like, fine, whatever. I'm going to go play Bed Wars anyways. So the girl goes upstairs, and Hudson turns to, like, his girlfriend is like, hey, I feel kind of bad, like... I want to be on at least okay terms with your sister. Obviously, like, just you going over there wasn't enough. Maybe I should go up and, like, talk to her. And Hudson's girlfriend looks at him very longingly, like, like you're so nice, you're so sweet, like, that's so kind of you. Like, she really doesn't deserve it after what you've done. Or not after what you've done, after what she's done. But just know that she's, she's a little strange sometimes, and she really doesn't like new people. And I guess I've never had a boyfriend before, or at least I've never had one come over. So I don't know how she's going to react. And Hudson's like, you know what? I got it. Don't even worry about it. I just want to be on good terms. This was a big mistake for Hudson, let me just say. Well, anyways, right, Hudson, you know, finishes up his meal, looks at his girlfriend and says, hey, I'll be back in like 10 minutes. I just want to go talk. And she's like, all right, fine, but please don't get mad at me if things go wrong. And Hudson's like, of course not. Like, I don't blame you at all for any of this. And she's like, all right, good. Thank you so much. You got such a kind, you're such a kind soul. You got a big heart, like, for doing this. And Hudson's like, all right, man. So, you know, Hudson walks upstairs and he knocks on the door a little bit. He's like, hey, like, hey, can we just talk for a second? Like, I'm not mad or anything. I, I just want to, like, get to know you a little bit. I want to let you know that I'm not, like, some evil stranger or whatever and that I'm not some, like, I don't know, some 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 Brad type that, that that's just going to, like, play your sister or whatever. By the way... I know some cool Brads. It's just a stereotype, bro. And I, it, yeah, if you're a Brad watching this, you're the good Brad, right? You're not the bad Brad that I'm referring to. But anyways, right? Uh, so he knocks on the door and he's like, can you let me in? Like, we don't have to talk for long. It can just be for a minute or whatever. And he hears some like scuffling around, right? And he's like, okay, well, there's definitely someone in there. And he's like, you know, if you don't want me to, like, if you don't want me to come in, just let me know, right? And he said, all right, well, I hear that you're in there, so just say, don't come in if you want me to not come in. And uh, no, no, no response, right? So he's like, all right, well, I'm coming in because I really do want to talk, right? So anyways, Hudson starts opening the door, slowly opens it up, and what is in front of the room is bunch of like all these like clothes all over the place there's like a whole big gaming setup with the light up mouse the light up keyboard it seemed to be in the middle of like just like sitting in the high pixel lobby like it seemed like she was on like a game or whatever and just like quit to the hub and was just sitting there dude okay don't take that out of context in high pixel like the minecraft thing that i'm playing right now there's something called the hub which is just like the place where all the games are it's not what you dirty people think oh my god anyways right so he just notices like oh well she's not in here but i heard her in like mid thought right as because the door is open and he's scanned the entire room he hears something from behind the door so he turns around and he looks behind the door, and the Minecraft girl jumps out from behind the door and goes, rah, literally tackles this guy. And here's the thing. Hudson wasn't like a massive football player or something that was like a really big dude or whatever, but he also was like significantly older by a couple years than this girl. However, the fact that he wasn't expecting this and like kind of the element of surprise, like he was like, he got fumbled by this girl. He fell over. Like this girl knocked him over, dude. So he's like on the, on the floor and like the girlfriend hears all this commotion. It's like, oh my God, like what's going on? And the Minecraft girl has the pickaxe in her hand and starts going pop, 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 pop. Starts beating like, <laughs> starts bopping like uh, the Hudson in the face being like, stay away from and every single like word is another bop of the minecraft pickaxe so stay away from my sister you weird oh and, and hudson's like stop 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 like i just wanted to talk to you to prove that i wasn't weird like who's being the weirdo here like me or the girl that literally lured me into her room to attack me with a minecraft pickaxe like who's being the weird one here dude 
But anyways, right, uh, you know, uh, Hudson's girlfriend walks up the stairs like, oh my god, what is going on here? And, you know, the Minecraft girl is like, I'm, like, defending you from this weirdo freak. Like, he wanted to talk to me. Ha ha ha. Little did he know that I was, like, hiding, waiting for him to come. Like, I'm gonna, I pounced on him. I'm attacking him right now. So Hudson's girlfriend kind of, like, grabs, like, the Minecraft girl and rips her off of Hudson. And Hudson gets up, like, whoa, okay. Not exactly what I was expecting, right? And the Minecraft, and the Hudson's girlfriend's, like, like, Minecraft girl says her, like, actual name, right? Minecraft girl, like, this is like, I've told you again and again, like, just stay away from him. He's totally fine. He just wanted to come up and talk to you. I didn't even tell him to do this. He just wanted to make things right with you. He's got such a big heart. And all you do is like, just attack him and you're mean to him. Like, why on earth are you doing this? And the Minecraft girl goes very silent. And you can see that her fists start to ball up. And Hudson's like, oh, God, what's coming up next, dude? Like, what lucky surprise am I about to receive? Like, and sure enough, the Minecraft girl is like, if you can't see the truth, then you're lost to me, too. Like, some real cryptic, cryptic stuff, bro. And in the middle of, like, Hudson's girlfriend saying, what are you saying? The, the Minecraft girl starts, like, flailing, attacking, like, Hudson's girlfriend with the pickaxe and pushes her and is like... You don't understand that what I'm doing is for the best of you, so if you don't understand it, I'm gonna make you understand. It's just like attacking her with the Minecraft pickaxe, pushing her against the wall. And once again, Hudson's girlfriend, well, Hudson's girlfriend was kind of petite, like she was definitely kind of small, but she was at least bigger than the Minecraft girl who was younger than her. So after being like thrown against the wall, because she was so thrown off guard by like, she did not expect her sister to just straight up like attack her out of the blue, she eventually like pushes back and it's like, what are you doing? You're insane. And the Minecraft girl like kind of like pushes both of them away from her being like, I'm doing this for the best of like for the best of both of you. Like stay away from my sister and like turns to her sister. You got to start having a brain on you. And Hudson looks at her and says like, dude, oh my God. And you know, Hudson's girlfriend's like, fine. And looks at Hudson and says, we should probably go. And the Minecraft girl's like, yes, yes, I won. You're breaking up with him. And Hudson's girlfriend turns to her and is like, no, you're being crazy. We're going to go have a good time without you in the house or without you here. And Hudson's girlfriend's like, sure, whatever. Go and break up with him. I know it's coming. So anyways, Hudson is walked down like Hudson's girlfriend holds Hudson's hand and is like walking him down the stairs. It's like, I am so, so sorry. Once again, like, sorry times a billion. I, 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 I don't understand. Like. I knew she was kind of crazy, like, I know she was a little bit weird and a little psycho, but, like, isn't every 14-year-old girl or little sister, right? But this is, this is absurd. And she says, you know what? This day doesn't have to be bad. So, you know, anyways, you know, uh, Hudson's girlfriend's parents eventually come back. Hudson's girlfriend real quickly explains what happens, and they're like, oh, my God, we're going to punish your sister for this. And Hudson's girlfriend's like, you know, you guys can do whatever you want, but can I just ask for a favor? And they say, sure, what's up? And they say, can you just drive us to go get ice cream? So this story ends off pretty well because Hudson and his girlfriend just end up getting ice cream, nice, relaxing, and no crazy Minecraft girl to ruin the day. Today we get a story of a Minecraft kid that gets angry at his teacher, so decides that, you know, his revenge will be uh, farting in the teacher's face and then going completely insane. This is probably one of the weirdest stories I have ever received, so sit back, relax, uh, subscribe if you like stories, and let's call today's subscriber Noah. So this all happens one day when Noah is just chilling in his class and there's another guy in his class and we're gonna call this guy the Minecraft kid cause he's obsessed with Minecraft. He's always wearing the creeper hoodie. You already know how it goes. And obviously, right, if you like Minecraft, this video is not against you because bro, I love Minecraft. Look at the background gameplay. But anyways, right, so Noah was just chilling in class and he looks to like his left and directly like to the next of him, directly adjacent to him, is the Minecraft kid. And him and the Minecraft kid weren't like best friends or anything, but he had nothing necessarily against the Minecraft kid. And the teacher was beginning, beginning the lecture on whatever it was. And he sees the Minecraft kid, you know, he had his computer out because everyone had their computers out. It was like sixth grade. And that was like the first time that like, you know, they were given school computers or whatever, or Chromebooks, or I, I don't even know. He had his computer out though. And like, you could have your school given Chromebook or school issued Chromebook, or you could bring your own computer. So the Minecraft kid, you know, brought his gaming computer 
And the difference with today and any other day is Noah looked over and saw the Minecraft kid reach into his backpack, pull out a mouse pad and a gaming mouse. You know one of those like gaming mice that like all light, light up and glow and all that stuff? Yeah, he whipped out one of those. And at first Noah's like, oh, he just wants to use a, like a mouse instead of the trackpad. Like, that's totally understandable. Trackpad sucks. I 100% agree. And anyways, right, you know, Noah doesn't even really pay that much attention. And that is until he hears the Minecraft soundtrack. Super, super, super loud. Minecraft soundtrack is beautiful. I've actually, like, gone to sleep to it a couple of times on Spotify. But that's, that's beyond the point, right? Anyways, right, so Noah is, like, he realizes that the Minecraft kid next to him is not only, like, not really caring that, you know, he has his entire gaming setup out, he also just doesn't care that Minecraft music is blasting away. And sure enough, right, you know, you hear the Minecraft soundtrack, you hear the walking footsteps in Minecraft, you hear him beating up some chicken and the chicken making, like, squeaking noises or whatever. And so Noah's just like, oh my god, like, this kid's gonna get in a ton of trouble. But sure enough, right, the music was just so loud that the teacher, like, turns around and, like, looks at, like, the Minecraft kid and is like, Minecraft kid, like, turn down that music. Like, you can't be playing music in class. So the teacher didn't realize that this was just, like, music to a video game. The teacher just thought that the Minecraft kid was playing, like, music in class, which, you know, sometimes kids have, like, tried to, like, listen to music, but normally they'd use headphones or whatever. And the teacher says, hey, no listening to music in class. You gotta be paying attention. So the teacher kind of doesn't think anything more of it and goes, back to their work. And so the Minecraft kid, sure enough, just turns off the volume, but keeps on playing Minecraft. And it's super obvious because he's like whipping his like mouse around and like clicking really fast and doing all this stuff. And obviously if the teacher paid like really close attention, he would realize that the Minecraft kid was not just listening to music, but was not listening to music at all, but instead was playing a video game with music in the background. So anyways, right, Noah's like, dude, this kid's gonna get caught. And sure enough, right, you know, the Minecraft kid, I think, in the beginning was playing, like, normal Minecraft. But then he goes on to one of those servers. I think he's playing Bed Wars or something. And this kid is, like, really good at Bed Wars. And when you're really good at Bed Wars, a lot of times you'll be clicking super fast so that you can place more blocks. Or maybe when you're fighting someone, you take less knockback and you might get more hits. So this kid starts butterfly clicking, which is when you take two fingers and rapidly slam your mouse with it. And sure enough, right, the kid in the middle of class starts spamming his mouse, like, and Noah was just like, dude, that's so loud. And sure enough, the teacher turns around and is like, hey, Minecraft kid, are you playing video games in class? And the Minecraft kid legitimately keeps on clicking because apparently he's in the middle of like a fight or something, like a PvP fight, and keeps on clicking, ignores the teacher for a good 10 seconds. The teacher looks at him in disbelief, and the Minecraft kid looks up and is like, huh? And the teacher's like, shut off your like shut off your computer. You're not allowed to be playing video games in class. First you're listening to music, now you're playing video games. Like that's super disrespectful and distracting. You're not just distracting yourself, you're distracting everyone else in the class, and that is totally not fair fair for them. And he said, and then the teacher followed up by saying, Minecraft kid, you're on super thin ice, turn off like your video game. So the Minecraft kid is like, ah, oh, whatever, man. And like, you know, closes the computer, like turns, like closes the computer screen, whatever, and kind of like slumps back in his chair with his arms crossed because man, he just, you know, he was, he wanted to play Minecraft. He didn't want to pay attention to what, whatever was going on in class, right? So at this point, Noah thinks that the Minecraft kid is done being stupid in class, but Noah was very, very wrong to say the least. Because anyways, right, Noah kind of goes back to paying attention to the class, you know, trying to like take some notes. He's trying to do well in this class. And then Noah, to his surprise, hears clicking noises. And he's like, all right, there's no chance that like the Minecraft kid is back to playing his video games. But sure enough, the Minecraft kid had taken out his computer again and went back to playing Bed Wars. And once again, he's on his mouse going like clicking it literally as fast as he possibly could. And that he's not being slick. He's not being like anything like, he's not being clever or anything like that. Cause the teacher immediately turns around and is like, Minecraft kid, I told you, like you can't be playing video games in class. I already told you, you were on super thin ice. Like that's it. If you can't like pay attention and you're gonna be distracting everyone else, then you can't be in this class. Go to the principal's and like principal's office and she'll deal with you. And the Minecraft kid just looks at him and says, what did you say to me? And the, and the teacher's like, 
No back talk. Go to the principal's office now. And from here on, things were about to get much, much worse. But real quick, comment Minecraft down below if you want to harden your comment, as Minecraft is the secret word of the day. And by the way, if you've been binge watching my videos, please leave a comment like this down below so I can heart it, maybe reply, just so I can know that you're doing it and say thank you. Because when you watch a bunch of my videos in a row, it really does help out the channel more than you can even imagine. And I mean, also, if you want to be like this guy, guy, I'm not saying to leave a playlist of my videos on overnight when you go to sleep with the volume on 1%, but I'm also not saying not to do that, wink. Wink, 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 nod, smile. Anyways, back to the story. This is where it gets crazy. So at this point, the teacher has told the Minecraft kid that, you know, he needs to go to the principal's office right now. And the Minecraft kid is not happy about this at all. And so sure enough, you know, the teacher, let me just paint the picture for you guys. The teacher is sitting down at their desk, at their chair, whatever, right? And the Minecraft kid walks up to go to like the door to leave the class, presumably, right? You know, cause he, you know, he has to go to the principals and whatever, right? So he walks up to the front of the class. At this point, everyone has kind of been paying attention. Noah's like, wow, like this kid, you know, whatever. I mean, if you, the punishment fits the crime, if you're being an idiot, like play stupid games, expect, expect stupid consequences, like it is, or expect stupid prizes. That's the actual phrase, uh, <laughs> my fault. But anyways, right, the Minecraft kid does something absolutely crazy because he walks up to the front of the class and he slows down as soon as he gets to his teacher. And the teacher's like, keep moving. Principal's office is that way. And as soon as the teacher says, keep moving, the principal office is that way, the Minecraft kid runs over to the teacher and the teacher, remember, is sitting down and sitting down at a pretty low desk slash chair. And the Minecraft kid stands like whips out a chair, s puts it down from the teacher. And the teacher is in the middle saying, hey, and the Minecraft kid steps on the chair, turns around and rips the biggest fart you've ever heard in the teacher's face. Like this is the most ridiculous thing Noah has ever seen in his life. And in Noah's head, he was like, hmm, huh, what? Uh, 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 huh? And the, the, the teacher was just as shocked. The teacher's just like in a state of disbelief, also a state of like stink because like, man, the Minecraft kid was eating like mega, like, like, I don't know. He was eating like premium beans for the last seven months before doing this fart, bro. I swear to God, like Noah said he could like legit, like smell it from being like 20 feet away. And the, and then the teacher's like, oh God. And then the Minecraft kid's like, yeah, 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 and then runs away. So the teacher is now steaming mad because he's got this big old fart that was just like landed in his face. This kid is destroying his entire class. So now the Minecraft kid is like, catch me if you can, and starts running around the class. And the teacher is so mad right now. Like the teacher is so angry. So the teacher starts sprinting after the kid. And the Minecraft kid is like, nyeh, nyeh. it just starts like running around the class, pushing over chairs to make it harder for the teacher to get. And the teacher's like, that's it. You're gonna, you're gonna be, ex you're gonna be suspended for so long. You'll be lucky if you don't get expelled. I'm calling up your parents and I'm writing a full report. And Noah and everyone else in that class was just sitting there with their mouths dropped super, like his, their mouths dropped dropped open to the floor. They were just like, what is going on? Like, oh my God. Like I knew this kid was a little weird, but seriously, what is going on right now? And so the Minecraft kid is sprinting around the class, kind of doing like some, you know, like in football where you kind of like psych them out and then you go the other way. And the teacher is kind of lumbering around like, Every second that you're running, everything that you're pushing over, every like millisecond that you're not like obeying me and going to the principal's office, your punishment is increasing by a hundred percent, which really doesn't make a lot of sense because there's a cat. Like you can't really punish someone beyond expelling them. So what's like 300,000% beyond expelled? I don't really know. You tell me. So anyways, right, the, the Minecraft kid's like, nye, 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 and then eventually, right, the Minecraft kid accidentally, like, trips on something. The Minecraft kid falls, and at this point, the teacher has made, made up enough ground to grab the Minecraft kid by the hood of his, by, like, the scruff of his creeper hoodie, and it's like, you uh, uh, are uh, uh, coming with uh, me. And the entire class is so silent as this is the most ridiculous thing they have ever seen in their life. And Noah is just like, oh my God, do I have a, do I have a story to tell my mom? 
So anyways, the Minecraft kid is being dragged out by his creeper hoodie, and all four legs are flailing. He's like, no, no, no. And then, like, the teacher goes out the door, slams it shut. The entire class is silent. No one's mumbling. You would have thought that people would have been like, wow, wow, that was crazy, guys. I wonder what's... No, nope. It was dead silent. Nobody uttered a word. And because of this silence, they were able to hear very clearly the teacher yell, hey, get back here. And within about 20 seconds of them hearing the teacher yell that, they, they once again see the class door slam open and the Minecraft kid with his, like, his hair all messed up and his clothes all kind of like ripped up a little bit, runs into the classroom, slams the door shut, and then locks it. Because for some reason, this door locks from the inside. Which, actually, I guess that does make sense, but he locks it from the inside. You didn't need a key, you just need to press something. And the Minecraft kid goes over to the teacher's desk after locking the door, literally takes his foot and kicks off everything, including like a $500 Chromebook, right? And that kind of breaks on the floor. All the books fall over. The teacher's coffee mug flies off the desk and like smashes on the floor. And the Minecraft kid steps on the teacher's chair and then steps on the desk and is like, attention! I mean, dude, he didn't really need to say attention to get their attention because literally everyone was paying attention to this guy at this point. The Minecraft kid goes on to declare himself as the ruler of the class and that he is now the dictator and they must do what he says. And everyone in the class is just like completely silent because they're just so shocked by the chain of events that just happened. And the Minecraft kid says, now as ruler of the class, you must refer, refer to me as Lord. You will not call me by my name. Let's call him Joseph. You will not call me by my name, Joseph. You will only call me by Lord. And everyone in the class is just like, huh? This is bit like, they're just like, what happened in the last seven minutes of this class? How did we get from learning about the quadratic equation to, to this, to having a kid like, fart in the teacher's face, run away from them, close the door, slam all their stuff off the desk, and declare himself ruler of the class. How did we get here? So anyways, right, you know, they're basically held hostage by the Minecraft kid because, you know, sure enough, like, people come to the door, they're slamming on it, they're like, hey, let us in, and the Minecraft kid's like, nobody go! Nobody go to that door! Like, nobody dare do it! And one kid is like, hey, like, I gotta go to the bathroom because at this point... You know, they were kind of, like, accepting that the Minecraft kid was the de facto ruler, at least for the next, like, ten minutes or so. And, you know, the Minecraft kid's like, no, that's treacherous. You just want to let them in. And the kid's like, dude, no, like, I really got to pee. And Minecraft kid's like, that's too bad. You should have thought of that before I took over. And the kid's like, bro, like... How would I have known that any of this nonsense was going to happen? The Minecraft kid is like, <laughs> too bad, so sad. So at this point, Joseph was sitting in, or Noah, not Joseph, sorry. That's the name I gave the Minecraft kid. At this point, Noah was sitting in class, and he was getting, like, kind of, like, he was getting pretty upset. He just didn't want to deal with, you know, the Minecraft kid anymore. He was like, this kid is a menace. He's totally insane. The thing is, Noah's actually trying to pay attention in class. Like, Noah is trying to, like, get his grade back because he was struggling on the first couple tests, so he was really committing to learning the material. And uh, he was getting kind of angry that he was kind of being robbed of this experience. As funny as he thought it was, he really didn't want to, like, have to deal with this much longer. So Noah was thinking to himself, all right, there are most likely security guards at the door. If not some kind of adult, they can help us in this situation. Because for the last couple of minutes or so, people have been slamming on the door, let us in, Minecraft kid, or Joseph, let us in, Joseph. Like, you gotta let us in, man. Your punishment will be worse. Or it will be wor uh, your punishment will be worse the longer this is. And so, you know, at this point, Noah is like, all right, I think I'm just going to make a dash for it. But I got to cover it up so this crazy kid doesn't, like, fart attack me or something. Like, I don't know what he's going to do. I don't want freaking pink eye, bro. Like, that's disgusting. So Noah's like, hey, like, do you mind if I sharpen my pencil? And the Minecraft kid's not the brightest man ever, so he's like, sure, peasant, go ahead. And he's like, wait. No. And then Noah's like, dude, what? He's like, ask me again, but you must refer to me as Lord. 
And, and Noah in his head is like, all right, this kid freaking sucks, but I'm about to ruin him. So yeah, whatever he wants for his next 30 seconds of rulership. So he's like, my Lord, do you mind if I sharpen my pencil? And the Minecraft kid is like, mm, fine, peasants, go ahead. And like the Minecraft kid is like sitting on the desk and he's kind of made it like a king, like a kind of like a king throne in a sense. And everyone is kind of like whispering to each other, like going on their phones, like trying to like contact people. But sure enough, right, Noah kind of walks up and is very calmly walking towards the, you know, the pencil sharpener, which was on the other side of the room as the door. It was towards the front of the room, which means he didn't have to do a massive sprint, but it was kind of on the other side. So he's walking very slowly to the principal, to the pencil sharpener. And that's when he's able to look out the door. And sure enough, there are like, he sees the outlines of two pretty big guys. And he's like, all right, these are the security officers. And, uh, you know, as the Minecraft kid is like disciplining someone being like, no, you must refer to me as Lord because they asked a question or something uh, that no one realized that that was his moment. That was his opportunity. So he changes direction incredibly quickly, sprints towards the door. And the Minecraft kid is like, peasant, what are you doing? And at that point, Noah goes to the door, quickly unlocks it, opens it up, steps aside and two big security guards run into the room and they just grab the Minecraft kid. And the Minecraft kid's like, no, my peasants fight for me. I have been a great ruler. I've been a great king. No. And he's dragged out. And at this point, right, the teacher returns to the classroom, completely out of breath. Her hair is all frizzed up. And she's just like, class, I don't think I have it in me to finish the class today. Uh, I will, like, allow you guys to have recess or break period. I, I will have to monitor you guys, but please don't ask me to do anything. I, I just don't, I don't have the, I don't have the energy or willpower right now. And the entire class was very understanding as this, you know, when you go to teacher school, when you take the final exam, uh, the final exam for being a teacher, there's no final, like, you trick question of like, what do you do if a Minecraft kid farts in your face and then literally starts a coup and takes control of your classroom? That's not on the final exam. That's not in the job description. So everyone was pretty, you know, they're pretty forgiving. What ends up happening, however, is the teacher doesn't like monitor them. The teacher just gets another person to watch after them because the teacher's actually going to the hospital because her eyes and her entire face were feeling weird. What ended up happening was both the teacher ended up getting like, had to go to the hospital and got like pink eye, like a very severe case and got like an eye infection. She's totally fine now apparently, but when the Minecraft kid farted in her face, all these like gross, disgusting germs got in there and it could have been really bad. And because of all the nonsense that the Minecraft kid was doing, he was suspended for two entire weeks. Honestly, he's lucky that he didn't get expelled, but he was also afterwards, after those two weeks were up, he was invited back to the classroom and he had to also also during those two weeks, write a paper saying why what he did was wrong and apologize to everyone. And he was forced to read that in front of the entire class. And Noah tells me that it was probably the most awkward experience. Click on the of video on life. screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it, do it. Today we get a story of a Minecraft kid who actually ends up smashing this guy's iPad out of rage and frustration. It's a pretty crazy story, so subscribe if you like story videos, and let's call today's subscriber who sent in this story, let's call him Thomas. So this all started at recess when there was kind of like a big debate, like for some reason at Thomas's school, like all the kids in his grade like to have put on like debates at recess. Like, I don't know, dude, they were all in fifth grade. So I, I, I kind of feel like they're a little young to be doing something like this, but it's still pretty cool. So like one day they would debate which TV show is better, regular show or adventure time. Uh, personally, I love them both, but I think regular show takes the cake. Please don't destroy me in the comments section. Uh, but today they had a debate of Minecraft versus Roblox. And uh, Thomas didn't really play Minecraft that much, but he was he was pretty big when it came to Roblox. And there was another kid who was known as the Minecraft kid as he would play and talk about Minecraft and wear Minecraft merch and have like Minecraft stuffed animals in class and literally have every single thing Minecraft possible. I mean, even his pencils had like a creeper skin on them. And the thing is, right, there's nothing wrong with liking Minecraft that much. I mean, I love the game. It's probably one of my favorite games, if not my favorite game. Look at the background 
background of today's video even. But anyways, right, Thomas and the Minecraft Kid, they kind of like take the, the main role for each of the debaters of Minecraft versus Roblox, which is a better game. And the thing is, right, it actually starts to get a bit heated uh, because, I mean, Thomas is kind of just doing it for fun, but the Minecraft Kid is speaking out of passion. He is speaking out of the heart. He is trying to defend something that he believes in, and he believes with all of his heart that Minecraft is the greatest game of all time, and anyone who questions him shall suffer his wrath, or along those lines. I don't totally know, dude. So anyways, right, Thomas and the Minecraft kids start going at it. And the thing is, right, Thomas just kind of finds it kind of funny because the thing is, right, every single day that they have these debates, it's never super serious and no one really takes it that seriously. And like, if you are on the opposite side of someone that you're debating, you're still friends with them and you literally don't even care. Like none of these topics are actually that deep, including this one. However, the Minecraft kid takes this all very, very personally. And he's like, I don't like to hear all this Minecraft disrespect from you. And Thomas is kind of like trolling a little bit. He's having a little bit too much fun here. And he decides, to like pretend as if he super cares about like Roblox being better and that he thinks Minecraft is a terrible game. To be honest, Minecraft is Thomas's second favorite game. He just doesn't play it as much, nearly as much as Roblox. But he just decides to like put on the, the persona of, of completely hating Minecraft just because he knows it'll completely like make the top. He'll make it'll make the Minecraft kid like super angry. So Thomas is like, you know what? I don't even think that Roblox is a better game than Minecraft. I think Minecraft is a trap game and this makes the minecraft kid get super super mad the minecraft kid is all like you think what what did you say to me what is the disrespect coming out of your mouth uh, i i'm sure i didn't hear you right i'm almost positive i didn't hear you right because you're not disrespecting the greatest game of all time which i kind of agree with but not the disrespect part just the kind of like the greatest game of all time part and he's like you're gonna pay for this not like this disrespect I, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. And the Minecraft kid turns to all the other people on the team because basically they would break up into two teams. They would have one person debating, but everyone on the side, like they would kind of choose a side and stand there and kind of cheer them on. It was kind of like a fun little thing. It wasn't taken too seriously. But when the Minecraft kid turns back to all the kids saying like, don't you think this disrespect is unbelievable and just like he should be punished? All the other kids are like, bro, it's simply not that deep. It really is just not that serious, man. Like, I don't know how else to say it. It's just not that deep. It's as, it's really just paper thin, if you know what I'm... It's just, who cares? And the Minecraft kid is like, no, this disrespect, it will not be tolerated anymore. And so he goes up to Thomas. And he kind of like walks away from his people. He walks up to Thomas. He's like, I will give you one more chance to take back the disrespect. And Thomas is like, uh, no, Minecraft sucks, lol. Remember, Thomas doesn't even believe this. He just thinks it's funny how mad the Minecraft kid is getting. And the Minecraft kid is like, fine. Then you will pay! And he runs away. And Thomas is like, bro, what is this kid on about? And the Minecraft kid can, is gone for like five whole minutes. And, you know, Thomas is just chilling with the other people, and they're all kind of talking about, like, bro, the Minecraft kid really lost it. He really cares way too much about this. Like, oh my god. And that's when the Minecraft kid reappears with a massive smile on his face and Thomas's iPad in his hand. And Thomas is just like, bro, like, why do you take my iPad out of my backpack? Because Thomas, like, you know, he would sometimes play on his iPad after school, and, like, sometimes some of the kids, because Thomas was picked up a little bit later, because his mom just, you know, his, his, like, his mom's work got out later, and there was a few other kids who had the same situation, so they would sometimes play iPad games or do stuff on the iPad after school, so Thomas would always bring it in with them. And the Minecraft kid is like, I'm confiscating this for the disrespect against Minecraft. And Thomas is like, bro, like, we were just messing around, like, this is just a fun debate, like, why are you taking it so seriously? Also, you can't take my stuff, bro, like, you just can't, like, nab my stuff like that. And Thomas is like, too bad, you were super disrespectful against Minecraft, and I must, uh, I must hold the glory of the game, greatest game of all time. And Thomas is just like, bro... Uh, I, I think I need you to chill and just hand over the iPad. And the Minecraft kid is like, no, 
You shall not get the iPad after the disrespect. After the, the blatant disrespect. I can't just hand it back to you. That goes against my principles. That goes against my morals. And Thomas is like, bro, it's not that deep. And all the other kids start joining in saying, yeah, man, like, just hand him back the the iPad. It's not a big deal, dude. Like, come on now. And Thomas is like, no. Or uh, not Thomas. The Minecraft kid's like, no. And the Minecraft kid grabs the, like, clutches the iPad close to his chest and then runs into the school. Real quick, comment iPad down below if you want a heart on your comment. Secret word of the day is iPad. And by the way, if you're binge watching my videos or you watch a bunch of them in a row, please let me know because that really does boost the channel and I'll try and say thank you personally. A good way to do that is the playlist I have linked in the description. And anyways, back to the story. So Thomas and the other kids are like, oh shoot, this kid is running away with like Thomas's iPad. So the other kids are like, yo Thomas, we should really go after him because they always knew the Minecraft kid was a little bit weird, but they were just like, wow, he cares way too much about this. I wonder what he's gonna do. So they all decide to run into the school and they're just like, you know, like Minecraft kid, Minecraft kid, like, come on, man, it's not that deep. And they're kind of, they're walking around the school trying to find him. And then they like, Thomas and some of the kids walk down the end of one hallway and they look down it. And at the very end of the hallway, they see the Minecraft kid and Thomas yells out, hey, and sure enough, right, the Minecraft kid turns his head, looks at Thomas, has this big mischievous smile, and then sprints away. So Thomas and the other kids who see him start running down the hall. And Thomas yells out, he's this way, he's this way, follow my voice, follow my voice. And the other people in the school who are kind of like looking around different places, this is a pretty big school, by the way, because this is like kindergarten through like 12th grade. It has like every grade in this school. So they like, the, there's other people that hear him start running towards the Thomas's voice, and they're sprinting down trying to chase the Minecraft kid. Bro, the Minecraft kid is low-key pretty fast. Like, unfortunately for Thomas and his friends, like, the Minecraft kid is pretty fast, and he's very motivated not to be caught. So they see the Minecraft kid run into the bathroom, and they're like, all right, we caught him. Like, there's no chance he gets away from this. So Thomas and the kids walk into the bathroom, and they're just like, all right, Minecraft kid. They say his actual name, but they're like, all right, Minecraft kid. Like, you can't escape. There's only one exit. Like, Come on now, like it's time for you to come out. And they look at one of the stalls and they see feet in it. And they're just like, all right, man, if you're not going to come out, we're going to come in there. And they they just kind of hear like a what? And they're like, all right, man, I'm sorry. So one of Thomas's friends kicks open the stall door and it's just some random kid sitting in there. And they're like, oh my God, I am so sorry. Someone stole one of my, and Thomas goes, someone stole one of my personal belongings and we're chasing him. And he went into the bathroom and I thought he was, I'm so sorry, man. So he just closes the door and just looks at his friend like, e okay, that was not good. Uh, <laughs> uh, but anyways, but there's only two stalls in the bathroom. So Thomas and his friends open up the other stall, which isn't even like, locked and doesn't seem to have anyone in it. And they look up and they see that there's a window in this bathroom, right? There's a window in the second stall and sure enough, the window is open. So Thomas is like, damn, he escaped again. And so Thomas feels kind of defeated. I mean, at the end of the day, like this kid is not really going to escape. He still has to be at school. But Thomas and his friends walk out of the bathroom feeling kind of defeated when they hear one of his friends saying, we found him, we found him, he's cornered. So sure enough, right, the Minecraft kid had ran back inside, and unfortunately for him, he got kind of stuck in a corner, he got kind of cornered by some of the guys, and the thing is, right, there was a teacher in one of the classrooms, and the teacher was like, either cleaning up from her last class, or preparing for the next class, or doing a little bit of both, but she looked over, and she was watching whatever was going down, because she wasn't totally sure what was happening, and Thomas walks up, and he's like, Minecraft kid? Drop, just give me the iPad. It's fine. Like, I, we're not going to report you for doing this, even though you did steal my property and you did, th you, you're, you're being pretty crazy right now. But if you just give me the iPad, we're going to forget any of this ever happened. So just walk on over, give me the iPad. We'll just forget. And my craft kid is like, not unless you, not unless you, uh, you, 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 and the Minecraft kid is like stuttering. And Thomas is like, come on, man. And Minecraft kid's like, no, you must, uh, you must say that Fort uh, Minecraft is better than Roblox and the best game ever. And you must also repent your sins against the game, the greatest game of all time. And Thomas is like, dude, I'm not going to do that. Like, it's a matter of principle at this point. I'm not going to bow down to your demands 
because you're crazy and you take things way too deep that aren't that deep. And the Minecraft kid is like, so be it. And the Minecraft kid kind of like his, he, his, like his frown is kind of like an anxious face slowly creeps into a smile and the Minecraft kid grabs the iPad with two hands and hoists it over his head. And Thomas is starting to realize what's happening. He's like, dude, no. And the Minecraft kid lifts the iPad up and throws it as hard as he can on the floor. It makes con contact with it because they had like, I don't know, they didn't have carpet floorings. They had like hard, like uh, kind of like, I don't know if it was stone floor or whatever. iPad makes contact. Boom, screen completely destroyed. Bits of glass fly everywhere. The iPad kind of propels back up a little bit from all the force it was thrown down with. Bits of the back of the iPad even break off or whatever. The thing is completely trashed. And the Minecraft kid says, you get what you deserve. And at this point, right, uh, you know, the teacher who's been watching the whole thing, and the reason why she didn't intervene before, she had literally no idea what was going on. But when she saw this, she was like, Minecraft kid said his actual name, Thomas, and then said the other name to the people there. What is going on? And Thomas is just kind of speechless, looking at the ground with his smashed iPad, bro. Like, that was not what he's expecting. Thomas then kind of breaks out of his kind of, like, daze or whatever, looks at the teacher and says, the Minecraft kid, or says his actual name, Minecraft kid just smashed my iPad because I'd said I didn't like Minecraft. And, you know, the teacher's like, you two, come with me. And, you know, so Thomas and Minecraft kid are escorted to the principal's office. And the teacher walks in and the principal's like, uh, like I'm a little busy. And the teacher's like, all right, well, I, this is pretty important. And, and the principal's like, all right, whatever, fine. Like, what's up? And the teacher explains, I was just going in my class. I was cleaning up from my last class, preparing for my next one. And I saw that like one of the kids absolutely obliterate an iPad. And she had brought the iPad and all the little bits of glass with her because the janitor had to come and like help scoop it up or whatever. And you know, the, the principal's like, oh, wow, was it his iPad? And the teacher says, no, it doesn't seem to be his iPad. It seems to be uh, Thomas's iPad. And the principal's like, wow, really? And the Minecraft kid says, no, this is actually my iPad. I just didn't want it anymore. And Thomas is like, what? No, this was my iPad. And the Minecraft kid's like, mm, prove it then. Mm. And so Thomas is like, well, I, I mean, if it, it, I normally could open it and enter in the password. And the teacher goes to look at the iPad, tries to turn it on. It's completely busted. She's like, ah, that's not going to happen. This thing's busted. And Thomas is like, I don't know. This kid has been, uh, no, not Thomas. The Minecraft kid is like, Thomas has really just been hating on me recently. And he thought it'd be a great opportunity when I just didn't want my iPad anymore. I was trying to break free of technology. He thought it would be a great opportunity to try and frame me and claim that my iPad was actually his. And at this point, right, Thomas is about to go insane. He's like, what? What is this kid saying? What? And yeah, so sure enough, right, the Minecraft kid is claiming that the iPad that he smashed that was Thomas's over the fact that Thomas said Minecraft was trash, right, which he didn't even believe. He was just being a troll, right? Now he's claiming that the iPad was actually his so he wouldn't get in any trouble. And so Thomas is like, I, I, like, it's mine. Like, I'll find a way to prove it. And the principal's like, all right, well, I mean, until you can find a way to prove it, I don't know how we can really punish him. Because if it is his iPad, I guess he can do what he wants. Like, it's super dumb for him to smash it, but, like, he can really do what he wants. So then Thomas is sitting there thinking, and he's like, I got a great idea. So he goes to the principal, and he says, hey, call up Thomas's, or call up my mom and call up the Minecraft kid's mom and ask my mom if I have an iPad that I bring to school and ask what the colors are and all that. And then also ask the Minecraft kid's mom if he even has an iPad at all. Thomas was kind of banking on the fact that the Minecraft kid didn't have an iPad because he was always talking about gaming on his PC. And there was a chance the Minecraft kid also could have had an iPad, which would have really put a wrinkle in his plans. But anyways, right, you know, Thomas's mom says, yes, he does have an iPad. He brings it to school to play after school. And, uh, you know, then the principal calls up the Minecraft kid's mom. The Minecraft kid is like, well, the Minecraft kid's mom is like, 
Uh, not that I know of. I've never purchased him an iPad, at least. So the principal is starting to realize that the Minecraft kid is not telling the truth. And, you know, the principal then, like, tells the Minecraft kid's mom while she's still on the phone, hey, we got to talk about something. And then explains that the Minecraft kid absolutely destroyed one of some kid, some other student's iPad. And the mom is like, what? My son did what? He's going to get a talking to when he comes back. And the principal's like, yeah, I, I hate to say it, but I, you're probably going to have to pay for the damages because iPads aren't cheap and this kid probably isn't just going to be able to, you know, from his like, because he's, this kid's not an investment banker on the side. He's in fifth grade. He's going to need a little reimbursement. Minecraft kid's mom is like, fine, like that's totally fair. I'm just really mad at my son. And, you know, anyways, Thomas walks out and the Minecraft kid walks out. He's about to be in trouble, but he's let out for a second. And Thomas is like, bro. I was trolling. I like Minecraft. It wasn't that deep. Click on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. The Minecraft kid of, well, I mean, you can read the title. Normally, I tell you guys to grab something to eat, but dear God, please do not grab anything to eat while you listen to this story. Anyways, let's call the subscriber uh, Nico and subscribe if you like stories anyways. Uh, the subscriber who sent in today's story, which you can send into my Instagram, uh, we're going to call him Nico, right? So this all happened one day when, you know, N Nico was in class and he was kind of just chilling, thought it would be a normal day, but his teacher comes in and announces that today is going to be a really special day, and it's not even going to be a special day, it's going to be a special fun day. So not like, ooh, it's special because we have a massive final exam, but ooh, it's special because we're going to be doing only fun activities today. And it was kind of a surprise that the teachers of the fifth grade, by the way, Nico was in fifth grade when this happened, the two fifth grade teachers decided that they wanted to collaborate and give their students a break and also make it kind of a surprise. So the teacher announces, is that the other class, the other fifth grade class, as there were two fifth grade classes for his fifth grade, the other fifth grade class was going to come into their room, they were going to randomly partner up, and then they were going to do a lot of fun activities today. The entire class was really stoked, and so was Nico, because like, dude, he didn't want to be doing any homework, he didn't want to be doing any math, you know how it is, and to be surprised with like a really fun day, it's just a good day, man, things are going to be good. So anyways, right, almost on cue within like, as like the teacher said, the other class will be coming in, they hear a knock on the door, and the other fifth grade teacher opens it up and says, hi guys, like, um, I, I, I hope you guys are ready for your surprise today. Everyone is like, yeah, it seems like it's going to be a good day. Well, it's not, at least not for Nicholas or Nico, as we're going to call him, uh, because, I mean, everyone else is going to have a great day, but you already saw the title. You already know how bad this is about to get. Anyways, right, so they were assigned with random people from the other class, and there was this kid in the other class who every single day wore the same creeper hoodie like every single day without like a doubt, like he wore the same creeper hoodie. I think you guys know them. It's like, you know, the hoodie that you can buy that has like the creeper head on it and then the creeper design. I mean, look, if you wore that, that's totally fine. As long as you don't wear it every single day without washing it, you're fine in my book. But the thing is, right, this kid either had seven identical creeper hoodies or he just wore the same thing every day without washing it. And uh, by the smell of it, not by the look of it, you could definitely tell that he did not, he was not washing it. And this was the one on one copy. Anyways, right, so being randomly assigned someone, Nico gets the, uh, uh, you know, gets the gets a short straw, you know how it is, and he gets assigned with the Minecraft kid. We're just going to call him the Minecraft kid because he's always wearing that hoodie. And so the Minecraft kid walks over to Nico's desk, sit down, says, hey man, how's it going? And Nico's like, hey, how's it going? And immediately, immediately as the kid sat down, Nico had to like prepare, he had to make sure he didn't like gag, just like gag on reflex, because there was like an aura, an aura of stench. Like the odor probably had a mass that was heavier than the air around it. In fact, it was probably heavier than water. It would be, it would be sinking. The water would be floating. Like it was that crazy, right? So he sits down and he goes like, Ooh, how's it going, man? <laughs> And the thing is, right, sometimes kids don't smell that good. I don't know. Maybe you just didn't take a shower. Maybe you forgot the deodorant. That's totally okay. But normally there's not an aura of stench, you know? Normally they're not so stinky that if you were like five feet away, you would smell them. Like, it's normally not that bad. And Nico wouldn't have really cared if the kid wasn't like the best smelling kid ever. He wouldn't really care if like, I don't know, he lifted up his like his underarms and oof, that kind of smelled kind of bad, right? But the fact was the Minecraft 
kid literally had like an aura of stench around him. So uh, Nico was like, all right, uh, I'm just going to power through today, right? It's fine. And the teacher at the front of the class said, guys, like we have some like, you know, this is like we have like a really fun activity. And the first activity planned for you guys, it's going to be an outdoor activity and it's going to be a fun game. And the whole class is like super excited. And the thing is, right, Nico is actually kind of excited, too, because he's thinking, all right, outdoors. The stench will probably dissipate or at least be less strong if it's outdoors. So this is a massive win for me. Uh, it, it was a massive win until the teacher announced that this special outdoor activity would be hide and seek in teams. And Nico's just thinking to himself, oh no, <laughs> oh no, because he realizes, right, hide and seek means that like him and the Minecraft kid with his stench aura, or they're going to have to hide together. Like they're probably going to have to hide together in very compact, close places. And the stench aura, Nico assumes, is only going to get more and more intense and terrible the closer you get to the origin. Which, like, he was five feet away from the Minecraft kid and he was barely making it. So, like, imagine being, like, directly there. Nico was like, man, I gotta practice not breathing for, like, an hour at a time. Because that's the only way I'm surviving this. But anyways, they all head outside. And real quick, the secret word of the day, it's Minecraft. I know, it's nothing that creative, but it is what it is. So comment Minecraft down below. I'll try and heart your comment as a way to say thank you for making this far into the video. When you guys watch my videos for a long time, uh, it really does help out the channel. And also, if you want to binge watch these videos, make sure to let me know in the comments and I'll try and say thank you back as it really, really does help the channel. But anyways, right, they head outside and they're preparing for their hide and seek adventure type thing. And so they go out there and the teachers are like, all right, so we're going to choose who is going to be the, you know, the one who's going to seek and we're going to figure out like everyone else is going to go hide. Nico was praying to God that he was going to be the one that or his team of him and the Minecraft kid were going to be the seekers because if they were the seekers, dude, they didn't have like Nico didn't have to worry about being in a tight cramped space. He just had to like he could be literally like 20 feet away trying to like he'd be like, oh, let's split up so we can divide and conquer, which a.k.a. like, I mean, it is a more effective strategy. But the real goal, the real intention is to get away from the stench aura because you already know what it is. But no, uh, a different team was picked, and he was like, okay, great. And the Minecraft kid is like, dude, I am so good at hide-and-seek. I know the best hiding spots. And, you know, Nico was like, let's just hope that these hiding spots are not really kind of, like, cramped. And sure enough, the Minecraft kid is leading him. He's like, dude, let's go. So they got 60 seconds, or the hiding, or the seekers had to count till 60, and they were counting pretty loud, and the Minecraft kid's like, come on, come on, quickly, quickly. And sure enough, right, the Minecraft kid leads both both Nico and him to this spot, and the spot was like, yeah, unfortunately, it was super cramped. So the spot was like behind the building and was behind this bush, and the thing was, right, the little spot behind the bush that like someone could hide in, it was really only a good hiding spot for one person, and it would have been incredibly cramped for two. And the Minecraft kid's like, don't worry, man, like I can squeeze in, we totally got this, no one has ever found me in this hiding spot. And Zach is thinking to himself, wow, this is actually a really good hiding spot, because it was. However, the problem is, the better the hiding spot, right, the longer the duration that he's going to have to stay in that hiding spot, and also the longer the duration that, you know, he's going to be in that hiding spot with the Minecraft kid, with his, like, literally, like, life-threatening stench aura. And he's like, okay. This is going to be the hardest challenge of my life. And the Minecraft kid hops in there. He's like, dude, come on, come on. And Zach is like, I don't know. And the Minecraft kid grabs him by the hand and drags him. And he's like, don't worry, bro. I know this place is good. And Zach is like, Whoa! and legitimately, Zach has to wait there for 15 minutes. And Zach is, <laughs> he's not trying to be rude, but he's like breathing. He like pulls up his like sweatshirt and breathes into it. And that makes the air a little bit less toxic, but it's still really, really bad. And he's, he's, Zach is, str oh, not Zach, sorry. That was the guy in the last video. I stole my notes up from that one. Nico is struggling right now. He's just like, he's trying, he's breathing in air. He's coughing it out. And the Minecraft kid's like, shh, 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 stop coughing. You're gonna, you're gonna get our hiding spot. They're gonna to figure it out because you're being so loud and, and nico's just saying to himself man i'm just trying to survive this i'm not asking for much man i'm just trying to survive that's literally it bro i just want to i just want to see my parents dude <laughs> So, so Nico and the Minecraft kid are just sitting there, and they sit there for legitimately 
like 20 minutes. And then eventually the seekers come around and they're around in the bush. And uh, Nico is just like, all right, I'm going to have to sabotage this because this hiding spot is just too good. So Nico like forces out a fake sneeze and the Minecraft kid is like, no. And the seekers eventually come over and find them. And Minecraft kid's like, bro, couldn't you hold it in? And, and, and Nico's like, sorry, man, I had to sneeze. Like I couldn't hold it in. Right. So then Nico and the Minecraft kid also become seekers because it was kind of like, it was kind of like the zombie tag where if like one person got tagged by the zombie, they would also become like someone who is it as well. It was like a massive swarm of zombies like that. It was the same thing with this game where if you got tagged, you also became, you, you became a seeker as well. And the Minecraft kid was just ruth ruthlessly just going around, just like finding people is like, got you, got you, got you, which I I mean, that's how you play the game. I can't really, I can't really complain like that. But eventually everyone gets found and the teachers are like, all right, guys, I hope you had fun with that. We're going to head inside for one last activity before the day is over. And so they head inside and they head back to the tables and the teachers are like, all right, we're just going to have a nice little like kind of like uh arts and craft type thing and they show these big bins with all these art supplies and whatever right they're like all right man come up and make whatever you want to make and just have a good time talking to your new partner or not your new partner but your new friend it's not a new partner uh, Nico would have been so happy if he got a new partner at this time and uh, but no it's the same guy so you know the Minecraft kid and Nico they go up they grab some supplies and they sit back at the table and Nico is getting more and more used to the smell and he's like you know what man I'm gonna make it through the next couple hours and while they're sitting there making whatever they're making the Minecraft kid is like all right man let's let's get to know each other a little bit better tell me some fun facts about you so Nico's like uh, okay I don't really know but I guess like I got a dog I like to go on hikes. Um, I walk my dog every morning. And when I do that, I listen to music. That's what I do personally, but back to the story. Uh, I don't know, I really, you know, I enjoy playing Fortnite with my friends. Uh, what about you, man? And the Minecraft kid was like, hmm. Well, I obviously am kind of a fan of Minecraft, as you can tell by my hoodie. By the way, nothing's wrong with like Minecraft, bro. I love Minecraft. It's probably one of my favorite games of all time. It's the background gameplay I use for almost every video, and it has a lot of nostalgia. When I say Minecraft kid, I think you know what I mean. I don't mean someone who just plays Minecraft. But anyways, right, and he goes on to say, I, I, I also have these beliefs. And I don't know, people just, people get really mad at me and they, they, they hate me for my beliefs and it really makes me sad. And Nico, not really knowing what this guy was talking about, probably thinking that, I don't know, maybe, maybe he was religious and people were hating on him for that, which isn't okay. You know, Nico was like, oh man, like, uh, what's the problem? Like, what's these beliefs? I, I promise you, like, as long as they don't hurt anyone else, I'm all for you. I'll support you no matter what, like, what are people hating on you for? And Nika, or the Minecraft kid, is like, well, I really believe in being natural. I think that we should kind of return, like, you know, there's a lot in our modern day society that, you know, is we're straying too far away from, like, what we were supposed to be. He said, you know, may that be from processed foods or stuff like that. And that's, like, kind of legit, like, there is a lot of, like, a lot of the food we eat is actually kind of poisonous because it is so far away from what we're supposed to be eating. That's pretty legit. But then he goes on to say, and like, my mom is such a hater because the truth is, you know, I, you know, want to hear some facts. And, you know, Nico was like, sure, I want to hear some facts, whatever. He's like, caveman, you know, they didn't take, they, you know, when they went to the bathroom, man, they weren't using these like really high chemical toilet paper. And Nico was like, bro what and the minecraft kid is like yeah you know it, it's so crazy my mom is such a hater about this but you know what i, I want to return to the good old natural days and so i don't even wipe when i go to the bathroom and when i take showers i only let water pour on me and i never use any of the chemicals and the soap or whatever all these man-made inventions like soap and toilet paper it's really just bringing us farther away from where we should be and nico was like well I can't say I'm necessarily shocked, but oh my god, what? And then the Minecraft kid turns to Nico. He's like, Nico, what do you what do you think about this? We're turning to the natural element. And Nico is just still stuck on the fact that the Minecraft kid is basically bragging about not wiping. And he's like, uh, 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 uh um, I, I, I mean, like, yeah, man. I mean, I think that like. 
specifically with like a lot of like fast food and junk food and like trans fats and like dyes and whatever, like that's definitely something we should remove from the diet. I don't know if I'm 100% with you on not wiping and like not using soap. But, you know, I, I definitely am with you with the whole, like, you know, I don't know, artificial stuff in the food. And the Minecraft kid is like, well, I don't really care about the food as much. I mean, whatever. I bet the caveman ate dirt or whatever, and that can't be good for you either. I'm just more concerned with all the chemicals and artificial stuff in toilet paper and soap 